Check, check. Does it, does it, that? Let's slam down and walk. Yeah, yeah. Search it. I say he wants a preview. Yeah, it's quick. Let me hand, hand it up to the line. Like, hey, what do you want? I can do the whole thing. Good, great, thanks. Saharan dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come to the frame. Very fast. Tell them how to eat a couple minutes, you know? The whole day. <laughs> Tell them give you the whole day. Travel Company Limited. Hey, yeah, party. Calm down. Come here, close, check. Too close. I hear a pleasant morning to you. Thank you once again coming to bring you live coverage of the Ghana Cricket Board on the 15th from the tournament. Round number three, the final round is set the front. Who will be crowned champions? What we know for sure is that the defending champions of last year, the 11 will not be talking for that title. They've lost both of their games so far. It means now that one side will be clashing right here at DCC. Then we on the 15 against Burbis on the 15. That is a deciding match. Like I said, we're going to give you that match ball by ball today. The weather is immaculate. A few days ago, we were here. We had a little bit of cat mouse situation. Emerging, sorry, the emerging victors on that occasion over a secure Now, the big clash in the JIT. This is where nerves will become a little bit more um, on the table, so to speak, because both of these teams realizing the big prize ahead of them, but we can expect a good game. Certainly, I think we all are expecting a good game based on their performance. They are both winners. They won all two of the matches so far. Today is like a grand finale it for is. both teams. And it's always interesting when Borbis comes up against uh, uh, Demerara, the two champion um, counties over the years in cricket. And these lads are willing to go at each other. In fact, they cannot wait on paper and based on performance so far. My humble opinion is that Demerara should start as the favorite, but Borbis has this never say die attitude. We've seen them coming from behind to win both their matches. And with the likes of Adrian Hitmeyer, their skipper, and Arif um, Khan, these two boys, they should be leading from the front. On the other hand, Demerara is packed with a powerful lineup. I think that's their main strength. Um, Kush Sigobin, Trilok Nanan, all these boys are excellent players. 
it for a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Emmanuel Lewis with the bat in his hand. You know all those legends from Clive Lloyd to Roy Fredericks to Roger Harper to Lance Gibbs. They're all lining up. Their photographs are emblazoned against the walls here upstairs in the pavilion of the DCC. So brilliant sunshine, John and Indrajit uh, filled you in with all the uh, specials there. Uh, so we're going to have 119, that's numbered for the opening batsman. Sohail Mohammed. He's going to take strike and C not will be the non striker. The umpires are all ready, the players are cheering on the opening bowler. So Demarara is going to take strike, is uh, going to bowl the first delivery in brilliant sunshine. And I saw something as I greet um, and welcome Indrajit to the microphones also. Uh, something we saw here in the last game, Barbies against um, the Essequibo side, that the pitch, there was little that you can get out of it. It was pretty slow. The bowlers had to struggle on many, many occasions. And uh, we are seeing the same thing here today at the start. Y yes, Naim, I think it's a pitch in which the bowlers need to get the ball up. Short of a good length might be a very good ploy. Now and again, the one-off bumper. Um, and that's a why trying a little bit too hard. I think he's a little bit too short there. Unless if the batter is having a problem with short deliveries. They are not tear away fast bowlers. But nothing wrong with these youngsters with youthful exuberance running up and giving it all their energy and muscle they are going to try a few short deliveries, uh, and especially on a pitch where it doesn't get up. And if you're going for the hook or pull and you miss, uh, well, then that can be disaster for you. So little to expect from the pace of the pitch. And something of um, importance, we've been describing the atmosphere here over the past uh, couple of days. And when we describe it to be hazy conditions, murky conditions, it's not actually the actual physical outlay of the atmosphere. We have with us in the Caribbean, the Saharan dust, uh, just invading the West Indies. Good ball outside the off stump. That, that, that one was lively. Made some height off of a good length. And uh, Mohammed had to he was attempting to flash it away, knew that he was not close to the ball, just missing the outside edge. Good delivery. Yes, a good delivery by Darwin LaRose there. Just short of a good length and taking off a little from the pitcher. Um, maybe the right-handed uh, So Hill will well be advised, leave those deliveries alone until you get the pace of the wicket. Then you can begin to explore those shots. 
Very compact there, Mohammed. Trifle short. He was really in behind. He's trying to pick up the line and length. I think Darwin, in the last game we saw, he is perhaps the most lively of the bowlers um, for Demerara. Nice rhythm, nice bouncy rhythm. And gets the ball to lift and lift appreciably off of a good length. The last delivery was exactly that. I'm a little bit surprised that he went for the keeper's end, maybe at the non-striker's end, a stiffer throw could have created some problem just to the right. Uh, and uh, they have to be careful with the running between the wickets here, Barbies. Uh, they are looking for a solid start. And both these boys, uh, um, Chamesh and Sohil, can bat. You would not like to lose your wicket uh, via the run-out route. So they have to be very careful. The last game, I, I think we saw a lot of deliveries going wide outside the off stump and outside the leg stump. Saw a few also from La Rose, but today he's looked right on target. He's pitching the ball up, getting the batsman committed. I think it's a good length again here, Naeem. Just coming up a little towards the waist area and punch down towards mid on. The first over gone, it's two without loss. So Jeet, uh, I see you have the list of players that um, the final 11 for both sides. Perhaps you might just fill us up to date, bring us up to date with uh, the players that they've settled for. Well, we are going to share this between the two of us, Naeem. Don't get lazy on me so early in the morning. I'll call the Demerara team. They're from Emmanuel Lewis, who will pick the bowling up from the southern end of the ground this morning. Parmeshwar Ram, Shamar Apple. What a name, Shamar Apple. Uh, Mikhail Sharma, Trilok Nanan, Munish Autar. And I'll continue that list for you. Brandon Henry, Riaz Latif, good to see the little man getting a knock here. Kush Sigobin, Ravin Singh, and Darwin LaRose. That's 11 for the Demerara team. Emmanuel Lewis operating from the southern end. Appeal wide signal by the umpire. Emmanuel was uh, pretty quick also. And in the last game against uh, Esequibo, we saw him here, apparently trying to bend his back too much. And in the process, was beginning to spill it a little wide. We saw him there starting off on the negative again. Yes, good looking shot, getting onto the front foot and just easing it away through backward point and collecting the single. Emmanuel Lewis, um, in his two matches so far, he has taken six wickets. Three in the first and three the other day here against the Esquibo team. So he's an excellent all-rounder, classy with the bat and doing well with the ball. Good work, trouble here, trouble here. Barbies losing their first wicket, mix up their good stop at short extra cover, recovering well, and the fielder, by then the batsman was halfway down the pitch, absolutely exposed, and Chamesh would make his way back, not the kind of start that Barbies was looking for. Not at all, and look at the fielder there, pushing out the foot and blocking the ball. Chamesh did not expect that. That's poor decision by him. Can't blame the non-striker. You have to wait until the ball passes the fielder, especially in those short areas. So he has committed the cardinal sin 
of not observing um, the basic and he has to come back to the pavilion. That's not good running. But Demerara alert like a bird in spring, just prongs on the first opportunity and they've gotten the breakthrough. Well, not the ideal dream start that Burby's, everything is to be played for here. And it is vital that you get a good opening stand. That was not to be. Four for the loss of one. In comes Matthew Pereira. Anaim Matthew Pereira is an excellent young batter, left-handed. Um, strokes the ball nicely. And no doubt, inside of his mind, he has a strong heart. He wants to do good. Just settle down a little. So Demarara is off to a fine start here with the ball. Picking up the early wicket. We're just in over number two. Well, that one dipped a little bit. It really swung into the uh, left-handed batsman, actually cramping him. He was not moving his legs, if you notice there. Uh, Jeet, he was like uh, constant and uh, unmoved. And I think he, he ended up a bit cramped on that occasion. Let's look at his foot movement. Well, what he's trying to do here, Naim, is to play as late as possible because of the slow nature of the pitch. The previous delivery, um, I thought he used the wrist beautifully, turned it and kept it down, despite it just came a little bit low. So he's being very watchful. Now, could have done a little bit better with that one here. Again, it's a yes-no situation. Pereira is off the mark. Two overs gone. It's nine for the loss of one. Just a matter of note. Uh, if, if that fielder at backward point had collected cleanly, the batsman could have been in some bit of trouble. It was not cleanly taken. These guys, uh, the G2, we'd have to remember too that they're on the 15, they're babies. Uh, we're looking for the sparks, and you're going to find them. The selectors are going to see the sparks. The good thing about all of this is that the Guyana Cricket Board must be congratulated for reviving so many uh, almost abandoned competitions in the country, and cricket is really being played and on its way upward. And uh, LaRose just stopping, missing his rhythm there. And Naeem, I agree with you, while they're on the 15, it's uh, another step, another kind of cradle that you're looking at the developmental aspect of the game. But when you're playing on the 15 cricket, you're expecting to see a little, you know, more of the basics. Wait until the ball pass the field. And then he was actually looking at the ball going other than looking at the non-striker where the signal should come from because the non-striker was the one watching the ball. Well, again, I'm noticing Matthew Pereira. You can observe it for yourself. He's hardly, he's anchored in one position. And uh, Jeet is pointing out that perhaps he, he wants to play as late as possible because of the slowness of the pitch. But at some stage, I'd like to see a little bit movement, a little more. Well, all, all what he's trying to do there is to keep his balance. Oh, that's a, a good looking drive, but the timing was a little bit off here. I like the word you used earlier, cradle. And if the selectors are watching, they're going to be cradle snatching too, right? 
Yes, because that team will shortly be selected that will leave these shores to go to Antigua to compete in the regional on the 15th tournament. They're playing all 50 overs matches. Outside edge, leading a run here. Possibility of two, but it's good that it did not proceed because the last time we saw what happened to Chamesh, and so they're pretty meticulous and mindful that anything can happen. They don't want to lose another wicket right now. No, not at all, because another wicket here now will spell hard work for them. And you just want them to relax a little. I mean, that is what they should be telling themselves, a little mid-pitch conference between the two. Forcing shot, beautiful. Nicely played, punched through the offside. Good work here from the Demerara fielders. Nice shot, trifle short. He punched it, airborne for a short while, but it was heading towards the boundary, found the gap, then a nice bit of teamwork from the players. Have a look at it. Yes, good chase, three of them. A little bit of a football work once again, and they seem to be very good at it, the Demerara team and sending in the return, but that's a lovely looking, good timing, great placement from Sohil Mohammed. And look, they're missing an opportunity here, still have an opportunity, missed for the second time, and Burby's just looking horrible out in the middle there. At one time I thought that uh, Sohil was calling the man through, the non-strike, and then at the last moment, putting up the hand, can't be doing this, lads. Ensure you have a little talk in the middle. And neither of the two going down to say something to each other. That's something they need to work on. Can't lose another wicket via the run-out route. Bad and, and equally bad to an extent from Demerara. It was not taken. The return was not taken and there was no backing up immediately. But as we said, they're in the cradle. They're going to be learning. Lively appeal, not out, says the umpire. But as you mentioned, uh, interesting statement. While they're babies, while they're in the cradle, the basics must be taught to them. Immediately, when a throw is coming in, the closest man backs up, and it's more like teamwork. Those are basics. Running between the wicket, not to be clashing up with each other. These are basics. Not running onto the pitch after delivering with your pegs. Basics approaching a ball coming to you, getting your body behind that ball, those are basics that we expect to see even though they're under 15. I mean, great running between the wickets uh, have ensured that teams uh, snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat on many occasions. It's an important important aspect of your cricket and when it comes down to running be between the wicket it comes down to a pair of players two guys are out there um, they might not be playing a lot of cricket together because they come from different clubs when you come to this level but I guess when you practice that's something you practice to do run between the wickets It's a good looking on drive. The return comes in. Just missing the woodwork there, Naeem. But I think they did the right thing. Both decided early that we're going to come through. Noisy vehicle passing us. Just had to shut the, the microphones down for a second or two. Pushing, appeal, not out. And there were two songs coming there, Naeem. Some bat onto the ball, then onto the pad. And then you could see the appeal just beginning to go down when the players realized there was a nick of bat onto the pad. But this is good bowling here by Emmanuel Lewis. Um, started off with a wide down the leg side, but since then... 
you know, he has uh, been disciplined. And it's good to see also, uh, G, that the umpires are very focused. Um, umpire Josiah is, is always, not umpire Josiah, that's in the last game. Abbas Hussein, yeah, I'm being told Abbas Hussein, good that he's alert, because, because what happens uh, more often than not, you get a bad decision at these trial matches and so on, it can affect your entire career. Well, I think these two umpires, uh, um, Abbas and uh, Moses, both of them are from Barbies, one from the Quarantine Coast, one is from Bath Settlement. Um, they have good standards, so we are expecting them to perform well here today. And it's an inter-county match. Maybe that's the reason why these two guys have been given this match. Uh, they are a very, very good standard. I thought at, at this, this level, at some stage, you'll seek to have independence of umpiring, maybe two Essequibo umpires, uh, but I guess it's a matter of trust and it's good to see that they're operating unbiasedly. <laughs> I hear you, Naeem, but when you're doing umpiring, that's a professional thing. Exactly. And regardless, you come from the county or the counties that are playing out in the middle there, the expectation is that you are going to do an unbiased job. So I understand what you're saying, but we're looking at professionals out in the middle. Precisely, but I, I was just patterning off of the international stage where you have independent umpires if two teams are playing. Sometimes not necessary. It's still not necessary. Right, it still but goes but on. I've seen it. It yeah. happens a lot where you have an umpire from neither of the two competing countries. It may not be a rule though. It may not be a rule. 14 for the loss of one. Four overs gone. Brilliant sunshine here. Hello to you wherever you are. You're in Burbis, you're in Demerara. We know that you guys are glued to your television or your smartphone or whatever device you have. We have seen thousands and thousands of views and so many comments as well. Lively, but not getting much from the pitch. And I think the batsmen, both of them, they're very, very watchful. That's what they need to do. Darwin, as well as Emmanuel Lewis, are pretty lively for their age. And so... It is very, very important, of course, that Barbies do not lose another wicket. And to achieve that is to occupy as much as possible. 50 overs is not exactly five overs. A lot of overs for them to bat at this age. Long, long time. And you must be able to bat out your 50 overs. Barbies did not bat out the 50 overs in the opening encounter against Essie Quibo. They were bowled out in 35 overs. So 15 overs were left to spare. Um, their second match will rain curtail that one to a 2020 affairs. But they would like to battle the 50 overs here today. I mean, they should. That's one of the unwritten rules that you must bat out your overs. It's important. I do agree with you, Naeem. And that has plagued West Indies in one day international cricket that they have not managed to bat out their 50 overs on numerous occasions. And that added with the number of dot balls are reasons why, you know, we have not been able to be competitive with the bigger nations in one day international cricket. And that must be corrected and corrected at this level. On the edge, another run out chance here. Let's have a look. The umpire is not convinced. I don't know, our boys will give us a little replay on, on the screen for you. But more trouble here. You mentioned, Jeet, that the batsmen are not necessarily watching for the ball to get past the fielders. They are running anyway. Look at this. Running, stopping. Well, 
Umpire Moses was very close to the action there. Nothing was blocking him. That looked very, very close indeed. Maybe what might have very well saved him was that he ran with the bat, grazing in from our vantage position here. It was Naim, very, very close. We shall watch again. Hard to make a call, but from this uh, vantage point, he just maybe seemed to be an inch outside. Um, but the umpire is very close. So Yes, I think, Naeem, my humble opinion is that he's um, made his grounds, and that's because he grazed the bat in. So that's good for him. That's a, that, that's a good art of running. Um, you look at this here. The ball is now coming down to the stumps. He's grazing the bat just over that line. Not over that line? Well, we, uh, my friends here are challenging me. They're saying that he's out. Well? Broadside the bat. <laughs> I like how you describe that one. It was a broadside indeed. That's a favorite term of one of our colleague commentators. But well, thanks very much, fellas, for giving us so many replays. And there's a difference of opinion in the commentary box. Nothing illegal about that. Th that's a good delivery and well played too down towards Miron. As I said, we were looking, we are looking for sparks. These are the fellas that would have to take uh, West Indies cricket forward as we say goodbye to Indajit and welcome to Matthew Kisun for the first time this year. But it's, it's just coming back to the point where we're at this age, you look for the little stars emerging. And they're going to be making mistakes. And so far this morning in this match, as I look outside to the highly energized bunch of youths, there's just one deficiency that I've spotted so far. Their, their batting look, look, uh, looks pretty solid, good defense, good opening bowling, uh, aggressive, good line and length as well. In the open gap here, could run very close, wouldn't get towards the boundary. And all that I'm saying is the only deficiency I've seen so far is the running between the wicket. Good morning, Matthew. Morning to you, Naeem. Morning to viewers in Guyana and all around the world. Yes, I would agree with you on that. The running between the wickets have not been good at all by Barbies winning the toss and batting here in this finals. Another wonderful day for cricket. And it's the finals between a two, always two of the top teams who would have featured down through the years. That's down the leg side, wide call by umpire Abbas Hussein from Barbies. In the Jeet said, both umpires from Barbies. And then we've got Randy Latif, the third umpire, or the standby umpire. He's from the East Coast, I believe. Yes, he's, and more. And you yourself, an official umpire. Matthew, lots of umpires here outside the off stump, big appeal. So some close shaves here. Lively bowling, Matthew, from both Emmanuel Lewis and uh, Gavin LaRose. They both started well. Good pace from these under 15 lads. Emmanuel Lewis is very good talent indeed. He's the captain of the side. I think that's a chance. Good bit of athleticism there from Emmanuel Lewis. But I'd like to think at this age, I think it went to hand. He should have taken. I guess we'll have a look at the replay. But six overs gone, 17 for one. Sohail is on eight. Matthew per Pereira, six. And Sinat, he didn't get going at all. He was run out. Return from Ravin Singh, a text recover to the keeper, Shamar Apple. 
And he got a duck. It was four for one then in the second over. Well, quite a slow recovery, but at least good enough, as we mentioned before. It's a long, long journey. 50 overs, especially for an under-15 uh, game, it's still a lot of overs. Nice flowing off drive. They take the single. That looks very close to me. His back wasn't down. And given out, run out by Abbas Hussein at the striker's end. A little bit lazy in his running between the wickets. He thought he would have made his ground. But the bat laid down. The bills were, were removed. And that was the end. The return came in. Beautiful work. And that's the end of a, another Barbitian. So Hill... Going for it. It's 17 now for two and Naeem Chan. Two runouts. Could have been probably four runouts because there was a chance, uh, two attempts by Demerara that they didn't pick up. And it, it, in fact, it's Pereira who's gone. Run out at the striker's end. And now Barbie's in some trouble here. 17 for two in the seventh over. Not what the doctors ordered for. A team that has done well in intercounty at all levels. But two runouts would not serve the Burbies' cause well at all. 17 for two. Poor bit of cricket from Pereira. The basics, you have to stick to the basics. You've got to run fast, get that bat down, and ground it early even before you cross the return crease. That was not to be, and it cost him his wicket. Deserving, deservingly so, may I say. Just a few minutes ago, I was mentioning uh, the only deficient part I've seen or perspective to this game has been the running between the wicket. Uh, it started off that way. It continued that way. They have lost two wickets via that route and two wickets have fallen so far, both going via runouts. Unimpressive running between the wicket. Adrian Hetmeyer comes in. I just want to get this Burby squad. I don't think I read it. Adrian Hetmeyer, who's batting now? He's, he's the captain. Then we've got Chamesh Sinat, he's out. Uh, Matthew Pereira out. And the other players in the side, Richard Ramdiol, Ravin Boudoua, Sohail Mohammed, still batting. And the others are Arif Khan, Gibran Yakub, Rafael McKenzie, Fias Baksh, Kumulchan Ramnares, and Jahedan Rolier. Oh, sorry, Jahedan is not a part of the side. So both sides trying to pick the strongest lineup. And that it has been absolutely good, attractive cricket looking at the under 15 age group, as Indrajit said, a cradle. But it's nice to look at uh, why, why I always, I, and I can't overemphasize this enough why i always want to be a part of this is because these are the emerging players that we do not know have coming from different parts of the country that you've never seen before they're appearing in front of you and it's searching for the star that that's really uh, expressly important to me highly animated highly energized players The Guyana Cricket Board is very keen on, on the 13 cricket as well. I think Essie Kribo, uh, they've sparked something in that con county on the 13 cricket. So what you're seeing is what should be the case with cricket because you want to have a look at these youngsters from very early, maybe from age 12, 13. Here is where you, you get to practice. 
at the highest level, played the highest level, given your age age range, and craft your way to probably going on to play the on Maroon, the 17, Maroon on the uniform. 19. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then you get uh, to play for your country and then for the West Indies. But you know what's funny, Naim? Very interesting. There's some players with tremendous talent who have never played at youth, youth level. In the air, over backward square and down to the boundary for four. Flicked away from off his pads. Outside the leg stump. Wrong line by Darwin LaRose. And a prized boundary for Barbisa at this stage. The over comes to an end, 22 for the loss of two. They could have seen uh, Sohail hoisting it deliberately, spooning it over the square leg fielder. So deliberate, well calculated, good shot, good shot. But let's just talk a little bit about the, you've been mentioning the under 13, under 15. More cricket is being played in the country, and that's good. And there is where it's a compliment and kudos for the, the existing board. A lot of cricket is being played. You must give kudos also to the government who I think has been, is prepared and willing to spend a lot of money. That's the atmosphere I was telling you. Look at the background there. It seems overcast and murky. Believe me, the Sahara Desert, which is visiting the Caribbean at the moment, has a great part to play up to this morning. I was talking about this on television. Lois, none for 12, starts his fourth over. I'm going to have a look at Adrian Hetmeyer for the first time in terms of live at the ground. The nephew of Shemron Hetmeyer. We know that for sure. You sound like a medical authority. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps you did a DNA on this. But, but Naim, we were talking about um, players who've never played at youth level, but have made a name for themselves. You see now, most recent, Shamar Joseph, of course. Uh, quick single taken. Push down to mid on. I think after last night, we were in a panel discussion and McGarrell, my, my colleague, uh, had cited them. McGarrell, Clyde Botts, are Correct. people that did not play youth cricket but went on to play for Guyana and higher. I guess that's where you see immense talent that was never nursed at youth level. Full toss down the leg side. Looks to flick it around. It's gone on to fine leg. And I guess it's, it has to do too. It can happen in different ways. It's opportunities. You may have had that opportunity a bit late. You skipped under 19, didn't get select, but you played your county cricket, your club cricket, and there's an opportunity for an off spinner, and they just up for you. So opportunity plays a big role. Shamar Joseph proved that to us too. The opening slot was just there at the right time, and you're there. Mm -hmm. That's so true. It's amazing, this game of cricket. And look what that young man has done at age 24. Looking for the single coming down the, 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 the pitch. Now they're going to get the run. The return came in and hits, hits the stumps and then went down to third man. But something seems to be wrong with the Barbies batters uh, today in these finals. They, they seem to want to, to score a lot of runs in quick time. And by way of taking singles, when the run really is not on, the over comes to an end 26 with a loss of two. I, and I don't think it's a, a matter of fear or panic attack. They're pretty competent, high-order batsmen. Uh, Adrian is there with all the experience, so he looks very, very compact. So I, I can't exactly pinpoint, except to say it's a deficiency in the side, I can't pinpoint the reason. From ball one, they started with this 
of not running well and their judgment between the wicket was awful. They've paid the price. And they probably could have been four down because there were two other occasions that uh, Demerara missed in terms of runouts. LaRose, four overs, uh, none for 12. Emmanuel Lewis, four overs, none for 14. So Sohail is on 14 from 25. Hetmeyer is three from five. And Darwin LaRose will continue none for 12 from his four overs so far. The run rate, 3.25. But brilliant sunshine here at the Demara Cricket Club in Queenstown, in the beautiful city of Georgetown. That's driven down to mid-off, flowing drive. The return comes in to the striker's end. They were looking for a second. The keeper not taking that. Ravin Singh coming down to short fine leg to tidy up. But Naim, you would have watched Hetmeyer a bit. Talk me through him, his technique. He's got a lot of runs, of course, on this belt in club cricket and so on. But talk me through a little bit of Adrian Hetmeyer. Well, He's on strike now. Well, just like you, Matthew, this is the first time I'm seeing him. Oh. But I've heard much about him, um, the maturity and the intelligence he displays. And that, that's obviously the reason why he's the captain of Barbies. But this game would be all about scoring. The, it's manufacturing runs, piling them up one game after the other to impress your selectors. Not individualism at all. Not, not necessarily. But a lot of batsmen play for that. I shot square of the wicket. A lot of batsmen choose themselves to score I, I can pinpoint one that reached the international level, without calling his name necessarily, that I think batted for himself and not his country or the West Indies. But you all have to show the selflessness uh, for your team. Your team comes first. He didn't quite pick that full toss outside the off stump. Played it with soft hands and squeeze it out towards point, Hetmeyer. He seems pretty strong, Matthew, on the offside. Just that he's not picking the gap and getting it past the fielders. But obviously, he seems very, very strong outside the off stump. So Hale, on the other hand, looks very compact and is able to play on both sides of the wicket. Just we're not seeing flamboyance and heavy scoring. And I would, don't blame them. Because at 27 for two in the ninth over, there's nothing that they should want to go after in, in any display of arrogance. They have to bat as long as possible. A little tickle down to fine leg for one. Fahed Mayo moves to four. The two men outside the 30 yard circle for the 50 over tournament. One at third man, one at fine leg. First power play in progress. Gone at mid-off. Brilliant catch. He leapt in the air, took his right, and took it with both hands. And the Demerar will be very happy uh, to have picked up three wickets inside ten overs. And uh, that's the end of Sohail. 28 for three. Nine overs completed. And what a way to have picked up a wicket, LaRose, he went for the drive, in the air, down to mid-off, and the feeler leapt in the air, took the catch with both hands, took his right, a marvelous catch, and that's what you want to see at this level, good bowling, good catching, 28 for 3, Barbie's in trouble. Well, to be quite honest, Sohail seemed, in my opinion, perhaps the most uh, compact of the batsmen on both sides of the wicket. And um, I think he made a deliberate effort to stay there 
for as long as possible. Showing a bit of impatience and in the end giving that catch down towards mid-off. Three wickets gone, nine overs gone, 28 runs. Not exactly where Barbies would want to be, Matthew, but that's the situation. And I think generally, you gave kudos a while ago, and I'd like to endorse that. The bowling has been pretty steady. We had not seen a lot of lagging balls going down the leg side or going down the offside. They have been basically, for the better part, pretty accurate. So we'll have a change in bowling. Emmanuel replaced by Parmeshwar. From the southern end. That's Ram Parmeshwar. Number 62 on his shirt. Very right hand medium fast. Matthew. And I'm glad to see that he's bowling. Very, very compact batsman. Simply put, he was the most impressive in the last game that I described here. As banged into the ground by Hetmeyer. Four from ten deliveries. Four from eleven now. So the new bat is Kumul Chan. Yet to face a ball. But Naeem, what wonderful conditions again for this under-15 tournament. A little bit of rain would have affected, would have reduced the overs from a couple of the matches played. The return comes in quickly from point. Nice shot. Just coming back to the point of Parmeshwar, um, I think he's had a century and a half century I saw the last time he batted here a few days ago. And uh, what I'm trying to emphasize, it's good to see that he is bowling too. Because in cricket these days, you've got to be a highly resourceful uh, person. They need, they're going to need all-rounders, utility players. Good to see that you want to do more than one thing, at least at a go good level. Have you seen Adrian over the past few deliveries or over? He's, he's displaying some measure of um, impatience, uh, flashing, and nothing's wrong with that, except he's not getting it. Correct. He's not timing the ball, hitting the ball hard into the ground, looking to play through the offside. You said he's a strong offside player. And here is where your patience, your character, everything comes into focus. Yes, you're 15 and under. You've got to develop that very quickly when you're playing this game of cricket. I call this the cruel game. Nice shot, but again, the timing not as good as he would have wanted it. Straight to extra cover. Where the captain feels you've got what? You've got a third man. Backward point cover and extra cover on the offside. You've got a mid-off as well. Then mid-on, mid-wicket, backward square and a fine leg. Attempting the off shot again, this time missing. Just a bit of uh, over-exuberance of him wanting to go through the offside. And uh, the bowler was having fun, giving him and feeding him. I think Adrian has just got to remember that a lot would be on his shoulder. A lot. Good over from Parmeshar. Really would have been a maiden had that why not been bowled. 10 overs gone, 29 for 3. Let's remind you, this is the under-15, as you see on your screen, GCB under-15 inter-county tournament 2024. Being played at the Demerara Cricket Ground. It's all about 50 overs here. Lots of overs for uh, this category of cricket. And it's good to see them. I think Indajit was pointing out on numerous occasions the senior West Indies team cannot survive for 50 overs. So it's good to see that these youngsters are being made <laughs> to play 50 overs. We'll see what happens tonight. I think 11.30. Eastern Caribbean time, 10.30 p.m. I make it, Jamaica. When West Indies take on the Australians in that first ODI. I want to set up to watch that. 
Strange enough, as Naim Leaves and John Ramsing comes alongside me, when Shamar Joseph performed that miracle for the West Indies, I was sleeping. I didn't stay up at all. I must say, that was the only night for the test match that I didn't watch. And I had to uh, look at the replays and the showbacks on Willow on a couple of occasions just to get, get it in my, in my mind and in my memory what took place there. And I didn't get a chance to speak on that performance because I'm now on in this tournament. But John, you know, I'll quote a scripture. I must quote a scripture that says, James chapter 44 and verse number 6. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's Shamar Joseph for you. Off the outside edge, down to backward point, looking for the single again. The batsman at the other end, that's Kumul Chan. Yes, and um, for me, that's the story of Shamar Joseph. Strong belief system, humble young man. They say, what you believe is what you become. And his influence, his character, his dynamism, his charisma has been contagious for this young West Indies side. That's a nice shot. But good bit of work from the feeler, tidied up by the feeler from point on the boundary. Coming forward and driving through the offside, 30 for 3. But for me, that's the story of this young man. And for me, I'll be more impressed with his character and his belief system for the next number of years. He needs to play for the West Indies for about 11 years straight at least, and test cricket as well. The ability to preserve this young man for the future is very important. Good shot. Off the back foot. Punched through square cover for a single. And you don't get carried away. You don't want sensationalism from the media and whatnot to more or less destroy this young man's career. Because that can happen very easily. But you want him to be a true servant of West Indies cricket. And I would target him to play a lot of test cricket because we need... The raw fast bowlers again back in the West Indies side. There's talk about himself and, of course, Alzari Joseph opening the batting. Opening the bowling, mind you. Of course, he can bat. <laughs> Both can bat. That's the end of the over. 11 gone. 31 for three. Komal Chan won at Maya five. Darwin LaRose won for 16 from his spell so far. But, yes, John. Um, so he'll... Is 15, Pereira got 6, Adrian Hetmeyer is 5, LaRose 1 for 16, Emmanuel Lewis none for 14 from his 4, and Parmeshwar Ram none for 1, just that windy ball. Ball a good over from the south end of DCC, and after 11, third, a 1 for 3. But yes, John, I just want to wrap up on that. Um, we were talking about players who didn't play at youth level, but went on to perform well. Uh, at the highest level. I will use another. Parmesar. Parmeshwar continues. That's driven down to mid-off. I'll use another little story from the great book. Nobody knew when David killed bears and lions in his father's backyard. But he was practicing all the time to become one day king of Israel and he got the nod at age 17 look at that nobody knew what Shamar Joseph was doing privately until his story came out tremendous young man good return coming in from extra cover from the captain but what you're doing private determines can determine a lot what you become in public and he did all the hard work and he deserves to be where he is and it's time for him to stay anchored to his purpose and destiny and his dreams and goals and will reap the rewards in time to come he started to reap the rewards already in his first season for the West Indies good shot through the offside 32 for three 
Morning, John. Hello, Matthew. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Nice sermon a little bit there, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Shamar deserves all the accolades. I must say welcome home to him as well. Got in this morning from Australia. Had to take a little time getting here, of course. But he's back ho on home soil. Very nice. Uh, uh, it'll, be ni it'll be nice to see the reception. Yeah, definitely one planned at his adopted club, Everest Cricket Club in Georgetown. We have to work out when he's going to be available, when the club will have the top brass of the club available and the members as well. Because everyone will want to be part of that ceremony. And also, I understand some ceremonies being planned at a national level as well of Guyana. So chances are, we maybe, maybe, I'm just saying maybe, for the Mashamani celebrations, which is our republic celebration, you might hear something about that, which will be fitting. A lot of Calypsonians will be honed in to, to praise him with some selections. I understand in the Jeet Pesad wants to do a, a, Calypso, a Calypso song as well. Loose shot outside the off stump from Kumul Chan. As he overcomes to an end, 32 for the loss of three. Just a single from that over from Ram. And Burbis on 15, losing three wickets very early. So they're set back. They have to do the rebuilding process now. The captain is there. He has Ram the race with him. So they have the, the firepower, so to speak. They have the artillery to build a nice partnership, get back into this game and start taking control. But so far, Demerara controlling things with those early wickets. Nice feeling, picking up two wickets by a run out. And Darren LaRose continues to be impressive with the new ball. Picking up the other wicket. So good early passage of play, 12 overs. Home side, Demerara controlling things. But we, let's go back slightly to that test series. We cannot forget, especially in the second test, the efforts of the Dominican. Kavim Hodge, in partnership with Joshua De Silva. You can't forget what Kimar Rose did in the first innings with alongside Alzari Joseph. That really set things up nicely. West Indies eventually got a lead, slim lead. Eventually bowled at Australia again. And then the rest is history. But the efforts of everyone else contributed. And of course, Shamar finishing it off in grand style, really getting the bulk of the, of the cheers and celebrations recently. I'm glad you mentioned that because while the spotlight is on Shamar Joseph, every single member of that team performed well. Sinclair got a half century at the end of that first innings. Uh, Roach got some wickets and so on. Everybody performed well, I thought. Just the openers would not have uh, gotten in uh, on the pie, so to say, Start, which started from the first test anyhow. So we'll have spin for the first time. 12 overs gone and now we're seeing Brandon Henry. Quite a, a tidy left arm spinner. Starts with a wide. But just the last game as well, I think he was trying a bit too much with the ball. Realizing that uh, some of the batters of Esquibo at that time were circumspecting their shots. This time around, Start with a wide. It's usually an economical ball. It builds pressure. Chance for run out again. Umpire Bas Hussein says not out this time. Touch and go. Looks like touch and go from the time his bat went down. Probably the bills are removed at the same time. Let's have a look at the replay. Oh. Well, the replay seems to have shown something a bit different there. That looks out to me. You said touch and go. Mm. His bat was in the air. Did not slide the bat in, which is the approved manner when taking especially quick singles. So that might have been a big difference for him. Lucky to be there, I must say.
Brandon Henry some talent. I vampired with him um, playing at uh, Georgetown level, club cricket. Plays for transport. Uh, Emmanuel Lewis also plays for transport. And I want to give credit to a young man, Sean Messiah. They call him Lenny. He, he does well with these youngsters. They practice a lot of transport ground. Has his players from the team working hard at their game. But he's not a bad ball at all. Left hand orthodox. That slashed into the offside. But John, I'll tell you something about our spinners. And even at this level, I want to see the spinners flight the ball some more. That, that's a problem we have in the Caribbean region. Uh, a lot of our spinners have been too flat through the year. And you still see it with the likes of Moti, Kevin Sinclair, and so on. The over comes to an end. 34 for the loss of three. A lot of times the bowlers tend to be on the defensive. And instead of attacking where you tend to bowl your flight, they tend to be more flat, trying to prevent batters from scoring freely. And sometimes that quicker delivery becomes a stock delivery. And then it decide to use it more often than the actual spinning deliveries. And that is where, that's where the defensive bowling tend to come in rather than the attacking bowling with the, with the ball being flighted and ringing your body as an off spinner or even a regular spinner, a wrist spinner. Correct. I'm also concerned about the pitches we're preparing the car. Being down yeah. through the years, they've not favored fast bowling enough. And if you've got a Shamar Joseph bowling at that speed, 150, 151 km, you want pitches in the Caribbean to also favor your fast bowlers. Because when you come up against the top teams with top batsmen, they can put you away easily if your line and lengths are bad. So we have a change in bowling from the south end, Mickle. Mickle comes into the attack, not a spinner. So two spinners are now in the 14th over, 34 for three, bowling to Adrian Hetmeyer. Yeah, Mikkel Sharma. You mentioned Sean Messiah. I like to say the hunting peers, Ambrose Walsh, Lambert, Danny Ram, Greenwich and Haynes, so Sean Messiah and Corbin Ross. The two of them at Transport have been doing a lot of work with the youngsters. They're not that old either. So they've been walking the walk with these youngsters, holding their hands and guiding them along. And then when they're confident enough that they've grabbed enough of knowledge, they, they allow them to go on their own. And they're seeing it now. So well done to those guys at Transport Sports Club. And you can see them even when the ground itself is unavailable. They have that tennis court that they, they, they use as well. Tay ball, win ball, always playing cricket, which is very good. Nice flight to delivery this time from Sharma. That's what you want to see, yes. the flight from him. These youngsters tend to be afraid to flight the ball because they believe they'll be hit yeah. to all parts of the ground. But for me, that's what a true spinner is you've got to give the ball flight. Oh, well, we're enjoying the flight and the, the attacking bowling of Sharma so far. You do not like to see your bowlers bowling no ball, especially, they say especially a spinner who's coming from just three, four steps. And there's Sharma giving a free hit now in his first over. It's gone to hand, but it's a free hit. So no power at all there from the batter. And that's the end of the over. 14 gone, 36 for three. And we're talking about the pitches in the Caribbean. And you look at Shamar Joseph's ability. Uh, you've got Alzari Joseph. If you can get back Jaden Seals. You don't want him to be injured at all that much. You don't want your fast bowlers to actually be injured like that. You need him back. Good pace. And you've got some other youngsters around the Caribbean. There's talk about um, the Barbitian Silas Tyndall, young man, 
what what about uh dimitri cameron i these are guys that you have to look at carefully he's recovering from injury actually dimitri yeah mm -hmm. there are some guys in the windward islands as well Preston McSween. Right. There's also Darius Martin. I'll tell you about Darius Martin. Just a handful of games, especially last season for the Windward Islands Volcanoes. As Henry continues, he is responsible for, I would say, the demise or decline of Chandra Paul Hemraj. He is the bowler that hit Chandra Paul Hemraj on the helmet in Grenada. And Hemraj did not play the rest of the season. And coming back after that blow, Hemraj looked a shadow of himself. Raw pace from Darius Martin in Grenada. Some, someone we can work with as well. There's Jerry McAllister of Barbados. Of course, Akeem Jordan, who's more of a seamer than an out and out fast bowler. Chimar Holder making a return from injury. And if you look in white ball, Kibo Paul. And of course, we've got to work with Isaiah Torn in the under 19 World Cup there now. He's had some injury in between. You want him to be a fit young man. And look at the under 19 World Cup, John. Half after the appeal, umpire Moses says, not out. But that's Henry. He's going to hit your pad now and again. He's going to ask a lot of questions. Let's see how he's going to finish in this, his second over. Well bowl, flat. <laughs> you ask for a flight this time, you got it fast and flat. 15 gone, 38 for the loss of three. Just one bowler in the wickets column, Darwin LaRose, two wickets going via run out. Steady stuff generally from them around the 15. Seven extras in that total of 38. Yeah, it's a bit of a struggle for Borbis with bat in hand. Uh, just uh, so he'll get in 15. Pereira six at Myers on nine from 24. So the, a little bit of a struggle, but remember this is on the 15 cricket. Komal Chan hasn't looked the part as yet. Etmaya gets a run, a run through cover. There's a feel on the boundary there. So they've read it well because he plays strongly through the offside. So they've got the man covering, patrolling the boundary out there. So he can only get a single when he drives through the offside. So it's a rebuilding process. Ramnares and Hetmeyer. That's a big shot. A lot of bottom hand on that one. One bounce for four. Looking to take on the bowling now. We don't want Sharma to settle at all. Ramnares getting his first boundary. More, comf more comfortable to the, the spinner. And that's a nice boundary. Look at that. Given some flight outside the off stump. He went for the drive. Front foot forward and hit it over mid off. So this time slightly quicker, but still on the short side. Sharma. You don't, you don't mind as an off spinner a bowler taking you on, a batsman taking you on like that. Give him the opportunity again. Look at that. Right on the middle stump this time. Slight turn, not a lot of turn for Sharma. So that's what the batsmen are looking at as well. They can think about playing their shots because you don't get the exaggerated turn. That one went through the arm. Quicker and flatter. I think a spinner should have a, bats, a batsman in about 10 mines. We say two mines, you know, but 10 mines because you're bowling with variety. 
every ball can be a bit different. 16 overs gone, 4 to 3 for the loss of 3. Kumul Chan is 5, Hetmeyer 10, Mikkel none for 7 from his 2 overs. So five runs in the last over, including a boundary. And a partnership developing here now for Barbies on the 15. Captain Het Myers there, he's on 10. Ramner is, who got that boundary is with him on five. Just 15 runs so far added for the fourth wicket, but it was spent time at the crease as Henry continues. You can see the confidence now oozing in the Barbies batters. Hetmeyer, they're looking to take on Henry. Don't want him to settle at all. Settling in is Indujit. Hello, Indujit. Hello to you, John. Quiet period of play, and this is understandable. You have lost three wickets. You do not want to lose a fourth one. And perhaps the, these two, you know, who have performed well so far in the competition, decide to take the responsibility. Keep the ball on the ground. Um, I think that should be the thinking of the two of them. And a little bit later on, as the partnership grow, you bring your team back into the game, where then you can take those added risks. They've used up four to five balls, getting 16 together. Full delivery, but could be. Just hitting the boot. Confirmation from umpire Moses Ramphal now. They really had to consolidate. Ram the race and Hetmeyer after two run outs and then the the wicket that Darwin LaRose got. So this partnership, despite taking some time, is very useful. I agree with you. And with these singles that they are picking up, it certainly will cause the opposition to maybe change their strategy as far as their field placements are concerned and you can capitalize on those occasions. But it's good to see these boys. They are looking for the gaps. They are playing well within what the game is expected of them at the moment. Do you remember still to come? AK, Arif Khan. There was Ali, oh, oh, yes. there was Ali Khan who plays in the CPL. Big appeal from Brandon Henry. Might have been hitting outside the line of the off stump to end the over. 17 gone, 46 for three. That was pretty close as well. Uh, kept low, he was uh, inside, deep inside the crease there and might have been struck on the back foot as well. But in the mind of the umpire, it would have been missing leg stump. Uh, so he survives, uh, 46 for three. Yes, John? I remember Ali Khan. Um, that guy used to travel all the way from New York to Florida, drive, play his cricket and travel back. Uh, one of the famous... Uh, um, Trinbago Knight Riders player. Started with the Amazon Warriors, mind you. Two battles in double figures so far. And you see Arif Khan in that lineup still to come. There's Ali Khan with the AK. Then there's Azam Khan, who played that last season for the Amazon Warriors. AK as well. <laughs> AK 23. So maybe Arif Khan, if he has a choice of a shirt number. May want to choose 23 as well. M might very well uh, happen. Arif ha has tremendous support in the West uh, Barbies area. Good delivery. Nice from the off spinner. Not exaggerated turn, like I said, with that flight. Just What's wondering that? to know if that was an arm ball. That was beautifully bold. If any turn, just a little, but just went through nicely, picked off from the pitcher, and he was beaten all ends up. Well bowled. Yeah, and then followed up nicely with one on the line of the middle stump. So he's thinking and bowling. He's looking for a wicket. Something will give soon. <sighs> Beating the outside edge. Indajit. Let's keep an eye on this young man. Mikhail yeah, that Sharma. was a quicker delivery, and uh, it had steep bounce off the pitcher. So once he puts in the energy there, had some bite, but not too much torn from the pitch, but good enough to beat the bat again. 
over pitching this time. Hetmeyer uh, getting on the way, but not able to get a boundary. So rotation in the strike is important. Arif Khan, like we said, 23 might be a good number for him. But with the shots he play, it may very well be AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to detonate ferociously as the years come by. Um, 18 gone. It's 47 for the loss of three. Uh, and John with Arif. We've spoken a lot about him. Arif Khan has tremendous support uh, I'm um, in the West Coast Burbies area, and that's good to see. We get back to that story in the sheet as the players take some refreshments. We'll do so as well. I'll come back in about a minute. Welcome back to DCC. Three batters dismissed so far. So, Hill Mohammed, 15. See not, no score. Pereira, 6. So, rebuilding process now. Captain Hetmeyer and Ramnaris, 13 and 5, respectively. 18 gone, 47. They're yet to get to their 50. Burbits on the 15s. Seven wickets in hand. It would be difficult to, to assess. What will be a good final score here? Henry starts a new over. He's born from the northern end here at DCC. It's an open field, so we will get some amount of drift with this breeze here in the Jeet after the drinks break. I 
at the break in the jeet, the discussions would have centered around four burbies consolidate, start scoring a little bit more frequent. Then Ra will be, let's break this partnership, no doubt. Of course, John. And uh, another wicket here will definitely put Demarara in the driver's seat. And these two boys know it. Komal Chan and uh, Hetmeyer. That's the reason why they've been pretty cautious. Like, just like this, getting the ball all along the ground. Not looking to force the bowling whatsoever. Um, it's early yet. We're in over number 19. There are still many of us to be bowled. Preservation of the wicket is of vital importance. And in the meantime, they'll be looking to collect as many singles as possible. So it should not always be block and block and block. Look for the scoring opportunities. Nice quick delivery there from Henry. So you see his plan as well. He's looking to go for timber. Flighted, and that's it. The breakthrough coming in over number 19. Duff, just after the drinks break, how often have we seen this in the Jeet? Here's Ram Nares holding out, gone for five, it's now 48 for the loss of four, 19 gone. And it has been a struggle for uh, Ram Nares out in the middle, 37 ball for just his five. And when you thought that he has settled down, will be looking more for the singles, uh, has just been outfoxed by uh, Brandon Henry. That was floated up nicely. Well, he got the leading edge. Uh, looking to go maybe some way over mid-wicket uh, and the catch taken by the bowler gleefully. Th that's a problem, John. If you're blocking out in the middle, you'll face 40 and 50 deliveries. When you get yourself out, you're going back for four or five. There's a difference between playing defensive cricket and blocking. While defending, you still can score a single. And I think this is something the youngsters will have to work on with their coaches. Be mindful, one of his scoring shots was a boundary. <laughs> so just had two scoring shots out of 37 deliveries faced. He felt that early in his innings he had to consolidate to block out and to keep the bowlers out and building a partnership. But later on, wanted to score a little bit more. That's not the case. Henry picking up a good wicket. Four down. And this is spelling a lot of trouble for Borbis here at the moment. Puts more pressure on the likes of Adrian Hetmeyer and the rest to come. Now look at that one. That's a glorious looking shot. Uh, a dung on the pitch uh, and smacking it over the top of wide mid midwicket. That's a maximum. And I'm um, having a good look here at Hetmeyer. Looks good with the shot, John. Playing slightly across the line there, but he backed himself nicely. And the fifth is on the board now for Bobby's on the 15. Look at that. On the line of the middle stump. And there he was fetching it. And he got good connection. Good bottom hand. And it went all the way. Nice shot. And this time flowing straight drive. A single. Very good stuff from Hetmeyer. Maybe we'll want to take a little bit more batting responsibility now. Having seen the demise of his partner Ram Nares, who was with him trying to consolidate. No matter, Richard Ramdi all about to face his first delivery in this game. As well, with some batting ability. Did not play in the opening game. And before I first saw this youngster in the on the 30 on the 13 inter-county tournament at the National Stadium. I think he actually went to Trinidad and Tobago as well. So it's good to see him in the under 15 setup. So Mikhail is actually, Mikhail Sharma is actually continuing to bowl really nice, nice looping deliveries on the occasion, just a bit too full. Just holding his side, not a good sight. Shows that he's not fit. <laughs> just holding his side as he goes through. Well, his length has been good so far, drawing the right-hander into the shot. As the end of his fourth, a six and a single. 20 gone, 55 for four. The question now, will Adrian Hetmeyer 
open up here. Not going all out aggressive, but play sensible cricket. He has scored lots of runs in Burbese cricket. A few double hundreds, a few centuries. Called to trials with the national um, team, the Harpy Eagles. So all these are signs that here is a young man who has the appetite for big runs. He's going over the top, and that's going to clear the field and out of the ground. That's a great shot here by Adrian Hetmeyer. Taking the attack to this time, Brandon Henry. So he's taking on the, the spinners now, captain of Warbies. Henry there fighting and pitching on the line of the middle and off stump. But then see, Hetmeyer backing himself again, just like in the previous over, getting enough bottom hand. Good connection being made. And the DCC ground, it's big for certain games and certain players, but not for Hetmeyer. And I think one of the senior Hetmeyer in the family will do well to copy that shot from the youngster. The senior Hetmeyer normally pick out the lone fielder on the boundary. There was a fielder on the boundary there, and he did not pick him out. He cleared his head by a long, long way. Well played, youngster. Just got to be a bit selective with the balls he's going after. Two sixes and... Consecutive overs now for him at the start of both overs. So you can say perhaps look at the catch the bowler off guard. But just got to be selective. If it's there, have a go. Be selective. Look for the gaps. If you have enough connection, then clear the ropes. Well, they took off a little bit late. The return comes in, but Hetmeyer is quick. Uh, and I was just looking for inspiration above, hoping this is not another run out. Uh, for the Barbicians. Took a little long to go through these two boys. In the end, they got home safely. Has to be very, very careful here. Hello, Naeem. Hi. Hi, Jeet. Yeah. Nice cricket. And looking, looking here for a single, that's never going to be on here. Richard has to be careful. But that Maya had none of this. Well, I mentioned earlier, I was at, at this level of competition, I was looking, I'm looking for sparks. I'm looking for little stars emerging. Did he get an edge onto that one? It looks as though he got it, runs away. Down towards a fine third man boundary. And that's four runs to the right-handed Richard. Got the edge, but there was nobody in that slipper. And just coming back to the point of looking for emerging players and little sparks and stars emerging, I've seen good cricket, saw some good fielding, good bowling, st very steady bowling, better than I saw the last day. The only deficiency I've been seeing so far is running between the wicket. Just exploring the possibility of a single, it's not here. And the name Adrian Hetmeyer is a name right now around the Caribbean. Wherever their cricket chats and so on, they're finding out who is this youngster from Guyana. G -g Good play here this time by the right-handed Richard for a single. And that's because he has scored heavily. I was telling John Ramsing in Burby's cricket, uh, um, 21 overs gone, 6 to 7 for the loss of 4. And not only the runs he has made, he batted for a long time as well. Um, and at this age, if you have the appetite to score big, you spend a lot of time out in the middle, you can only get better. Look at the scorecard, 28 and 37. And it's not only the 28, it's that he lasted a long time, as you mentioned. He's very solid, very compact. And uh, at this age, we seem to forgive if you have a slight deficiency. Um, earlier, he was trying to flash a bit outside the off stump when two wickets had gone down. It seems to me that he has realized that he has made the necessary adjustment and I think he had his head in the right place right now. Well, that's excellent cricket. Well played all along the ground, down towards mid-off, knew exactly that the fielder is back somewhere around the 30-yard circle. A single is going to be on. Good communication between the two. I'm looking, I've been looking at Sharma, very impressive, he's got a bit of variety, um, 
I see that he's fighting and because he's encouraged to do that. Uh, there was less aggression. And so he's, he's been encouraged to flight as possible to induce uh, the mistake from the batting side. And we were doing a little comparison, myself and Matthew, outside of the commentary seat. Big one, just outside the outstretched hands of Long On. It goes uh, into the boundary for four. Nice aggressive shot. Adrian Hen uh, Hetmai is seeing the ball better now. His judgment is more sober, so there's a lot of sobriety in his batting as far as he's concerned. Picking up the line well, heavily flighted, giving Adrian Hetmeyer the opportunity to come down and to strike it over the top. Uh, and what a good delivery. This one flighted just a little bit wider and drawing him into the shot there beating the outer portion of the bat. It might have to be very careful because there is a long off, a long on. And he didn't play really with the vertical bat. There was some horizontal bat when he got that six into it as well, but it was flat. And once again, you feel that he didn't got it the way he wanted it. He was drawn in onto the front foot, but went through with the shot, did the right thing, did not hold back because there's a short extra cover if he's going to check the shot. Well bowled. So myself and Matthew was having this conversation about the overflighting, but it is because Mikhail Sharma is being allowed to do that simply because the batsmen were not aggressive. And we were talking about international at the highest level. To survive as a spinner, especially at the IPL stage, only great bowlers like Sunil Narain and Rashid out of Afghanistan, few spinners can survive. And that's why they bowl it quicker and flatter to restrict the batsmen. On this, in this uh, scenario, Mikhail Sharma is giving it a lot of air. Only one time he's been struck, and that's just now. It went for four. But it's because he's been given that opportunity, I guess he will make adjustment if the situation changes. And maybe one of the approach by the Burbies batters not to come down to him um, frequently and get to the pitch of the ball was the match situation where Burbies was placed uh, before the last wicket fell. Three were back in the pavilion. Runs were hard to come by. Survival was the call of the time out in the middle. But with Adrian Hetmeyer um, going after him now, it's going to be interesting. So, Riaz Lati for the first time in the game. Dropping it short and a single is collected. His dad has been here for the longest while. I walked in here like about an hour before, nine hours 30, and his dad was sitting down there. His mom was here um, the previous match. Entire family behind this youngster. It's good to see when uh, parents show up and give support. I, I had a word with him too, Richard Latif who is uh, very prolific in softball cricket, one of the best in the country. Giving a lot of support. And young Latif, I think, played the under-15 tournament for Guyana already. Under-13. Under 13. So he's, his dad is still plastered there as constant as the Northern Star by the scoreboard. Ah, that's beautifully bold, young man. Teasing delivery, tantalizing the right-handed Richard. And this is what spinners do, Naeem. Make the battle look up. That's a superb delivery and beating him outside the off stump. I like the line. I like the length. And nothing is short, nothing is overpitched. He's right on target in the very first over. Good to see this. You mentioned you like the line, you like the length. I'll tell you a story I heard in Jamaica. Um, a little bit later. Ah, this is short. Badly line. Eludes the keeper and will definitely run down just at the side of the side screen. And those are runs. Got some bat on to it to bring over number 23 to an end. So 23 gone. It's 78 for the loss of four. Well, the scoring rate has picked up and you must give compliments to Adrian Henry. Um... Het my correction and Richard as well. There has definitely been an upward trend in the batting, picking up more singles. We are seeing a few boundaries just passing around. 
Um, so they're going just under four per over, uh, three point something, 34 in 42 balls. Hetmeyer, Sohail Mohammed, 15 in 27. Richard Ramdiol, 10 in 15. And uh, some good bowling, good steady bowling we've seen today. Good stuff here. Yes, and I'll tell you that story I heard in a Jamaica in a certain cricket match by that eloquent lawyer, Bobby Frey, cricket commentator. Nicely driven, almost on the full toss, and gets himself a single Adrian Hetmeyer. It was said, Naim, there was a certain cricket match in Jamaica, and at the end of the session, a young lady called the dressing room and asked to talk to the manager. The manager inquired, what's the problem? And she said, I want to have a date with your fast bowler. Why on earth? She said, I heard the commentator says he has a good length in line. <laughs> and just slow this time through the year. And the defensive part comes through. Right. Ramesh Munish Outar, operating from the southern end. Well, Jamaica is not lacking in humor. I myself, some of the greatest laughter I've had, it's in Jamaica. The first thing you laugh at is their accent. <coughs> but there was this guy called Percy Lindo, God rest his soul. He attracts a huge crowd after the match. Nicely pitched up there. And he's in love with Rohan Kanai's batting. Rohan was the coach then of Jamaica. And he said God could not send two kings to the earth on the same day. That's why Jesus he put on December 25 and Rohan Kanai December 26. <laughs> good delivery. Super good thinking. Munish, faster delivery on a good length. And Hetmeyer was caught off guard, prodding forward, just beating the outside edge. The Demerara side has bowled far better by leaps and bounds than what I saw in the last game. Yes, I, I do agree with you. Well, they have, they have to bring their A game here with 24 overs gone, 80 for the loss of four. This is virtually a final. So whoever wins here takes the title and rule under 15 into county cricket for an entire year so, and bragging rights too. So there is a lot to play for between these two teams. And despite Barbies have been on the back foot, uh, we have seen the fighting spirit throughout uh, um, this year's tournament. Uh, Adrian Hetmeyer, he's on 35 or 45. He has attacked the bowling, looks aggressive. Um, Richard has just come in, he's 11 from 18. So there must be support for Adrian Hetmeyer. Richard must understand his role here. But this, this is interesting with little Latif bowling. Notice he's not afraid to give it the flight. And I believe uh, he's, he has done that deliberately because he knows that he has a long off and long on. And he's got a man down at the mid wicket boundary as well. Yes, and that's beautifully flighted again. He's a little man. He gets up tall upon the point of delivery, not afraid to float it up. Are we seeing good stuff from the youngster? Now he's leg spinner, I don't know at some stage if we might just see a solitary slip or a silly point for the outside edge. Well, they had a chance to dismiss him there, Richard. Floated up nicely, he went for the drive over the top of extra cover. The fielder leapt into the air and the last moment put it down. And Latif continues to bowl well here, youngster. Keep tossing it up. Let the batter get to the pitch of the ball. In the air once again. And uh, certainly this is good bowling. We are watching from an under-15 player. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I would have preferred a silly point or short extra cover right under the bat 
if not forward short leg, to add a little pressure. And I think Demerara could afford that simply because of the score 84 4 at the end of 25. Yeah, and at this stage, if you're going to put in the silly point or the short extra cover um, very close in, these fielders, they will have to don their hel put on their helmets um, according to the regulation of the game. And sometimes you need to show a little bit bravery, but I guess the skipper, Emmanuel Lewis, do not want to risk these youngsters into those attacking position, knowing how dangerous it can be there for them. Nice shot. That's going to go a long way towards long on. Just a single. So we had seen a great adjustment in the, uh, the aptitude or the thinking of the Barbicians. They have uh, put on their brake pads and they have closed up shop for a while and retained their wickets, led by Adrian Hetmeyer. And I think it was pretty intelligent because they were losing one wicket after the other via the run-out route, which was absolutely unnecessary and reckless. There was a dead ball signaled by the umpire there. All is set now. 81 for the loss of four. We know for number 26. Sir. I would like to think, uh, G, that Burbis would like to get over the 200 mark. Uh, whether they can get there, it's another issue with the depth of the batting. Down the leg side. Well, that should be on their mind because with Adrian Etmeyer out there, he's an attacking player. The longer he stays there, the more dangerous he becomes. Good thinking, good variety here, Monish Autar. Had a quicker ball earlier that almost got the outside edge of uh, Hetmeyer. It's good to see them thinking. And that's what I'm looking for. You're not going to get everything right, but at least you're thinking. You've got on that thinking cap and you're working. Uh, Adrian Hetmeyer has shown that, that he was thinking and made the adjustment. He's still there on 36. Solid defensive shot this time, reaching for it, uh, killing whatever little spin there might have been. And Richards, Richard needs to understand the rules. Stop fishing outside the line of the off stump frequently. So 26 overs gone. It's 82 for the loss of four. Richard on 11 and Hetmeyer on 36. Uh, and I'm, this is on the 15th cricket. Uh, some of these guys are 13, some of them are 14. And with the parents being at the ground, some spectators are here, everybody shouting their opinion out in the middle. Then match awareness have to come and play. It's never easy for these guys. Uh, um, sometimes I know a few players will tell their parents, stay home. Do not come and watch me because they see that as added pressure. Some, of course, will be motivated. Nudged away, backward square short, no run. And some kids respond to that pressure of liking their parents to be with them. I never liked the idea of overlooking your son playing cricket. And uh, big shot, that's gone all the way. Good shot, Adrian Hetmeyer. It was just a trifle short, and he buckled on it and hoisted it deliberately. I think he knew exactly there was a man down on the square leg boundary, bordering towards mid-wicket, and uh, he made sure that the connection was good enough to clear the boundary. Hi, Matthew. Good shot. Hello, everyone. It's still brilliant sunshine here at the Mark Cricket Club and in Georgetown. Driving for a single. But look at his score, 42 from 49 balls. He's on strike. In fact, that's uh, Richard Ramdehal. 
who's on strike. But Hetmeyer 42 from 49 balls. Ramdi Hall is 11. And I, I think Ramdi Hall understands his role. His role basically is to give support to Hetmeyer, to occupy the crease, and uh, either you get the singles, ones and twos, and Hetmeyer does the... That one was airborne for a while. Hetmeyer goes behind it a little more aggressive because he's been there a longer time, apart from his competence. So Richard would like, I guess, to give as much support as possible. I see the projected score on your screen is 164. But Matthew, I think ideally, because of the Demerara batting lineup, just over 200 would be at least ideal. And that would take a lot more batting and more concentration from uh, Hetmai in particular. Of course, the projected score is based on the current run rate. But if Hetmai stays there, down to the end, obviously that score will look totally different because he's been very comfortable to the spinners, basically. That's what I've seen of him. And as long as he stays there for a long time, his concentration span will continue to, to improve because he's known for big innings, uh, double hundreds and so on at youth cricket in Barbies. So... That says a lot about him. Nice, compact, forward defensive. This is good stuff. And look at the flannels of the players fluttering away. And so you, you get the instant feeling of a nice windy morning. Beautiful, rich Atlantic breeze flowing into our faces in the commentary box. Quicker delivery. They like to bowl them a lot, these youngsters, spinners. For the two runs so far added by these two for the fifth wicket. And Demra would want to break this partnership because it's building. It's building nicely. The fourth wicket went down with the scored 48. So they've got to keep their eyes on this partnership here and they've got to break it. Altar is trying, pushing the quicker deliveries through. Trying to bowl with variety. Loose Rump. ball down the leg side. This, uh, well, I'm pretty surprised they didn't go for the other run. So that's the end of over number 27. 90 for the loss of four. And it's good to see, as I mentioned, that Richard understands his role, which is to give as much support as possible uh, restrain yourself from ultra aggression so that you can get out easily prize your wicket and just stay there and occupy the crease your job is to pick up the ones and twos convert them and give a lot of the batting to Adrian Hetmeyer so that's the bowling for you Darwin LaRose was one of the success story along with Brandon Henry LaRose one for 16 Henry one for 19 and then the runouts followed, or the runouts came first. But we'd seen some lively bowling from Darwin LaRose and Emmanuel Lewis. On a track that wasn't offering a lot, uh, Matthew, and it's good to see that they were bending their backs and keeping a gingerly um, aggression to their bowling and not getting a lot of help, but they remained as steady as possible. I'm just looking at the, the color of the pads for Ramdi Hall. It's green. Hetmeyer has on black. And you know for sure that sometimes when on the 15 cricket is being played into county level, whether on the 15, on the 17, on the 19, sometimes the guys aren't able to get together enough, you know, get enough time to get together and do what they have to do together. But you want to see a color code in terms of pads as well. But these things happen when you talk white ball cricket. I've umpired in a few matches where you see um, some of the guys wearing different color pads, of course. 
Quick single taken. The return comes in from backward square at the striker's end, but they get home easily. I've also noticed different colors of boots being used, even at the CPL and IPL level. For me, it doesn't look uniform. We should have a color, color code, as you mentioned, your country's color or your franchise color. Inside edge, actually, that goes towards square leg. But the thinking in the batting between the batsmen have, has certainly improved. Uh, Matthew, it is, they have become more organized as a unit. And I think Hetmeyer has been leading the way in a particular way, leading this recovery and doing a fine job, 92 for four at the end of 29. So, Mohammed 15, C not a duck, Matthew Pereira 6, Adrian Hetma is not out uh, on 43 from 50 balls. Uh, Pereira made 6, Sohil 15, and Ramnaris 5. Look, two, two good young captains on show in this finals. You look at Emmanuel Lois and you look at Hetmeyer. Both have been very good. Good standards set by the captains. Well, Jeet is talking about potential injury. They're pretty big boys. I mean, fully grown physically, most of them. But I would have liked to see uh, to both of these bowlers at least one person relatively close up forward short leg or in in when latif is bowling a solitary slip maybe compact i like this richard ramdial very very compact and so is adrian hetmeyer but you can notice that Altair is trying not to give away uh, too many runs now. So he's not kind of flighting the ball that much now, Naim. I noticed that. Just a little bit flatter. But I think he could have retained the high flight for Ramdiol, and perhaps because of the lack of aggression from Ramdiol, and perhaps uh, just be a little flatter to Adrian Hetmeyer. Encourage Ramdiol to go for it. But good steady bowling here from Outar. I'm very impressed at the variety. Good running now between the wicket. Good over here for Barbies. End of 30, 94 for four. Brandon Henry missed feeling at mid off there. And they got the extra run. Ramley Hall is 15 from 4 to 9. So you can sense that he wants to concentrate, stay in there with his captain. And you know, do well, give him the support he needs. At Maya 43, Mohammed 15, Ramdi Hall 15, the leading run scorers for Barbie so far. So they're just going over three, Matthew, um, and they have a lot of overs. You've got 20 full overs, nice weather conditions, so you would not be restricted by weather. So they've got a lot of overs. I'm not worried with the run rate at all. They need to bat all 50 overs out. It's a final between the top two sides in the tournament. But spirit taught for Esequibo, Naeem, um, down through the years, they've got a new president of their cricket board, and he's very proactive, very dynamic gentleman, and Esequibo's cricket has picked up in terms of value as well. That's a loud appeal outside the line of the off stump. Must have taken him on the pad going through to the keeper. I think I saw Moses Rampal saying there with that left hand out it was going to miss the off stump. Well bowled by Latif, the young man. Short young man. Reminds me also of when Moti started his youth career. He was a very tiny guy. Good Akish Moti. That's driven down to long on for one. It's a good point that you made, and I, I just want to romp home with the uh, concept of cricket and Esequibo. I have never seen Esequibo, even at the senior level, playing so much good cricket 
in the many, many years that I've described them before. And you have to give the president straight down to the fielder. And the people who have been put bending their backs behind this, and by extension, the guy on a cricket board. I think it has been fantastic. I'm seeing an upward trend. Well bowled. Flighted the ball then, and he came down on it nicely. Walking into the shot down to mid-off. Well, this is good, Matthew. Very good cricket. I'm seeing a distinct improvement in the thinking of the batsman and constant bowling and fielding from the Demerara side. Befitting of a final in the air. Could he be taken? No. All the way down to long off in the vicinity of the side screen, just to the right of the fielder, who made a, quite a valiant effort, but just couldn't get there. The correct position for the long off field, actually, he would, he would have had to cover a lot of ground to his right. He tried, but didn't get there. The ball bouncing in front of him. If he was a little bit more straighter, he probably would have taken that catch. 31 overs gone, 97 for the loss of four. The Rose one for 16, Brandon Henry one for 19, and Emmanuel Lowe is the captain one for 14 so far. Just one run away from a half century partnership for the fifth wicket. Richard Ramdi Hall has given good support so far. Look at his, his stats 16 from 51 deliveries. Hetmai, on the other hand, 45 from 54 balls. He pulled that one down and that's flicked away. Nice shot. Down through backward square and that's a boundary. Almost a long hop. And he pounced on it. Adrian Admire. One short of a, a half century. And you want a half century plus in the finals. John Ramsing has joined me. John, good, good day to you. Hello, Matthew. Nice flowing drive again. And that's the 50 for Adrian Hetmeyer. Well played. 50 from 56 deliveries. Captain's knock, but must go on. Three sixes and two fours in that innings of 50 from exactly 56 deliveries. Well played. Good strike rate, 89.29. That's never a problem in 50 over cricket. It's milestones time because the boundary brought up the 50 partnership. 100 on the board, and now we have Meyer bringing up his half century as well. So it's exciting time, Suburbies. Good partnership that taking back the ascendancy from wrestling it away from the home side, Demerara. And that's what you need. You don't want a one sided affair. I like this partnership. Quicker. Outar doesn't want to give away much at all, but hit for a boundary first ball. Because sometimes you try too hard as well. You don't always have to bowl flat. Learn to flight the ball a bit. Bowl with variety. Down the leg side. And that's flicked away fine towards backward square. But I like this partnership. This is what you want. A good fight from the middle order and no one better to lead that than the captain yet my himself 51 from 57 again nice shot down to long on a little bit of misfeeling there from Brandon Henry and tidied up at mid off he gets the single but this is what you want the fight in the middle order Barbie started shakily, two run outs. Chamesh a duck and Pereira six. And then Sewell got 15 and Ramnaris five. They were 48 for four in the 19th over. Ramnaris five came for 37 deliveries, including a boundary. But still to come, look at that. Bodua back, Jakub, Khan, and McKenzie. So batting still there for Barbies. 18 over still to go, lots of time. So that projected score of 166 can be eaten up easily if they continue to bat in this positive manner. 
hesitation and then they went for the run. Ball played into the offside. Ten extras from Demerara so far in their bowling department. Not too bad, but probably they could have done a little better there. And that's something you don't want to do. Don't give away too much extras at all. But they need to break this partnership. In the 33rd overs. 30, 33rd over, beg your pardon. The spinners get through their overs very quickly. But I like the support that Ramdi Hall is given to Hetmeyer. Don't worry with the balls, 55 balls face. He needs to give his captain support because his captain is going great guns at the other end. Lots of familiarity between the two of them. They play for the same club. Really open the batting together. So they are custom being in the middle together. The communication, the understanding is there. We saw with more purpose in the running as well with this pair as opposed to earlier batters with a lot of indecisions. Two runners at the top of the order. And then when Hetmeyer started his innings, Yes, no, yes, no as well. But this time, you see, better communication is that understanding that comes from familiarity. It's a top edge. The keeper settles. Taken. And there he goes again. Getting to a half century and then giving his wicket away. Captain's knock, but needed to go on. It is the demise of Adrian Hetmeyer. And now, another wicket going down for Burby Son of 15 in over number 33. It's now 108 for the loss of five. Hetmeyer go on for 53. That was a threatening partnership that had to be broken. Down on, on the right knee, looking to what? Pull that over mid-wicket. Got the leading edge, flew in the air. The keeper just had to go back a couple of feet. Took the catch. Gleefully threw the ball in the air because they've removed the big fish, the captain. A fine knock, 53 from 60 balls. Caught Apple of the bowling, bowling of Riyad Latif. And the little lad has picked up the big fish, John Ramsey. Partnership broken, so Latif really been threatening. And now getting the prize scalp, like you mentioned. A wicket that he deserves. It goes to show what persistence can do. He was nagging as, an, as a leg spinner. Giving it a lot of flight. Beating the outer edge of the bat and a partnership of exactly 60 runs broken. So it opens the lower middle order. Gibran Yakub, the new batter for Barbie Son of 15. Now Richard Ramdio will have to start again with Yakub to get the next partnership going. And you might very well see Ramdi Hall picking up. The score it a bit now, but you're talking over number 34 about to start from Michael Sharma, who's back into the attack. So while the spinners are doing a good job holding, maybe it's a good time to bring back the seamers as well. Lewis himself can come back. Le Rose can come back. Do give something different. Try to get these batters out as quickly as possible. One can imagine how Latif would have felt picking up at Maya's wicket. Played on the 13 for Guyana. So, good improving young leg spinner. That's what you want. He's very confident. And uh, for me, John, as long as you've got uh, cricketers in your team that are very confident and positive, that, that spirit becomes contagious in the camp. As we, as we talked earlier about Shamar Joseph and what he did. One bounce, tentative push by Ramdi Hall there. One bounce Yacoub. back to the bowler. Nervous moments for Yakub. Oh yes, Yakub. We saw previously just a loud ball to get onto bat. This time, half forward, just pushing at it. There we go again. Sharma is sensing something here. He's onto something, Mikhail Sharma. Both with green pads on, but one with darker green, that's Yaku. And Ramdi Hall with the lighter green pads.
appeal for stomping, but not with total conviction. Not out says umpire. That's the end of 34. Sharma's completed six overs, none for 22. It's now 109 for five. If you look at the leaderboard for batting, Matthew, Parmeshwar Ram, 169. Emmanuel Lewis, the Demarar Dem Dem players, right up there. Adrian Hetmeyer behind them now with 112. The three batters passing the 100 mark. And Dowling from Esukebo at 79. So you see the batting being dominated by the top order men of Demararo and now the captain of Burbies getting in there as well. Of course, Sigo Bain, 69. Rivala Pereira, 56. Those are the guys with 50 runs plus. Big appeal. As Latif starts a new over. <laughs> I like this young man. He's causing some trouble from the northern end of DCC. A very enthusiastic young cricketer. I know a lot of eyes are on him. That's well bowled. And well played coming forward. I suppose you, you're also impressed with the way Asikibo Cricket has taken a bit of a turn. They've improved a lot. I know the not timing the ball, looking to flash it through the offside. Um, I noticed that the Ghana Cricket Board, the, the executive, they want to pay a lot of attention to Asikibo's cricket picking up and improving and the standard getting better because down through the years it's generally been a one-sided affair. Borbis, Demerara, always the top two teams, but we've seen some different things happening in Fessy Kibos cricket, especially even at the senior level. They've done well. Well, they're playing the, is it the President's Eleven? Um, at at um, Maltinos? One of the teams will get some points and will end third. But nothing like the exposure of the young players as the over comes to an end. 35 gone, a maiden over, 109 for five. Excellent bowling from the young man Latif, one for 19 so far. Well bowled, and we've seen the batting leaderboard. Now the bowling leaderboard there, the good pasta. Gilbert Griffith from the Select 11, four wickets from two games for him. Emmanuel Lewis has picked up three. Titania, sorry. Oh. So we get back to the bowling. Stats in a while, but three bowlers seem as if they're sharing the top spot with nine wickets apiece. Leading edge, looking to drive, but in the air of the outside edge, Gibran Yakub not comfortable as yet, especially to Sharma. None for 22 so far for Sharma. So Emmanuel Lowe is keeping the spinners on. Of course, Latif bowling very well from the north end. Picked up Hetmeyer, the captain, and almost got a, a, a wicket from his last over. So he's more or less troubling the, the batters now with his variety. So the last over that was bowled from the southern end, just a single, followed up by a maiden from Latif. And now three dots so far. So the last three overs, including this one, just a single. So pressure building now on Burbies. Demrara controlling things again since the fall of Hetmeyer. And the pressure on Yaku because he's yet to score. Looking to get off the mark. Has just faced his ninth delivery. That projected score 153. We said, don't worry about that. But then Hetmeyer's gone now. So that's going to change a bit. If they're unable to push on at the rate they want to go at. Ramdi all 20 from 64. Loud appeal for a catch of the wicket, looking to force that through the offside. Yakub, not out, says the umpire. Abbas Hussein, both umpires from Burbis. Yeah. 
again uh, well bowl consecutive maidens now so 109 for a loss of 5 36 gone so, so with 14 overs to go that projected score 152 at one time it was bordering around the 170 so Gilbert Griffith, like I said earlier, nine wickets in three games. Zetanya Nurse, your young off spinner from Esukebo, six caps along with Emmanuel Lewis from Demeraro. So the bowling definitely shared, the wickets shared so far. I'm um, Randall Henry, economical, four runs in his um in terms of his average, mm -hmm. his economy rate. So the wickets being shared in the tournament. While a few batters have been run away. This one is a beautiful shot. Playing square of the wicket. A ball that was on the line of his leg stump. There he was quickly into position there, Matthew. Playing it square of the wicket. Getting good connection for yeah. a maximum. Yeah, you pitch outside his leg stump. Of course, he pivoted and he just helped that over backwards square. Nice shot. But he's looking more positive. He's looking better now. 26 from 27 now from 66 balls. Jakub comes back in to strike. Yet to score after 11 deliveries. He needs to get off the mark and build some confidence. This will be interesting now. Latif bowling to Jakub, who was a bit circumspect in his little innings so far. 11 deliveries. And that six releasing a little bit of pressure. But now with a single. It exposes Yakub, who seems to be a bit nervous. Look at that. Flight to delivery. He was backing away. And eventually got his bat down in time. Latif really in the middle of a very good spell. And then he's probably going to bring him onto the front foot just now. So he forced him onto the back foot. Let's watch this delivery from him. Again on the back foot. One for 26 so far. Promising young man. Excellent talent. This is his, what, eight over. So he's bowled well. Oh, to the left of the field at extra cover. Dived his left, but couldn't get there. And that's a boundary to get him off the mark. But he would love that. And that would be a, a big boost to his confidence level, 120 for 5. And the width was there too. And he slapped it hard through the covers. Well bowled on the middle stump, over comes to an end, 37 gone, 120 for 5. And in the context of the game, 11 runs in that over is considered very expensive. But Latif, they are searching for a wicket, and that is what leg spinners will, will do. They are attacking, and with that wrist spin away from the right-handed batters, you can be a little bit wide of the off stump and can be punished. So eight overs for him, one for 30, supporting nicely the Rose, one for 16, and Henry, one for 19. Half century for Hetmeyer, good support from Ramdial, who's still there. Sohail Mohammed earlier got 15. Work to do, 120 for 5, Barbie Sondo 15, winning the toss and batting first in this very important round 3 match against Demerara. In a short while, we'll have a presentation coming up. Regal Stationery and Computer Center once again making their mark as a corporate entity in Guyana. There continue to do well with a corporate social responsibility regal sport and regal stationary computer center they'll be contributing towards the Guyana side on the 15th side as a head off for regional duties i support them you know i bought a chair from them <laughs> yes i bought a chair from them yeah they they put a lot into the cricket they put a lot of money into the cricket as well good team the leadership As long as you've got a hunger for the game of cricket, once you want to put a lot of money and you make the sacrifice, you put in the effort, you give the time, 
you'll get good results out of the game of cricket. So Henry's back, this time from the southern end. You mentioned you're supporting Regal Stationary Computer Center, which is excellent because it's basically a cycle where the funds will revolve. Matthew buys from Regal. Regal supports cricket. The cricketers take their insurance from Matthew, and it continues. And they dropped my chair at, at my home. Excellent. In the vehicle. That Excellent. was That was so good. It, it's an executive chair. Well, why not? You're an executive, Mr. Kisun. And the guys, they give you a regal service from Regal. FL Sport equipment bus. Compliments of Regal as well. Of course. It's a Regal bus. And John Ramsing is an executive as well, running this company. Let me give you the, it's www.flsport.gy. Loud appeal. I have to give my colleague some uh, mileage here. Good job so far, John, with, with the company and covering cricket. It's followed all over the world and that's important. That's what you want. You're a big love of the game. You play the game as well. Can't say you are a great cricketer, but you're very enthusiastic and you love the game. Not, a, not bad at all. That's, that, that's the kind of spirit you must have, whether your talent is excellent or not. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Runs flowing now. Will they look to come back for the second slight misfield? Yes. You must capitalize on the little misfield to come to get back some momentum in this batting side but Burby's now desperately again looking for a partnership it has been all of the day really for them with them are picking up wickets pretty much at regular intervals Darwin LaRue's giving away the extra run there just now you don't want that he's your fast bowler he needs to come back along with Emmanuel Lowe is the captain Brandon Henry one for 23 Final delivery to complete over number 38. So they've kept the, the scoring rate down, 3.28, the current run rate. Nice, nicely swept away. Down to long leg. They've uh, taken one, but that will go over the boundary. That's a nice shot. Nicely swept by Jakub. He's gone to 10 from 20. The over comes to 9. 128 for 5. 11 runs in the last over, and now. Seven runs in this one, so 18 runs in the last two overs. Momentum back with Burbies. That was a bad line delivery from Henry, and given the treatment. So with 12 overs to go, look at that again. Projected score jumping towards the 170 again, which can be very competitive in this game. It's a big game. So tensions will be high. Look at that partnership developing again. 20 from 30, not bad at all. After the loss of the aggressive, the inform. And the seasoned champion, Adrian Hetmeyer. Of course, if Hetmeyer was there, that score would have looked different. Probably would have uh, got up to 150 already, plus. So Emmanuel Lewis will bowl from the north end. So he's brought himself on the captain for the first time he'll bowl from the northern end of DCC. The captain. And is on target immediately. Ramley Hall, 27 from 68. Yakub. Building up his confidence level, 10 from 20. Lois would want to get into, into the wickets column. None for 14 so far. Third man, point, cover deep, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid on deep, straight mid wicket, backward square. So it's been good weather for this tournament. This weekend would be the start, proper start of the GCA cricket in Georgetown. 
That's the Georgetown Cricket Association. In the air, it was a bouncer. Two fielders attempting to get to the ball into the mid-wicket area. And the ball dropped uh, over them. They were running one run into the side run, one running backwards. But aggression from Emmanuel Lewis, bouncer. And he reached for it, got bad onto it. And that was advocating for pace to come back towards the back end. But maybe a little bit too late with Manny coming back, with Emmanuel Lewis coming back into the attack himself. From the and northern that, end. And that was Richard Ramley Hall with some aggression. That's a quick delivery outside the off stump. Kept a bit low. So one delivery from Lois to complete the 39th over. The run rate 3.32. Both batters have gained more confidence. Another short ball hit in the air, and that's into the gap between mid off and mid on. Mid off will get a run, he feels, inside the boundary. And uh, they get what? A single? For that shot, the over comes to an end, 39 gone, 130 for five. Pace back into the attack and just two singles in that over. So probably son of 15 despite looking to get on with things, with a pace on, not making it easy for them. So 130 now for five, 11 to go. Henry still into the attack, will continue. He started at the northern end. Now this is his seventh, his second from the southern end. John, I must say that I, I, I enjoy the aggression there of Emmanuel Lewis just now. Bowling two short deliveries. Could have actually picked up a wicket on both occasions. That swept in the air. Catch taken. Down at backward square. That's the end of Jakub. Gone for 11 from 23 balls. So the wicket come in. 130 for 6. Looking to sweep. Got the edge. Top edge. Flew in the air. Down to backward square. Easy catch taken. And he is gone for 11. 130 now for 6. Living a charmed life, you would say. Eventually giving his wicket away. But now again, as soon as the partnership was developing, Demerara picking up a wicket, 130 for six. That projected score bordering around that 170, which in my opinion will be very, very useful at DCC here. It's time for drinks, and also we have a special presentation right here in the Members Pavilion with the Ghana Cricket Board and Regal Stationery Computer Center. Presentation being made to captain of the Murara team, Emmanuel Lewis, Regal Stationery Computer Center, giving a young man a pair of batting gloves, SS brand. Presentation being made by manager of Regal Sport, Ian John. Very timely presentation, one that is well deserved as well. Next one. 
And there is another big presentation to be made as well, also from Regal Stationary Computer Center. Manager of Regal Sport, Ian John, representing the company this morning, making a presentation to the Guyana Cricket Board. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without cooperate Guyana, cricket will never be taken to another level. Thus, today, we have in our presence uh, Mr. Ian John. He is the manager for Regal Sports. Uh, and at the side of Mr. Ian John is Anil Bihari, an executive member at the Guyana Cricket Board, technocrat for marketing, government, governance, and finance. And first of all, we have a presentation to be made today. But just before that presentation, I will ask Mr. Anil Bihari to say a few words on behalf of the Guyana Cricket Board. Well, there's a little switch. Mr. Ian John is going to be addressing it first. He's the manager for Regal Sports, decked out beautifully in his red and black. Pleasure, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Anil Biari. And right now we are witnessing the playing of the under 15 match between Demerara and Barbies. But more, most importantly, Regal Sports, once again, is doing a presentation to the Guyana Cricket Board in, in efforts to promote the development of youth cricket in and around this country. You know Regal has been an entity which has always been behind sports, whether it be cricket, football, tennis, what have you. And on behalf of our CEO, Mr. Mahindra Hardial, who could not have been here, he has graced this, this presence with myself and he would like to say a special thanks to the Guyana Cricket Board to give him the opportunity to Regal Sports and Regal Computer Station and Computer Center to be part of this proceedings here this, this morning. One second. We, we're looking forward to greater developments and a lot more in cricket. As you know, R Regal would like to do much more for cricket and we we just doing this small token of appreciation to ensure cricket is developed in and around the the country. Thank you. And just before we get oh, thank you very much Mr. Just before we continue we just have to take that wicket, a Ian. direct hit. And Burby's losing another wic wicket, this time again via run out. A direct hit from the fielder right back on the boundary at fine leg and the new batsman Budwa sent back for just a single. Another wicket going down, 131 for seven. We head back to the presentation. Oh, thank you very much, John Ramsing. We're back here, and we're back with uh, Mr. Anil Bihari, an executive member of the Guyana Cricket Board. We'll have some few words from Anil. Uh, thank you very much, Injajit. Good morning again, gentlemen. First of all, it's, it's a pleasure to be here this morning and to be on behalf of the Guyana Cricket Board receiving a token of appreciation in terms of cash from Regal Stationery and Computer Center. Now the GCB is, is trying its best to use innovative ways of marketing our, our work. And uh, our youth cricket takes precedence over any other cricket uh, to begin with. So we reached out to uh, Mr. CEO, Anil Hardial, and he has decided to come on board to assist the Guyana Cricket Board in its youth development program. So we are very thankful to the organization. We want to wish them well. We want to say thanks again on behalf of the Guyana Cricket Board, the President and the Executive Members of the Guyana Cricket Board. So, once again, thank you very much, Regal Stationery and Computer Supplies. Thank you very much, uh, Anil, and we're going to have that presentation done now. Mr. John, on behalf of Regal Sports, we'll be handing it over to Mr. Anil Bihari. All right, it's cash, and I know this will go towards the development of youth cricket in this country. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Regal Sports. Thank you very much, Anil. Ah, full toss down the leg side as we come back to live action, and that's going to go into the boundary for five. It's four extras in the form of wides. So very eventful over. The 40th over of the innings. Probably son of 15, soon as they were beginning to develop a partnership, wicked going down. 
Runs via extras now coming again, Matthew. Henry, they're just straying on the outside the line of the leg stump as well. But they have a they really would have really like to use up their 50 overs nonetheless. Arif Khan joining Richard Ramdi all at the crease. And Arif Khan, not only an experienced youth, but one with a lot of reputation as well. Full toss, bold, missed all over, bold all over the place. Richard Ramdiol playing across the line to a full delivery. One that was given some flight, he missed it as he was looking to go through the onside. And stumps scattered. So wicket number eight going down. Ramdiol clean bold. It's now 137 for the loss of eight. And I was just mentioning Barbies on the verge of not using their 50 overs. Machuki soon. Yes, and look, they've lost three wickets in the fourth year to over. Yakub caught La Rose at backwards square, Bowl Henry Fee 11. Fias Baksh, the vice captain, run out, direct return at the striker's end from, by Autar for a duck, 131 for seven. And uh, Ramdi all bowl by Henry for 28. I think he faced 72 balls, 137 for eight. So they've lost three wickets in the fourth year to over. And this is where when you look at on the 15 cricket, sometimes you wonder. Uh, these youngsters have just got to go there, keep, keep their, their heads level out there, and seek to just do the basics. And really, um, Yakub, that catch was a simple one. The run out going for a second run really should not have been on. He was run out without probably facing the ball. And then Ramdial just bowled by Henry. Uh, more, more or less a full length delivery and he played all over it and here's a chance for an appeal he's out given out stumped so Raphael is stumped uh, first ball and we look at the replay but he's gone for a duck so it's all happening here at the DCC ground Burbies have catapulted from a position of 108 for 5 to 137 for 9. Now, so he's gone uh, for a duck and just one wicket left. Let's have a look at the replay. Push forward. Good bit of work by the keeper there. Stumped and given out by the umpire Moses Rampall at square leg. He's gone for a duck. 137 for 9. Nine channels come back. It has all happened in 40 overs. Four wickets going down. Yakub, Bash, Ramdiol, and the final wicket they are, or the last man just out to complete the 40 overs. 137 for nine. Really, it's been action packed, but kudos to the Demerara side. For a job well done. The 40th over being the miraculous over for them after being 108 for the loss of five. Naim Chan, welcome back. Thank you, Matthew. So you've been following, I guess. Um, hope you are enjoying the streaming here coming out of the DCC ground. And from what was a bad start, good build back, rebuilding, spearheaded by Hetmeyer. Um, then a little semi-collapse again. So it, in its entirety, it's not been a good day for Barbies in this, what could be described as the, the final uh, of the wrong robin. So they've uh, made a rebuild, a uh, rebuilding process, came out good, and now collapsing again. 40 overs gone. This one is going to come close towards backward square. And the fielder there, I don't think, can pull that back. It goes into the boundary for four. And that's Arif Khan, first ball, lagging down the leg side from Emmanuel Lewis and turned away purposefully and along the ground and getting into the boundary for four. A happy good four for Barbies because, uh, Jeet, we were expecting or uh, exhorting that Barbies should consolidate and at least bat 50 overs out. Broadside, all the way down towards the mid-wicket boundary. That's going to go into the boundary for four. So a bit of aggression here uh, by Arif Khan. A six and then a four. 
uh, two boundaries, in fact, and it's uh, nine runs to him, 145 for nine. Jid, they may not see the 50 yet over through, but at least they have made some comeback. We were projecting, hopefully, that Barbies will muster at least over 200 runs. I'll have you in a while. Arif Khan is going through the onside again, tumbling effort there. And this time they decide to stay at one. I, I am not only surprised, I'm also shocked. When you have somebody like Arif Khan um, in your team, he has shown very good form this season, and you're batting him so late in the order in a Barbies team that has struggled to bat out 50 overs, it asks questions. I mean, those who are in charge of setting the batting lineup must be asked these questions because here you have a young man who is in good form, can bat. You're sending him so late in the order and players collapse in. Short, down the leg side looking for an almighty swing. You know, I, I don't feel that it was the right batting order. Arif should have been there a little bit earlier. Um, he's one of them who can take the fight, as we have already seen. I think Burbies has missed a trick here. Well, I'm seeing him for the first time. He seems very, very compact, and uh, he hits the ball very cleanly. Yes, and the role here now of Ravin, do not, uh, um, you know, play extra aggressively. He should, have ens he should ensure... He saves his wicket and give Arif Khan a chance to score from the other end. If you don't get singles, that's fine. Nine wickets gone. You still have ten overs to bat after this one. Well, just about halfway, the t 25 overs, uh, the projected score on our computer was reading 164. It's gone now to 178 at the end of 41. So, but that, that's based on mathematics and calculations. But ideally, they really should have, uh, a good ideal score would have been over the 200 mark at least. And you're right about that, Naeem, because you look at the composition of the Demerara batting, a very, very strong team. The openers, they are rock solid, they're aggressive. When the time demands, they can hit sixes and fours. Um, number three, number four, solid as well. So you want to ensure whatever, you know, runs you put in the board is a competitive total. But they say runs on the board are runs on the board. Whatever Barbies get, the thought is going to be, let us go out and defend that as far as possible. Absolutely. A, a quick wicket or two falling can put uh, the next team, which is Demerara, to bat under pressure. Uh, this is the glorious game of cricket, glorious uncertainties. Parmeshwar Ram, just a short while ago, was mentioning that I'm happy to see, as perhaps the leading batsman in Demerara, that he's also bowling, and he's bowling straight to the wicket. Good all round cricket, and uh, this augurs well for him in the future. That's the end of the innings in the G. 146 all out, 41.1 overs. Uh, it, it, there could be a fight, as you mentioned. The possibility exists for a few wickets tumbling, putting Demerara on the back foot, you never know. Ideally, over 200 runs would have been good. That was not to be. 146 is not entirely good, but you never know what cricket has in store, a game of glorious uncertainties. That's 146 all out, the perfect delivery to end the innings. It means that Demerara require 147 runs to win from all of 50 overs. Should not be a hasty um, charge. Mohammed 15, Sinot didn't score, Pereira 6. 53 by Adrian Hetmeyer, give it away at the end. Two fours and three sixes, brilliant knock, however. Um, Ramda is 5, 28 to Ramdi all, 11 Yakub, 1 Baksh, 10 to Arif Khan. Can't blame him in the circumstances. Mackenzie didn't score. Budwa was not out to not. 146 of 41.1 overs. There were 17 extras. 
the bowling department. Four for 34 from seven overs. Brandon Henry, he led the charge. Um, Darwin LaRose picked up one for 16. One for two from Ram and one for 30 from Latif, who I thought bowled splendidly in his eight overs the leg spinner, give away 30 runs. So 147 runs to get for victory from 50 overs. We're going to take a break. Do join us in another 40 minutes or so when Demarara will begin their reply.
So 147 required for victory here for Demerara after bowling out Burbies for 146. And they have all 50 overs to do that. This is going to be a good battle out in the middle. Burbies is known from their never say die attitude. I think after scoring 146, they are going to be disappointed. 53 scored by Adrian Hetmeyer. A fine knock that's standing out like a, a castle in a ghetto. While Richard Ramdial, 28, lending support along with 15 from Sohil Mohammed. Not too much from the rest. And look at the destruction caused by Brandon Henry, 4 for 34, 1 for 30 from Latif, and 1 for 16 from Darwin LaRose. So it is left to be seen now how Burbies are going to be disciplined in the field. They must take their catches. Look and ensure they do not miss field if they're going to put pressure on a very strong open, um, opening partnership that they're accustomed to, the Demerara team. We're having Kush Sigobin and the left-handed Parmeshwar Lal. With me, John Ramsing. John, uh, chasing down that 147 with 300 deliveries to go. Your bet? <laughs> Good afternoon, Indajit. What I know for sure, a new champion will be crowned. These teams unbeaten so far, but one will be beaten today, and one will be uh, crowned champions, brand new champions of the Ghana Cricket Board under 15 in the county tournament. The defending champions, Select 11, not having their way this season. They're playing right now against Esquivo. Uh, one of those teams as well will register a win. Both of the, those teams not getting any points from win in this tournament so far. Yeah, but this opening pair, like you mentioned, will look to set things up nicely for the home side while Burbies will be heavily dependent on Arif Khan and the, he shares a new wall with captain Adrian Hetmeyer. lots to be dependent on them again hoping that they can come good for their side first delivery right on target and immediately off the meat of the bast of coach Sigobin he will want to carry that confidence over from his previous innings where he looked excellently excellent against the Essequibo team. And if they can get a breakthrough here, certainly they will feel very, very happy. These guys put on 95 um, in the last game. And good start here, John, by Arif Khan. Not looking for too much pace. He's a youngster, he'll want to bowl quick, but short of a good length just outside the line of the off stump. Yeah, he's that type of bowler. Don't give anything away, not too much of room outside off. And sometimes it can be a bit short, but on this occasion, pitching up to the little man with a big appetite for batting long. We saw him in the, f in the last game, Sigobin. Maybe got a bit tired towards the end. He's off the mark, nice shot. That's going to run pretty close to the boundary, but not get there with the tide. And pulling and pulling confidently. There's a feeler at square leg close to the umpire, but he had no chance. He just had to go chasing. Kush is off the mark. They are on the 15. Off and running. Yes, and he was very careful when he played that shot. It was slow off the pitch. He knew the fielder was there, so he had to clear the head, and he did that. So nothing wrong. It was in the air, but it was hit pretty safe. And if you're going in the air, you want to ensure that you get it over the head of the fielders with the fielding restrictions. You will get the extras as you go through. So Demraro will try to pace their innings. Arif Khan knows how important early wickets will be to his side. And with the experience and exuberance, who will no doubt be buoyed by that innings of 53, Hetmeyer, the other end, will want to get in the wickets column very early. Sigurdsson plays a lot of shots, has a good temperament, but we want to see him turning those dots into ones. Sometimes it can be converted into twos, twos as well. So 51 runs. The stats from the first game not registered here, so it's shown as if this is his second match of the tournament. He actually played all three. 49 missing out on a half century in the last game right here. And this time it was a short lifting delivery outside the line of the off stump. Uh, 
Um, just couldn't resist this time, Kosher, flashing a theater and not making any contact. He's going to be mindful that there is a backward point and a solitary slip just about a meter away from the keeper. There's also short cover, short extra cover, a mid-off, and a short straight mid-wicket and a mid-on. Good full face of the bat there to a delivery that's pitched up. End of the first over, three without loss. The Barbicians are away from home, but thanks to technology in the JIT, the Barbicians are following the game and sending their regards to their team. Hello to Devendra Bishu. Also, I want to say good afternoon to Romeo Nemal, also known as Mystic, the internationally recognized and recording artist, the musical artist. Uh, I'm not sure if I can call him my friend. But hello, guys. <laughs> uh, John Ramsing denying his friendship with his buddies. Yes, and of course, uh, across. Uh, and it's good that the guy on the cricket board, you know, this is something that they have embarked on. They have kept their promise. They are doing live streaming of, uh, you know, inter-county matches. And this augurs well, taking the cricket to the homes of people. If you can't come to the ground, you still have a chance to follow what is happening, and that creates uh, a huge interest. Uh, there was a time when interest was lost in the game, and now, you know, with the advent of live stream, that interest has been created. So hello to all you guys in Burbies, Demerara, of course, as Equivo, and around the world. It's amazing. Lots of Guyanese who live in North America, they also watch um, the games. On that note, we'll say good afternoon to Ravindra Marulal, who is tuned in as well. Hit my share in the new ball, but starts with a wide. Marulal, as usual, glued to the action. Well, he's Mr. Cricket. He writes it, he talks it, he plays the game as well. Once again, we see Lal pushing at one outside the line of the off stump. Ram, in fact. Um, teasing away there has to be careful normally looks a very um, solid opening batsman but he has to contend with uh, Hetmeyer pitching just close to the line of the off stump good start here by Hetmeyer started wide and brought it a bit closer let's see where he's gonna go now edging but just short of the field that first slip and with the pace on the small ground, is going to run away. Chance created in the jeep. Brought it back nicely. Yes, and this is going to hurt Barbies. Uh, Hetmeyer probing outside the line of the off stump. And for the second time, having the left-handed Parmeshwar Lal pushing a tit outside the line of the off stump. This time got the edge. The keeper dived, but just could not hold on to it. Look at that. Well, he should have been stretching forward there, John. Maybe picked it up late as the ball was dying on him. But that was an opportunity to dismiss a dangerous batter. Late and going down the field at first slip. Nice flowing drive. We've seen the confidence in these batters, not afraid to play their strokes. And that is because they have runs under their belt. They have that confidence of knowing that once they can get going, the runs will come up easily for their side. The selectors will be looking at these games very closely, which will be used as a yardstick for picking the national side for the 15 tournament, the regional under 15 tournament. They have a good headache. Uh, and this is a lovely back foot drive uh, down towards wide mid off. Left the bat sweetly. That suggests the timing was good. Just the placement there to the right of the wide mid off uh, would have given them some headache. But just beginning to gain confidence here. And sometimes when you drop quality players like these, you just pay for those mistakes.
And this time, Hetmeyer straying down the leg side, missing his line this time. But what a talent is Adrian Hetmeyer. Lovely batsman and a wonderful medium fast bowler. It's the kind of asset that any team would like to have. That has brought me to a point as well. Recently, we've seen a lot of all rounders coming through that are not spinning, spin bowling all rounders, seam bowling all rounders. Romario Shepard, Kimo Paul, Sherfin Rutherford, you know, Christopher Barnwell, and an, uh, an original scene, Darren Sammy, Bravo, Pollard, Russell. You know, we've seen Jason Hole as well coming through. A lot of these guys might, might have been emulating those guys. When you look at Sam Hetmeyer, Arif Khan, those guys from the Escribo side as well, maybe they're following some of their heroes. Two gone, nine without loss. Of course, John, I think you have called it correctly. And with the changing fortunes of the game as well, so many leagues across the world, and many of these leagues, they're looking for all-rounders who can be good with bat, who can be good with ball, and of course, the fielding as well. So as our youngsters grow up, no doubt they're going to have their minds set on these things. And of course, I think there are regulations too. Fast bowlers have to bowl so many overs in this under-15 um, tournament, and that's good to see. I mean, while we want to develop our spinners, fast bowlers, nobody likes to face faster men out in the middle if you're a batter. Arif Gan starts his second with a wide. There's always that self-preservation as a force modus operandi. So after that, then you try to get some technique, but try to save yourself first. Absolutely. So they say as the bowler begins to run in, there are three things that are foremost on the batter's mind. And, uh, and the most prominent one is the fear of physical damage when you're facing a faster bowler. The second one is to ensure you preserve the wicket. And third is to look for the scoring opportunity. So there are three thinking going on in the minds of a batter when you're facing the faster men. I remember reading the great Sir Len Hutton was asked. Slice over the top of third man and away to the boundary for four. That's a deliberate shot by Coach Sigobin. Backward point was in, short lifting, and he played it beautifully. Using the pace, using the bounce. It was outside the off stump. Looks a little bit like Sachin Tendulkar to me on that shot. He's been working a, a lot in the nets. Young Sigubin, his dad. He's had some sessions with Coach Oren Bailey, Coach Isan Crandon as well. So he's been exposed to some good guys. Look at that nice flick off the pad. Has his shots, but I want to see him carry on. Do not get 49. Get the 100. Selectors will remember the 100 more than the 49. Despite the context might be a bit different. Last game was reduced to 32 overs. He had a chance. Need to keep going. You mentioned that name, Sachin Tendulkar. In 2009, when India toured Australia, John, I'll tell you what Sachin said after this delivery. <coughs> he said they came up against a barrage of excellent fast, fast bowlers who could terrorize any batter on planet Earth. So they had to devise a plan. How are we going to play the short delivery? It was one day matches. Do we leave them to go by? We can't score runs. And then he, Sachin, decided that we're going to go over the top backward point and over third man. So they got under and they played it very, very successfully. Right, exactly, just like that one. This time the man pushed back down towards the third man boundary, halfway there, this time only a single. But they found a way, and many other teams around the world, you know, copied that approach. Today, it's almost predictable where the short ball outside the off stump will be flying. And I think Burbis, they've done their homework, realizing that Sigurdsson used that as one of the scoring opportunities down to third man, so they've plugged the, the gap now. 
She just got a single. But it's good to see that the players are thinking as well. Plugging the gap after being after leaking a boundary. Because it wasn't a bad ball as it was some amount of aggression from Arif Khan. But Sigubin was not I cannot say equal to the task. Was ahead of him on that occasion. So what can we expect with this final delivery in over number three coming up from Arif Khan with the fine leg push way out on the boundary? We'll be hoping that the left-handed Parmeshwar Ram plays the, the hook shot and looking for a catch down in that area. Well, he chose this time to go right up and well played. Good call here by Ram and they get the single in the process. Quite an eventful over. A couple of extras, a boundary, and some singles. 17 without loss, three gone. Those are some of the guys on the scoreboard in the JIT. Visiting with the playing, with the, with the side that's visiting Guyana. Richmond Hill <laughs> Cricket Club. Mixing with some of the local guys as well. So the guys from Richmond Hill Cricket Club. Dominic Ricky. Is part of that touring party. He's on the scoreboard. A few others among him. Well, uh, in that crowd, Norman the Juice Man is there as well. Scoreboard. Lots of history and lots of memories as well. Lots of old talk happening on that scoreboard over the years. Yes, John, and that has been the most prolific scorer at DCC. Very stylishly here, the youngster. Parmeshwar Ram looks compact, very skilled cricketer. And the team from Richmond Hill, John, they have been playing a few matches across Guyana. Yeah, they're on tour. They were in Eskibo. Have games in Barbies, Sejul, Devonara as well. And more should be uh, up, on, up there on the weekend. Nicely turned into the onside. This is really nice cricket from the under 15 lads. Get Maya steaming in. I look at Ram quickly into position. He looks really good. Yes, and I think that the Richmond Hill team, they're having two matches in Esequibo. They will be hosted by the Esequibo Cricket Board. Nice flowing cover drive, but you gotta pick the gaps. Shiv Chan Paul always tell you that. You look for the gaps, not for the fielders. And some stats coming in in the jeet. Before today, we had four matches. Two hundreds were scored. Two half centuries in addition to those two hundreds. With a ball, there were 28 maidens bold. Beautiful cover drive this time. No man move. Everyone just admiring the shot. Well played, Parmesh Waram. Now into the 20s, 21 without loss. That was classy indeed. Just look at this. Whoa, through the offside, bisecting the cover and the extra cover with all the ease in the world. Shiv Narayan Chandapal will feel particularly pleased with that. And if you're accustomed to the Sahara Desert, they'll tell you that shot was like a glass of wine after crossing it. <laughs> Lovely. Looking to go again, looking to capitalize on a short ball. More pace that time from Hetmeyer. In addition to 28 maidens that were bowled in the Jeet, 994 dot balls were delivered, which makes up a percentage of 66.4. Heavy percentage of dot balls, and something that coaches, even the batters themselves, will want to work on. Thank you to Ronaldo McGarrell, statistician. Edged. This time falling short again of the first slip. So beautiful cover drive. Now half chance. Yes, and four overs gone, 22 um, without loss. Give credit here to young Adrian Hetmeyer. 
Look at this, probing outside the line of the off stump, forcing the left-hander to play. The edge found once again, not carrying, and lucky to be there. But this is excellent stuff, good battle between bat and ball. Y you mentioned the number of dot balls, and that has plagued Caribbean batters for the longest period of time. That's something that the coaches must be able to work on. And sometimes it's just not the shot that the batter plays. Sometimes it has to do with their ability to run between the wicket to get those singles. So I guess it's a work in progress and we need to cut that out. Because in any form of cricket, if you just block and can't score, you put pressure on yourself. Arif Khan searching for a breakthrough. Looking to prize out one of these batters. Chances being created, but nothing so far going their way. And with a target of 147, they need to pick up early wickets. But the top order of Demerara has been all has been doing all the heavy lifting in this tournament. So Barbies will have their work cut out. But nice conditions in the Jeet. The Sahara dust is with us. Everyone must take their precaution, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday and maybe a day before that. Yeah, yesterday was ridiculous indeed. Short, lifting delivery and well played by Parmeshwar Lal here. And I agree with you, John. Those who are asthmatic, uh, you know, those who normally have sinus problem, wear your mask. If you can stay indoor, stay indoor. Watch the cricket so you can't go wrong. Tick outside edge. Down to White, the third man. Come back for the second. So the scoring rate, the current run rate is over five runs and over. Required run rate is just over two runs and over. So they're well ahead. Demerara on the 15th at this stage. You know what Jeffrey Boycott will always say, add two wickets to that. And the equation definitely will change. Yes, and Jeff has proven that that has always been right. And we have seen how cricket can change with the fall of a wicket. You add another one to that one, and you have to rethink your strategies. But so far, especially Parmeshwar Ram, he has been riding his luck, but he's battling it out in the middle, showing good judgment because it was far too wide this time. Young Arif Khan will need to develop some mental toughness. He's trying too hard to get a wicket, but not trying to work or on the mind of the batters. Need to set the batters a few, whether it's short or whether it's full, and then use the other one as a stock delivery or as a wicket taken delivery. This time he's just ambling in, bowling outside the line of the outstop. I think they m there might be a plan to bowl to one side of the field based on the field setting but it's just too wide on that occasion. Yes, and Arif Khan need to just regroup here. Um, you do not want to give away too many wides because simply means runs have been given away and then you have to bowl the extra deliveries. This time down the lakeside, another wide there. So we're having him just spraying it outside the off stump, outside the leg stump. And here is where the skipper comes in and Adrian Looks as though he's going up to his man, getting a little bit closer to say something to him. Just hold it back a little there. Try to ensure your line and length is going for you. Three consecutive deliveries now. He has been off the mark. So maybe the temptation is there to remove him from the attack after this over. Unless something dramatic happens. There he goes again. Two wide of the mark to a different batter. So he's certainly lost his radar. Yes, he has lost it and lost it badly here. Um, not good enough for a bowler who is known to be very disciplined in his bowling. 
And sometimes these things do happen to you. He has a huge following in the West Coast Burbies area, especially around the Cotton Tree, the Edwards villages. Nicely steered here by Kush for a single, down to third man. At the end of the over, I'll give an update on the other match of the round. Escobar against the Select 11. That's happening at the Maltino Sports Club ground on Thomas Lands, not far from where we are. That's great timing by the left-handed Ram. And just beginning to ooze in confidence now. Five overs gone. 31 without loss. Ten deliveries in that over. Four were wides. So across at Maltinos, Esquivo against the Select 11, the defending champions. So Esquivo won the toss and decided to bat. They got 180 for seven. Batting out their quota of 50 overs. Excellent indeed from Esquivo. The top scorer, Jetaniel Nurse. 43 from 64 deliveries with five boundaries. Supported by... Francis Gurahu, 36 from 89 deliveries, batted a long time. Who, who actually scored at 36? He also scored five, hit five fours. Francis Gurahu. <laughs> I like that name. Bowling for the Select 11, Gilbert Griffith, who has been the tournament's leading bowler, picking up a four of four wickets for 10 runs from eight overs. Four for 10 from eight. That's excellent bowling. By Gilbert, uh, you know, congratulations to him. And little man Nurse uh, putting together half cent, uh, 40 yards? 45. Excellent from him. Always impressive. And it's good to see Esquivo batting out there 50 overs. 180 is not bad at all. Now, th this is a better Parmeshwar um, ram that we are seeing here, John. Getting across the line, rocking on the back foot uh, and getting on top of the ball and playing defensively down into the offside field. You just don't want to push at it uh, with the bat away from the body. So the longer he spends out in the middle, the more confidence he's developing. But Hetmaier is up to the task. He's going to test him. Forcing shot off the back foot. Uh, return comes in. See, Gobin gets home. Good call. And good running. Both of them started almost at the same time. Hetmeyer was looking for the run out there. Not on. They got the single in the process. So, good battle going out. This partnership is beginning to look much more dangerous. Here for Borbis, who needs wicket, had their opportunities, surely did not take the catches. Hello to you, Naim. Hi, Jeet. Good afternoon, all. Nice afternoon. Nice windy afternoon. Brisk. Nice Atlantic wind coming into the commentary box. Beautiful game. I, I think I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the intensity of the battle. Saw good cricket. I saw some good bowling from Demerara. Good recovery from Barbies. And uh, I was talking all the while about looking out for the emerging and spark sparkles. Struck on the pad. Give now, tell BW, you're sprouting forward, not long forward in the jeet, half cocked almost, struck on the pad, and the umpire decided, yes, it's out. Yes, we shall certainly be watching that on the replay, but give credit. To to Hetmeyer, how well he has bowled. He keep outside the line of the off stump, outside the line of the off stump, and here is one that looks from our vantage point as we look at the replay. In the mind of the umpire, it was straight. He nodded the head very early. It swung in the air there and then dropped onto the pad. I think it was going on to hit the stumps. Good decision by the umpire. Well bowled. You saw that ball wobble in the air? Could be some of the Sahara dust and the wind that's blowing here? Well, the Sahara dust knows exactly what it can blow. I was wondering if John Singh 
uh, John Ram Singh is in the open air. I know it, the dust would manage his, his actual weight. But good cricket. Uh, this is beautiful. And the battle is on. And that's what I like. Burbies, they were lurking, giving away chances, but they knew and they know that the only way to come out here on top is to get wickets. Because that score is not a big enough score actually to defend. It's not pleasing. Over 200 would have been good. They got 149. So 115 runs needed. Lots of deliveries to get it. So Demerara knows that. Parmeshwar Ram, who is always looking so good, elegant, compact, he had some close shaves. Uh, the chances were not taken, but he's still there. And that's a good sign for Demerara. New batsman. Yes, and that one too, full coming forward, turning it away there, Emmanuel Lewis. He's the skipper of this Demerara team, and certainly he will want to stamp his authority out in the middle. He's one of the Centurions, big knock of 160 right here. So, so both are the top run scorers. And uh, I would like to see the maturity shown here, like what Hetmeyer did, at least to a great extent. Oh, this is not good. Down the leg side, pretty wide, wide signal by the umpire. Yes, and when you're looking for the extra pace and you're looking to get it full, sometimes you tend to stray down the leg side. But Hetmeyer knows he's looking to get one as straight and full as possible. And he has shown good intelligence, Adrian Hetmeyer. Again down the leg side. And bowling into the wind at this age too that they are, uh, their bodies are still developing and bowling into the wind is not an easy thing. Uh, we were looking at the Esukibo Demerara game. We saw the amount of wides down the leg side and offside. And uh, those were the bowlers basically who were bowling into the wind. And that well bowled, that's a slow delivery, but well read by Emmanuel Lewis here, punching it nicely. Six overs gone, Adrian Hetmeyer, one for 14 from three, 34 for the loss of one. Uh, what you're looking at there is the tournament score. Parmeshwar Ram leading the table, 183, Emmanuel Lewis, so the big run scorers are in the wicket at the moment. Hetmaya from Barbies comes uh, number 312, and then the followers. Yes, uh, um, Justin Dowlin uh, is in that. He's from Esiquibo. Good boy, nice, solid, left-handed player. So I think he's in the reckoning in the minds of the selectors too. Um, he took Esiquibo into decency with his batting. Almost took them home until he was outfoxed by a slow delivery against the Barbicians, was caught at extra cover, but he looks real good. Arif Khan, that's again outside the line of the off stump, but it's a, a, a beautiful afternoon, very, very windy, and the sunshine just about streaming down on DCC ground. Again, I'd like to remind you, we call this the home of legends, the Marara Cricket Club, all, many of the great West Indian players, all were born here. Again outside the off stump. So, while the sheen is still on the ball, uh, Jeet, I think they would have to, as much as possible, try to make the batsman play. Yes, it is important, and uh, Arif Khan is striving to do that, a trade on a number of occasions. He knows he needs to get it much more straight. Maybe outside the leg stump there and nicely torn away down towards the backward square all along the ground. And you saw the ease in which Parmeshwar Ram played that shot, Naeem. He's in top form. And what I like about him, I've seen him play execute shots on both sides of the wicket, particularly in the offside but he's not exactly lacking on the leg side as well. Yes, and both these boys, uh, they're the Centurions in this year's tournament. Uh, Lewis 160, youth century, 
and uh, Parmeshwar Ram, 117. They were scintillating innings, a number of sixes and four. And both centuries were made against the select 11 and did look very, very good too against the Sequibians. They will want to end on a high. It's not a long drawn out tournament, just four teams, three counties, and the select 11. That's going to go all the way. Backward point pitched up outside the line of the off stump. And Emmanuel Lewis just caressing it. There was no one in that particular gap. And so beautiful shot coming off of the middle of the bat. Well executed. Yes, and you could see him getting on top of the ball as well, ensuring that he kept it down. It was plays with, played with the right horizontal nature of the bat. Got it to the left of the backward point field. Good placement, like you said, Naeem. Quick single, well taken, good judgment. Something we had not seen in the Barbies batting lineup. Good judgment. From the time that came off the bat, Lewis made the call because it's going behind the back of the non-striker. He made the call positively, stuck to the call, good running. Yes, and that shot had a lot of confidence behind of it by Emmanuel Lewis. From the time he played it, he knew that they were going to get a single. And you're right about that. Um, Burbies did not run well between the wickets. So there's lots of work for the coaches there. Seven without loss, 41 for the loss of one. Sigobin made eight. That's the lone wicket back in the pavilion. Um, Ram is there on 15. And Lewis is there with him on five. And we want to say thanks to the youngsters here. On FL Sports, Ronaldo Magari. Well, I should put the doctor in front. He's a young medical student here in Ghana. I think um, he's on his internship at the Georgetown Public Hospital. And we have our fella all the way from Parika. Good delivery. Now, this is what Adrian Hetmeyer has been trying to do all along and was just training outside the leg stump, hitting the good length, the good line with that delivery. I was talking earlier about Parmeshwar Ram being uh, the, one of the top batsmen in the tournament, and I was so happy to see him bowl, uh, which makes you into an all-rounder. I'm seeing the same with Hetmeyer. Good batsman, and he's bowling. In the air, could it be taken just out of the reach? How unfortunate, couldn't get around in time. That was a lifter. It came up uh, on the batsman, looking to punch it away. He was in no position there, Emmanuel Lewis. Have a look at this. Rising, didn't get uh, his body in line and just out of the hands there. And uh, Naeem, you're a youth, you're below 15. You should have been sprinting towards that catch, man. That's not good enough. I think the Borbishans are gonna hurt by that one. Should have been taken. Took a long time in the air to come down, but the youngster just did not anticipate and moved in time. Now you can't be you know, allowing those to go when your team is struggling for um, wickets. And then we'd seen the chances that were put down before so I was talking about deficiencies, and I'm looking for that. We're seeing two at the moment for Barbies, um, not, not in condemnation. I'm not uh, trying to do that, but they're running between the wicket was poor, and I'm seeing now a bit of poor feeling. Yes, uh, that should have been taken. And the, the funny thing is that these boys have come from um, Barbies. I'm from the country areas as well. And we, we, we learned growing up how to run away from things like broom and slippers and anything that mommy pelt at you. You run for dear life. You have to bring the same thing to the cricket scenario here. And run for food too. <laughs> Just ask your friend Benji from Parika, um, who is scoring here for us. He, he will tell you the distance that he had to cover. Spring it, a wide. So he's striving here for a wicket. And in that process, sometimes you can lose control. Nothing wrong with that, Adrian Hetmeyer. 
Well, he's got all the ingredients of a good cricketer, and I'd like to see him move on, as well as Parmeshwar Ram. Two of the highlights, and uh, Emmanuel Lewis. They're three little emerging stars I'm seeing, and I wish them well. Through the gap, I don't think this might go towards the boundary. It's slowing up, but they catch it just inside. That's when we'll cross for, is that two? But good shot, it was airborne for a while, nevertheless. You'd have a look at the replay, but it found the gap. That's the important thing. Yes, uh, and Naim, Emmanuel Lewis that is batting out there, a few minutes ago received a pair of batting gloves from Project Cricket Gear. Compliments of Regal Sports and Regal Stationery and Computer Center. It was handed over to Mr. Anil Bihari, who heads Project Cricket Gear in Guyana. Oh, popped it in the air just to the right and falling short too of the fielder at short cover. So he's living dangerously here at the moment. That was a good gesture throughout this country. Project Cricket Gear headed by Anil Bihari and his dear friend Kevin Das. They've been doing a fantastic job. Gloves, batting um, shields, pads, wicket keeping, batting pads, um, shoes, bats, a number of things, whether they're brand new, whether they're used. That's a lovely looking drive off the back foot down towards uh, the mid off area. Cannot score. But it's a good gesture to motivate the youths. Eight overs gone, 44 for the loss of one. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, Regal, Anil is the owner of Regal, and uh, good to see that he's donating. He always does. This is, uh, you have the batting, Adrian Hetmeyer, 53, Ramdi Hall, 28. Those, those two were the principal scorers. Parmeshwar, um, 15, Sigobin, 8. Emmanuel Lewis, seven. The only wicket to go in down is Sigobin. Eight of 13. And there you have the bowling. Brandon Henry starring there. Four for 34. It was excellent bowling by Brandon Henry. Yes, and I agree with you, Mahendra Hardiel from Regal. You know, here's a guy that has been supporting sports throughout this country and even in North America as well. So congrats to the Regal family. Congrats to Anil Bihari, who engineered the Project Gear charity organization in this country. And Regal Sports, too, today, made a tangible financial contribution to the Guyana Cricket Board, which will go towards the development of youths in this country as the Guyana Cricket Board looks at different ways and means to develop the cradle of our cricket. Change of bowling. Raphael McKenzie. First ball down the next side. And you mentioned the name McKenzie. We have a young physiotherapist who has come to this ground. And she was hoping to sprint out in the middle there to showcase what she can do. So far, she has not given that opportunity because there has not been any injury whatsoever out in the middle. She's young Miss McKenzie. So the name rings a bell. Well, it seems all the professionals from the medical fraternity are having a difficult time. Our own little doctor is not getting a chance. I think it's gynecology he's pursuing, and he's not getting a chance either. That's far as our knowledge goes. I'm not too certain. There's a huge smile on his face, Ronaldo McGarrell. You know, John Ramsing should be complimented, our chief executive producer. Good looking shot by the left hander. The return comes in, but it will always get that single covered. Making an investment in sports coverage and having a number of youths coming on board. It's exceptional. And you'd, you'd think that uh, as young boys that they would take a long time to get um, au fait with all the equipment and so on, but they have been very, very quick. And exactly, a compliment is in order. And for John, for pursuing this field, this is a new field for us. 
streaming live on social media. What I like about Emmanuel Lewis, all right, he knows what they're looking for, but he's not afraid to execute his shots. He's playing it with a lot of confidence, and so is Parmeshwar. But if you notice, Parmeshwar is, has gone in or out of the limelight a little bit, and Emmanuel is taking the lead. But this is the way that Emmanuel plays. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to hit the ball in the air on most of the occasion. And he's going to ensure that he's a competitor out in the middle, regardless of the situation of the game. By ag he's an aggressive player. And he will continue to play like that once the situation presents itself. Or if even he has to ensure that, you know, he takes the fight to the bowlers. That's the kind of player he is. And when you're this young Naeem and you've been scoring double centuries and centuries and half centuries, you know, it talks about the mindset of the players. They bat long and they score runs. Simple means they'll just love the thing that they're doing playing cricket. Well, it's always so good to see people having an appetite to stay long. Something that is absolutely missing from the West Indies side, except for the likes of Shea Hope and uh, Carlos Brathwaite. But it seems as though no one wants to stay there to bat. If you're not able to survive 50 overs as a senior team, you're in trouble. So good to see these youngsters developing an insatiable appetite for batting and for batting long hours. Like Hetmeyer, like Emmanuel Lewis and uh, Parmeshwar Ram. Yes, nine overs gone. They need 101 from 246 deliveries. Overs are not the problem. I think wickets are not the problem here. This is a well-set Demerara team. Burbies will have to make all the play, or Demerara will have to bat so bad that they give the game away. As of now, these two are very solid, and the more time they spend there, the more dangerous they become, the more fluent they are going to become. And this is going to add some pressure on young Hetmeyer's captaincy as well. And here is where the selectors will be looking very keenly at him to see how he navigates in these circumstances. Because Burbies hell-bent, they need wickets. Well, so far, so good for the youngster, Adrian Hetmeyer. He is in his fifth over now, which is about to be started. And he has picked up one for 17. Had chances, went to begging off his own bowling picked up a wicket, the lone wicket to fall, and continues to attack the stumps or just outside the off stump. Good looking shot again here, Naeem from Parmeshwar Lal. The ball is leaving the bat with such a haste, tells about his timing and the sweet song too. I must say, I, mu I must acknowledge I, kept, I keep uh, talking all the while about emerging players looking for sparkles and looking for uh, young stars. That's pulled away for four, just to the right of the square leg fielder. I can't say it was out of my eyesight whether it went close to a catch, but he was diving. Don't know if he got a knock on it. Let's see if we can find out. Well, he gets the boundary, did the right thing, kept his eyes on the ball, and, you know, balanced well. The base that he stood there upon created nice balance. That's the left leg, well planted, so you do not stumbling playing the shot and made good connection. Appeal, not out, says the umpire. He's quite lucky there. But I think the wicketkeeper, along with the solitary slip, they were trying to put some pressure on the umpire. Just coming back to the point I was making, uh, that I'm looking so much to see sparkles. And I must say that, um, by the way, G50 has come up for Demerara. I must say that how overwhelmingly pleased, I'm, and I'm going to call their names, Parmeshwar Ram, uh, Emmanuel Lewis, and Hetmeyer are three of those emerging players and sparkles that I'm looking for. Not a peel outside the off stump. Well, actually, he was playing at this one. Did the ball go inside the line between the bat and the pad? I'm not too certain. But he was going after it there. And look, 100% for Adrian Hetmeyer's effort here this afternoon at DCC. 
of course, would have been influenced by the number of legends that this club has produced over the years. Bowling under conditions where Demerara has 50 for one. Look at the effort of this youngster. Another, another quality that I look for, and we're taking the two captains now uh, into consideration, Hetmeyer and Emmanuel Lewis. Both are displaying calmness and being collective as, uh, during their captaincy. And so that's another, that's another highlight that we're seeing. Yes, and his dad is here, Sion Hetmeyer, watching him as well. Slow delivery, nicely picked and turned by the left-handed ram. Down through backward square. And they will go back and complete two. So thinking here even to the last ball of the over. Not express space. Slow delivery and picking up the single. 52 for one. 10 gone name. You're going to be joined by Matthew. Well, these two are batting like big men. It's like separating the boys from the big men. And you can see distinctly that they are another cut above. Orbis, Adrian Hetmeyer, 53, that's when they batted. Ramdi all 20 at the top scorers, basically Mohammed chipped in with 15. Hi Matthew, good afternoon. Hi Naim, hello to everyone right across. Beautiful art all over the world, North America, uh, in the United Kingdom, wherever you are, following into county on the 15 here in Guyana. Yes, at Maya's dad is to, to our left, and he's been there for a while, watching his son, who would have picked up that wicket. Not a great day for cricket, and a lovely final here in the making, of course. Barbies would have lost four quick wickets, and they hadn't reached 50s yet. In reply, Demara, you look at the difference, 10 overs, 52 for one, in the driver's seat at the moment just need 95 runs in 240 balls so the issue here is not uh, so much right it's about wickets falling and and, and Barbies will have to pick up wickets as we see Fias coming into the attack he's gonna bowl to Emmanuel Lois the captain who's 7 from 15 Parmeshwar Ram is 22 from 32 so he hasn't looked badly at all. And Kush Siegel been leg before wicket to the bowling of Hetmeyer for eight. One four. 32 for one in the sixth over. The lone wicket to have fallen. And I was talking about the attitude of these two youngsters batting, that they are cut above the rest. Um, I'm seeing the kind of maturity. No, actually, no extravagance. And they know exactly what is required. Try to bat. Enjoy your batting, pick up ones and twos, a boundary will come here or there. You're talking about batting like the big men. You know, down through the years for Demerara, they would have produced some good cricketers who've gone on. Well, what a disaster. What a disaster. <clears throat> That's a gift coming from Santa Claus, really delivering on time on Christmas Day take this and you refuse it the ball actually spun a lot and spun out of his hands but that's not an excuse it was a sitter i don't know if the sunshine was inside of his eyes but it was a sitter he looked comfortable and it spun out of his hands now, emmanuel lewis would have to use this to get his act together as well he's the captain they need him to remain there for as long as possible. That was not exactly a good shot. He was not to the pitch of the ball. I think so far, two chances in terms of Barbies putting them down. And when you've got such a short, uh, such a small total to work with, your, your feeling has got to be spot on. That hasn't proven to be so as yet. Two chances, more or less, gone a begging. The second one being the best of them all, of the two, or the best of the two. He overcomes to an end, 52 for one. Naim Chan, you're talking about big men and, and batting like the big men. And you look at Demerara, batting down through the years, players who've come on nicely. 
I, I'm going to start with the likes of a Hooper and Chandra Paul. McGarrell, these went on to play for the West Indies. McGarrell, Travis Dowling. McGarrell never played youth cricket. Uh, but Travis Dowling, Chandrika, Ramdas. Now you've got Tej Narain. Tevin Imlak went on that this recent tour to Australia. Barnwell would have played one day cricket. Leon Johnson test on one day. But don't forget the likes of a Colin Short, Rian King, Barrington Brown as bowlers. And of course, you've got Shorf and Rutherford now. We're talking about Demerara players. Of course, Sarwan was born in Wakenham, but he played, you would say, all of his cricket, of course, in Georgetown for GCC. I would think for the most part for GCC. And then you look at Burbies. And you see the likes of Anar Singh, Dianarain, Mahindra Nagamutu. He would have played five tests and 24 ODIs, Nagamutu. Bishu, one of the better spinners who've come on from Guyana that played for the West Indies. Pamal. Lakep Lo. Ravin Budwa. Coming into the attack from the south end. Romare Shepard, Moti Sinclair of recent times for, for Borby. So, uh, and you have to ask the question that slapped into the offside. Clayton Lambert, you, you have to ask yourself the question. Uh, when you look at what Borbis is producing now, yeah, sooner around Chattagoon as well, how are they being able to do this down through the years? What, what are key elements and factors that has made Borbis cricket what it has been to go on to produce some of the finest players who would have played for the West Indies. But that's for a p particular period. I think you were referring basically from the 80s coming. But then before that, uh, they also produced some of the country's greatest cricketers. I think one of the reasons, that's I'll just get back to you in a moment. Big drive, not to the pitch of the ball again. Parmeshwar Ram there showing some impatience. But I think from history, it shows, it, I, I believe it's because facilities were available. And the empl an employer that was the major factor in that was the sugar corporations across the country. They were, the sugar corporations does not, did not exist in Essequibo. But all these grounds were upkept by uh, the Guyana Sugar Corporation. So facilities were available. The East Coast is almost flooded with facilities, basically. Almost in every village, from Enterprise to Enmore, all going down the line into Barbies. Once you have facilities, people are going to direct their energies into the right areas. And that helps to produce these big cricketers. That's the scorecard again, when Barbies batted 53 at my 28 Ram, the all the chief scorers. And uh, now Parmeshwar Ram, still there on 23, hanging in. Emmanuel Lewis has been having some close shaves, charmed life. That's the required runs and deliveries, 94 from 228. So it's not an issue with time is running out or overs are running out for Demerara. The issue is application here. And somehow or the other, I'm seeing that Emmanuel Lewis, based on his natural aggressive mode, um, he has been having some very close shaves. Fias Baksh. Didn't score when he batted. He was run out at the striker's end. Direct throw from Outar. Going for the second run. We want to make amends with ball in hand. 94 runs needed now. So it's coming down. Coming down all the time. 146 all out for the 1.1 overs. And then you look at the extras there. 14 wides, 2 leg buys, 1 no ball by Demerara. If there had been a little bit more mean in terms of extras, it would have been a much low score as well, probably about one, 135. 53 to Admire from 60 balls, two fours and three sixes. 
and 28 to Ramdi Hall. And of course, Henry 4 for 34, LaRose 1 for 16, Ram 1 for 2, Latif 1 for 30. Easy single, but what was really bad, Naeem, about uh, Barbie's batting was the three runouts. The first two, Chamish and Pereira, and then, of course, Bash. Chamish was run out for a duck, Pereira for six, and Bash for a duck. If you'd got run some of those three guys, could have been a little bit, bit different now. It would not have looked that easy for Demerara at this stage, cruising more or less. Three runouts could have given you another, those guys could have given at least a 25, let's say 25 runs each. You're talking another 75 runs there, Naeem, at least. And therefore, you're looking at over 200, which I think you were talking about early on. And that's where th they lost the game. But credit to Henry for picking up four for 34. After bowling from the north end and then switch to the south end. 13 overs gone, 55 for the loss of one, Demerara. Leading 97 in 222 balls. 32 to Ram from 34 balls. Oh, sorry about that. The partnership between Sigobin and Ram, 32. And Emmanuel Lewis and Ram, 23. So, not bad for the first wicket partnership. And then now, these two looking to build another partnership. And that's what Burbies lacked. Four for 48 white ball, four for 48 in the 19th over. It was an uphill task for them. They were struggling. And then when they lost their fifth wicket at 108, a 60 run partnership wasn't bad at all between Hetmeyer and Ramdi Hall. They'll get a single here. So the runs are coming more or less easy, another wide. So they're giving away extras that they can well afford to not to, to give away at this stage. Well, I was talking earlier on about looking for the high end, the good qualities that you see, and then you look at the bad, just to confirm what you just said. Big drive knocked down by Ravin Boudoir. But the little deficiencies I'm seeing is running between the wicket, and that is directed to Burbis and the fielding. Making a mistake here or there, we can accommodate when it becomes too pronounced, like several drop catches, like several runouts. It starts, you start to see it in another perspective as a deficiency. So some work would have to be done. They're young people. Those issues could be all corrected. Cotton ball, no. Just to the left of uh, Ravin Boudoir. Took a pretty long time to get across to his left. Didn't touch the ball, actually. Good effort diving to his left. But giving his team a chance with his bowling, Giving his team a chance, that's important. Nice use of the wrist from Parmeshwar Ram. Gets himself a single 61 for one. But that's what the bowlers have got to do here. Give the team a chance. But when you look at uh, Emmanuel, nine coming off 24, and with all the aggression that I'm seeing, I'm surprised that he only has nine. Not like I'm encouraging him to be more aggressive, because I'll, I'll more encourage him to be more stable, because he has had a lot of close shaves. Pretty charmed. Nicely swept around. They come back for two, down towards fine leg. Nicely played. That was straight down the leg side as he overcomes to an end. 14 gone, 6 to 3 for 1. The Burbies bowling hasn't been that bad in the context of the two fast bowlers. First, in Het Meyer 
and Arif Khan. But now with the spinners on, the runs are going to come a bit more easy as well. 26 to Ram, Emmanuel Lois, 11. Siga Ben made 8. 1 for 23 for Adrian Hetmeyer from 5. Arif Khan, none for 27 from 4. He would have wanted to do much better there with his spell from his, from his first four overs. But you talked about the innings of Emmanuel Lewis. He's been going a little bit slow, but look at the main factor. 146 uh, put up by Barbie. So no need to go for the big shots. Play each ball on its merit. And take your time. Get a little bit of batting practice, why not? Just don't give your hand away. I think he had two chances already. And some close other ones too. It's the, it's the bit of over uh, enthusiasm um, or exuberance that uh, just worried me a little bit. In these circumstances, the bowling looked um, pretty easy to bat. The pitch is not giving a lot of help to the Pacers also. So they w I can't see the reason for um, going to overdrive unnecessarily. If that's a part of your game, well, fine. But you have to temper it according to circumstances as well. We but talk he's a very compact youngster, no doubt about it. He's one of my highlights. No doubt about that, indeed, Naeem. Good young cricket in the making. It's all about managing himself well. Fitness levels, playing a lot of cricket. Just continuing to build on his talent. That's important. Parmeshwar Ram seems to have the ideal, uh, is adopting the ideal style. He has been absolutely cautious. He has been playing along the ground. And uh, he had his close shaves too, that were not taken. But these little deficiencies, they have so much of time to get them corrected. Those basics, like running between the wicket. 15 overs gone, 64 for the loss of one. Emmanuel 11, Parmeshwar Ram 27. That last shot played there, he came forward looking for the drive. If you take a look at past presidents of the DCC. The current president, Roger Harper. For those watching, I'm sure you would know those faces. Current president for DCC is the Honorable Roger Harper, who lives uh, to the south of the ground. Many balls hit by powerful batsmen have gone into his yard. John Ramsing has joined me in the commentary position as Budwa continues over number 16. John, we were talking about good Barbies players and Demerar players. What about some of the good Esquibian players? No. Who have gone on to, you know, play at, let's say, the highest level or play for Guyana, the senior level. Kimo Paul, there's Savory. Runs for beaten. I mean, yeah. I'll have to ask you who you remember. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. Sarwa afternoon. was born in Wakena, but he would have played more or less all of his cricket. Cotton ball. Got his man. Ravin Budwas picked up Emmanuel for 11 from 28 balls, 65 for the loss of two. Just what the doctor ordered after putting down a couple of chances. That is an excellent catch. Kudos to. Ravin Budwa for taking that one. Look at that. That stinging return catch, I must say. It was a delivery that was pitched up, given a nice flight. Look at that. Hit powerfully back. Even the umpire was taking evasive action. And Budwa got it in the middle of his hands and took it quite comfortably. The big wicket of Lewis going down for 11. 65 for 2 in the 16th. What about the advice given by the, the, the big man Norman Welch downstairs, telling him, telling uh, Emmanuel Lewis to use your feet, take your time, play. He's always good at that. 
I, I call him the outside coach. Yeah, certainly he is. And he's coached many persons beyond the boundary. Norman, he's seen lots of cricket. So he has that experience. The, the, the wickets so far. Sigo Ben 8. Now Lewis 11. But Parmeshwar Ram holding firm on 28. Trilak Nanan, Shamar Apple, Munish Autar, Michael Sharma, or Brandon Henry, Ravin Singh, Riaz Latif, and Darwin LaRose. Not necessarily in that order. Still to come. So the batting is there for Demaro. 147 the target. Burbis now picking up the second wicket. One to Budwa and one to Adrian Hetmeyer as the players take drinks. So they're looking for more success, Burbis. And you mentioned those players from SUK. But Jaimini Singh. Remember Jaimini Singh. Uh, Ravindra Marulal, not the, the journalist, but the, the older brother who played youth cricket for Guyana. Let's take a look back at what happened in the first innings here. Burbis when they batted. They got a half century from their captain, Adrian Hetmeyer. And a few starts, 28 from Richard Ramdi. Batting in the middle order usually opens the batting for his club. 15 at the top of the order from Sohil Mohammed. Yakub played and missed a little bit, but got two boundaries in 11. Arif Khan, lots were expected from him. Batting a bit too late, one may think, just 10 runs from him. 146, held by 17 extras. And the bowling, pick up the bowlers. Brandon Henry, he was a bit expensive early on, but came back nicely. To pick up four for 34. We'll bring it a piece for La Rose, Parmeshwar Ram, and Riaz Latif, the leg spinner. Yeah, a spirit thought for Brandon Henry. Uh, Sean Messiah's worked hard on this guy along with uh, Corvin Ross. So at this stage, 8 2 still needed for victory. They have 207 deliveries, which they can get there, and to be crowned champions. What would make it difficult, John, for Demarais if they continue to lose wickets? Uh, because you would say 82 runs should be easy. But Borbis would have other thoughts. They know that they can only win this game by pick by bowling out Demarara. Because the runs aren't enough. And with some of the, the batters to come, so you see Trilok Nanan coming in now. He himself is a pretty good player. The left hander just faced his first delivery. Oh, right hander, beg your pardon. That's a good delivery. Again, we talked about uh, Ravin Budwa bowling from the south end, and uh, he's given Borbis a chance because he's bowling well. I like his attitude actually. Short man, but gets a lot of turn. Look at that, turning away down the leg side. So exaggerated turn, and, and it's being called a wide. So imagine you're getting a lot of turn, if you must, but you must control it. And this track is a bit dry now. Nice fly to Sadi Hobbs, some good bounce as well. He knows what he's doing, Budwa. Successful over gone. 16 completed, one, it's actually 66 for two. Let's take a look at that caught and ball chance again, Matthew. That is something many would want to look at and remember for a long time. He was hit powerfully back. Look at that. Manish into his drive. Powerfully back. And he took it quite easily. The umpire was thinking that his heart was in his mouth for a moment. Wonderful catch. And it's good when you see them at this level. This level of cricket. Here is where you start, you get your opportunities to go on. There are a number of cricketers who will never be able to go on to the highest level. But you don't know who you are. That's the point. If you keep working at your game and you improve and your talent grow, you're in with a big chance to make it to the highest level. Back to continue. Parmeshwar Ram has been there for now 54 deliveries, 53 deliveries, 28. Lots of the batting responsibilities now will be on his shoulder despite the other batsmen can bat. Simple fact because he's been there for a long time now. He must play the senior role. Well, for sure he has to stay there. 28 from 54 balls. 3-4 so far in that knock. Not bad at all, the young left-hander. 
has to be very watchful to the spinners. So uh, two spinners on for Borbies. Current run rate four required under two and a half. So good tight stuff. And Borbies, they were kept to under four, I believe, throughout their innings. In terms of their run rate, and you look at them are almost at four. Well, four and just under. Turned away nicely through forward square for, for a run. But because of the, the low scoring situation, the run rate would never necessarily be a problem. It's all about your batting skills now, your ability to concentrate and stay out there for, for a long period, especially when the bowling is, is tight. When the bowling gets a bit more difficult, you've got to negotiate each ball well. That is something you try to develop young. On the 13, on the 15 level, patience, uh, the skill that you possess, looking for his first run. Trilok Nanan, he doesn't get off the mark. 17 overs gone, 67 for two. Another tight over there. Just a single from Baksh in that over. So the fall of the last wicket. Just slowing things down a bit for Demararo. The captain, Emmanuel Lewis, free scoring generally. He's gone. Carmel Secondary School student. And look at that. In the background, usually blue skies at this time of year. Nice breeze would be coming through. But the Saharan does there. Pass to Kisun, not healthy at all this time. Yeah, I heard my wife talking about the Sahara dust and, um, you know, the sort of effects it would have from an environmental standpoint as Ravin Budwa starts his third over, I make it. 1 for 11. He has bowled well from the southern end here. Of the DCC ground. A nice little crowd on hand too, John, watching the game. Probably came to look at the likes of Hetmeyer, young Hetmeyer. You know when names become big in the media, uh, the crowds turn out. If Shamar Joseph was bowling here today, you would have had a sellout crowd. <laughs> <laughs> He's resting. I'm sure he would have wanted to pass and have a look as well. Now that he's back home. But it's good to see that the singles are coming here and there. I want to see it coming more often. You want to see these guys breaking their wrists, trying to push the fielders. There's some batsmen. I remember Travis Dowling back in his early days. He used to play and wander out of his crease. As soon as the fielder fumble, he would go for that single. Some batters were like that. In this, in this series, I've seen some of the guys from the Escobar team doing that, just wandering out of the crease after playing the stroke. Well, you saw what happened in the test match with Kavim Hodge. Yes. When he played that, that defensive stroke, was out of his crease and was run out. Quick, sharp work by Travis, Travis Head. Head yeah. That was a beautiful dismissal by Australia there. And they kept showing it because he was so quick. That, that's the sort of skill you need when you, you feel close in whether it's short leg or silly point. But John, you look ahead to the, the one day series now, yeah. starting tonight, 11.30, your thoughts on the West Indies team. And I, I want to believe because the way Australia lost that last test, they're going to come very, very hard at the West Indies. No doubt. Nanan still searching for his first run. We get off the mark now, beating the field at cover. What think should have done a bit better. And that's a little bit of indecision in the running. Settled very early on two. And he's off the mark after 18. Demar looking to get 147 to win. There's 7 to 1 for the loss of two. Yeah, I think that test, game, that test series is over. And we'll see crowds coming out again in Australia. Usually well supported cricket in Australia. But this West on this side. Despite a different format, can spring surprises. 76 to get from 192. Darren Sammy, the white ball coach, inspirational guy, Carl Hooper, who has been living in Australia, part of that score, uh, 
management team as well. So lots of expectations for West Indies again down under. Australia, like you say, will begin as favourites will come hard. But West Indies as the underdogs will want to spring a few surprises. They say every dog has its day, you know. West Indies have been down and out for many years, test cricket. There is a little bit of resurgence now and, you know, more or less, all they can do is improve from here. You also, you've also witnessed a situation where after winning that test and leveling the series, that they've gone a, a notch up to number seven in the test rankings. Sri Lanka dropping to eight. So, this is what you want to see in terms of test match cricket. World test match cricket where the dominant teams uh, are threatened by the underdogs who can come up and do well. Afghanistan has been improving. They're very good at white ball cricket, but they're, they're an improving side. Uh, West Indies can get back there in the top five, first of all, and then move their way up, inch their way up. They've inched one place up as a result of that test match win. And you're talking against the, the top team, the number one team in the world, John Ramsing. It says that they can go up more. Get back there to the top. We were down the leg side by Fias. And it's there in black and white. Not a lot of test matches for West Indies this year. So, although they have that opportunity to move up the rankings by playing more matches, the Future Tours program do, do not allow it. Quick single. Their next test match is way down in July, August, after the T20 World Cup. And, uh, and that's three test matches in England. And the crowds will turn out to watch Shamar Joseph, of course, and a young, talented, determined West Indies side. And I'll tell you what, John, I have a strong feeling they're going to perform well in England. Don't mind there is talk about the, the ball moving around a lot, you know. I think those guys are going to perform well. And with, with someone with the spirit of Shamar Joseph, his attitude. Look, I've got to be honest with you, John. I've not seen Craig Brathwaite that happy as I saw him when the West Indies won that test. The over comes to an end. Craig Brathwaite, yes, laughing, smiling, <laughs> hugging, different type of emotions we've seen from him. I've never seen that. I, I remember being at a venue in Trinidad and Tobago when Barbados won original title a few years ago. And he was cool as a cucumber. No real emotions. Although he was captain. That's the Digo Martin Sporting Complex in Trinidad and Tobago. But the emotions we saw from him shows how, how much it, it meant to him. And he actually reply to Rodney Hogg. Are these muscles big enough for you, Mr. Hogg? <laughs> but what starts a new over? Look, the atmosphere has been good in this under-15 tournament, no doubt. Matches played here at DCC and at Maltino Sports Club. Very good atmosphere, good weather as well to give these youngsters a chance to showcase their talent. And they've done so. Well, speaking of favorite Indujit, the level of competition this year, we've seen an increase. The skill level from all of the counties. I haven't seen the Select 11 play because they were playing at Queen's College and Malton as well as here at DCC. But from all reports, they have given good account of themselves. So the competition has been very good. And the selectors who are looking at this tournament to pick the national side, they have what is called a very good headache. It was discussed that you can find a lot of good cricketers around the country that uh, where you don't have easy accessibility. Uh, you have to have a lot of scouts watching cricketers, young cricketers coming up throughout the country. I believe you can find good cricketers, of course, in places like Latem, in Linden, and so on. Strange you mentioned Latem. I was actually, in December, invited to a tournament 
in what's called the wetlands in the North Rupununi. They were playing table cricket, male and female were playing on the hand, bumper ball cricket as Jova comes to an end, a maiden, 74 for the loss of two. And the skill set in the Rupununi is very good, raw talent. And they were playing with the taped bumper ball. And the way the bowlers were handling this on what looks like laterite pitches because it was so hard. Right. And the way the batsmen getting into the positions as well to play correct technique shots, clearing boundaries, hitting ag- along the ground. It says a lot about the potential in the hinterland there. We saw Waramuri producing a few national on the 19 and youth other youth cricket cricketers in the, 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 the Nico and Bruce. Vincent, Ricky Williams, a national distance runner, coming from the same village. And then now, in this year's on a 15 tournament, we've seen another person from Waramuri coming out. And he's, he played with Esukebo, and there's one more from Waramuri as well, with the Select 11. So the Hinterland, that's in the Maruka sub-region. Hinterland producing players as well. And Alisa Vincent, a national footballer from Waramuri. And Matthew, the sporting ground is sand-based. Just the middle, just a bit hard for the p- w- w- what is the pitch. So it takes a lot of effort to get runs there. And to run on, on that loose sand, it must be strong. The calves will be tested. Makaya is a player f- Makaya Holmes, the player from Warmiri. There is talent in the hinterland. And I believe that it's all about the the scouts going out to find these good players around. To find these good players around. That's that's so important. Because you need that balance. You don't want to have a belief a belief that says the best players will always come from a particular area of the country and so on. I think that is changing a bit. And you want to see someone like Kimal Savory from Essequibo go on to be good for Guyana, at least for Guyana for now. And then if he can get into a West Indies side eventually, even better. That's what you want. Single from the over, 21 gone, 75 for two. I think with Kimo Paul from Saxakali, Quinton Sampson from Carrier Carrier, Region 3. Region 7 as well. Those guys around the Eskibo River really showing that there is more potential and talent in the hinterland. The river in areas being the river in areas bringing some players out. 75 for 2 as we welcome back in the Jeet. 72 needed from 174 balls. So at the halfway stage now, pretty much. How are you seeing this one in the Jeet? Well, I think Demarara is way in front of this one. They should go on here and win, but we have seen many twists and turns in this beautiful game of cricket. These two guys, they're well set out in the middle. Trillo, 21 balls he has faced for his three runs. Uh, on the other hand, Parmeshwar Ram, 32 from 64. The partnership just beginning to develop. So advantage at this stage to Demerara. Ram the race into the attack now. Burbies need wicket to really remain in this game. In the air, that's how you get wickets. Pressure created. We had a maiden. We had a rover, just a single. Now Arif Khan, who floored one earlier, taking this so this one. That one was simpler the f- than the first one. Both were catchable. This time he holding on. And it's the third wicket going down in the 22nd. Then we are now 75 for the loss of three. Could be, could this be the game changing moment? Could very well be. And at this uh, very moment, I was saying that uh, a huge advantage to Demarara, the valuable wicket of Parmeshwar Ram has gone. Soft dismissal from him, stayed there for quite a long time. Good innings in the circumstances. The question is, is it good enough? At this stage, 75 for the loss of three. Burbee's self believe John has taken them 
to two victories. Will this be another? It is left to be seen. But they're ecstatic. They've gotten a valuable scalp. They're playing effective cricket, not pretty cricket. Not controlling all the time, but they've been winning. Barbies, and this could very well be the opening of the floodgates for them. Trilok Nanan, just on three. 21 deliveries faced. Now a new batsman is coming to join him. So another partnership got to start here. But if Burbis continue to put pressure on them, Raru, more because like that will fall. Ram felt he had to go on to get back the scoring rate to some, some level. Rate was just about four recently. That was going to three and a half. Yes, in the circumstances, it was very, very uh, poor in the end. He played inside the line of the delivery, looking for an almighty swing. And just only if they could think, uh, you know, think through the situation. Look how many balls to be bowled. 173. That's a whole lot. And that's, why the that's why the required run rate is just about two and a half runs and over. But ram the race now into the attack. Spent a long time in the middle when he was batting. Scored five at one boundary, so they need... Burbies need to pick up wickets regularly. Indecision in the running, and that's what will happen when you're not sh sure, when your confidence has dropped. And now we're seeing Mikhail Sharma making his way into the middle. He gets off the mark. But the all wrong is now coming into the middle. So the top order disappearing. And like I said, Demarai seemed a bit top heavy. I agree with you, John. The middle order is going to be severely tested in this innings here at the moment. Um, in the other two matches, the, you know, the opening pair, the number three, the number four, they were the ones who scored the runs. Now the middle order here is going to be exposed. So we shall see what they give to. Delivery like those, Nanan should be trying to take advantage of. No movement of his feet. Just anchored in his crease to a short ball. Flighted and almost carried into hand. That short mid-wicket feeler is busy. Overcompleted. 22 gone. It's now 76 for the loss of three. Still 71 needed. So the Demarara got to rebuild their innings now, but we see some construction going on just beyond the boundaries to the northern end of this ground, the DCC ground. Our country is in a construction boom right now in the JIT. And just where that machine is working used to be the Crown Mining store. That's the Pioneer store, the signature store, where it all started for them. And lots of balls went into that house and that building that is now demolished. I remember my day. I used to play at this club as a teenager. Lots of balls going into that yard. Start of over number 23. Ramdi Hall to Sharma. As and a few seconds ago, that uh, excavator is doing some dismantling job. They are dismantling a building. Can Burbies dismantle Demerara here just across the Crown Street? Um, that is left to be seen. But you look at the Barbicians out in the middle there, John. There's a different air about them uh, at the fall of that last wicket. Uh, they're sensing something here, and they're playing hard cricket. And if only, if only they had held on to those catches that went to begging, who knows, the match could have been a different state uh, at this time. Actually, back shoes in the attack. But I say cricket is 95% played above the shoulders. It means it's a mental game in the jit. 
And with Purbis thinking the game through, it's like chess. Then Ryan now will have to also look at what their next move gonna be. And before you know it, one of these sides will be checkmate. But it's a mind game. Over completed and not a good over. A maiden score remains 76 for three. Well, at 76 for the loss of three, it opens up the game a little bit more here. Um, it makes Burbies feel that if we get another wicket, you know, we can really take charge here. 71 needed from 162. On the other hand, um, these two out there, Trilok Nanan, 24 balls he has faced so far for his three runs. Mikel has just come to the wicket using up eight for the loss of one. More dot balls, more pressure. <coughs> A ring of fielders on the offside, so Ramner is bowling to his field. Starting his second over. Got a prize wicket of Ram in his previous. Swept away. Oh, what a catch! At square leg. Another good catch going down. Catches win matches. Not a wicket going down to a good catch. Powerfully swept, but was in the air. And look at that catch. What a grab, you would say. And is that the catch that will give them the match? Well, we shall see. That's a great catch, John. And you called it right. For a moment, we thought it would have gone over the head of the backward square, but he leapt into the air. Look at that, uh, roughly around 18 inches away and picking up that catch. Uh, surely this is going to be a great motivator for the Burbies team. Trilok Nanan has to go, consumed a lot of deliveries. Uh, he's going to feel disappointed with the innings today. Well done, Burbies. Take a bow, Fias Baksh. Wonderful catch. One handed effort from him. He actually had both of his eyes on it. He went up with both hands, but realizing that the ball was coming so quickly, one hand was needed. It stuck. When it's your day, it's your day. Fourth wicket going down now, 76 for four. And Burby's in a huddle. Wonderful camera work as well from young Nikosi. Look at that. That had four written all over it. Might even have been a six. Excellent catch. Yes, and I guess this youngster, when he returns, he's going to have some good old hot sada roti. Um, deserving of that. That's a delicacy there in Barbies. Uh, what a fine catch. Uh, and now this is going to be a real test uh, as Shamar Apple goes out into the middle. He's left-handed, can hit the ball and hit it a long way. But need some time to settle down here. Don't try to rush anything. Borby's looking to slow it up. They're going to toss the ball up there or thereabout and looking for their fielders to take the catches. We get in his first over. Now we we'll get again in the second over on the race. Wrong to wicket to the left hand of the apple. Looks like an anxious apple so far. A double A, John. Anxious apple. I like that one. Where was he going? I, I can't understand. Um, forced delivery he faced. It was never going to be a single. That's nerve. How come you in the last game, Apple? So we're looking to ride on that wave, that momentum. But Ramnery is doing very well. Good to see that he's changing his line of attack to the left-hander. Now going back over the wicket to the right right-hander. Gone are the days in the G20. This DCC track had more life. It used to be just two pitches on that square. And as soon as the square ended, had grass. Now we're seeing a bigger square. It's wider and longer. It means a lot of dead grass there. Overcompleted, 77 for four. The cover is coming on in the evenings. 
may be staying on longer during the day as well. And the surf is now dead. This was one of the punctier tracks in Georgetown. It was that in the 90s, early 2000s, remained there for a long time. But it's good to see that despite rain recently, we are still able to play cricket at DCC. A change that we've seen since 2022 when the Under-19 World Cup came to the Caribbean with matches in Guyana. DCC was a practice venue and a lot of work on the drainage in the area was done by the government of Guyana. And now we're seeing the rewards. Just need to work on that square. Uh, we have another fantastic venue in the city. Yes, the outfield is absolutely fabulous. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And nicely clipped as well. And we have seen how quickly the ball disappears to the boundary. Oh, that's a quicker delivery there. Taking Shamar Apple by surprise. At the last moment, he was looking to jam down on it. Well bowled, little Fias. Quicker delivery on target as well. How did that miss? Back in the way again. Big appeal, not out says umpire Moses Rampfall. Previous delivery, Naim Chan would have said, had there been another coat of varnish, either on the ball or stump, he would have been bold, and I would have agreed. Misfeeling here, misfeeling again, and they're going to go back and complete too. So the Batters out in the middle, capitalizing on that. If the first one misfield, the second one should have ensured that he got there. He was the one shadowing, not doing a good job at it. A little bit of wit from the bowler. The, and there, if you see the fielder lifting his head at the last moment, and because of the momentum and the shift, because the ball hit the fielder's hand, the second fielder who was covering could not clean, uh, clean, feel it cleanly. But well, Apple will not be bogged down. He will look to play his shots. A tall guy. At one time I was really asking him if he was on the 15 or not. He looks really big in stature. So he can actually give the ball a good whack as well. Just open up his stance too much for me. Yes, he has to be a little bit careful though. How he's getting deep in the crease on the back foot. Especially with Fias having the ability to send in. The faster one. He hits the ball very, very hard. Shamar Apple. Getting towards the end of the 25th over. Almost at a halfway stage in terms of balls in this innings. Still 68 away from victory. Oh, that ball came back nicely. Testing over. Just a double in it. 25 gone. 79 for 4. 68 still needed from 25 overs and that will make it 150 balls um, lots of balls remaining to get that 68 Hetmeyer when Borby's batted scored 53 the top scorer assisted by Richard Randy all 28 and Sohil Mohammed 15 Brandon Henry 4 for 34 Darwin LaRose 1 for 16 Ram 1 for 2 Demarara on the 15 Ram made 32, Emmanuel Lewis 11, Kusi Gobin 8. Two for two so far for Kumul Chan Ram the race. Defending onto the front foot. Uh, hello to you, Naim. 79 for the loss of four. Match on. Much more than on. And I'd like to compliment the Barbicians. They have really injected a lot of energy. You can see how highly animated they have been over the past hour or so. Close shave, but I don't think the umpire is impressed. That was good running between the wicket by these two. Good feeling, good cricket overall. And it's good that the two batters can communicate with each other. Any little bit of hesitation, surely he would have been gone. But terrific running, good return to the keeper, who took the bails up very, very quickly, but they're home. But you notice progressively how uh, more excitement is added to the game like every phase because four wickets have gone the required amount of runs is not all that many they still have what six to seven runs to get in uh, 
148 balls. Not a big asking. It's whether Demerara can consolidate and bat. Uh, and the name of the game here is Sensible Cricket. Um, between these two, you do not want to lose another wicket. Burbies will love to get another one. Big swing! Appeal for a stumping. And umpire Moses will have none of that one. Why on earth you want to play that kind of shot? Stand up and play straight. Looking for an almighty swing for six. Look at that. Way outside the line of the off stump. Looking to hit it over mid-wicket. Made no contact. And had to stretch a long way. Somebody should say to him, no Shamar Apple. Well, it's good to see that the youngsters are meeting in a mid-pitch conference, having a little discussion. Nice to see that. That's another thing I had not seen in the game so far. But uh, Mikhail Sharma going down, having a little word of comfort for Apple. That's a good-looking shot, getting onto the front foot and playing down towards wide mid-off. And... Uh, you can feel the tension too with the spectators that are here. And the manager of the Burbies team just come upstairs here a little, Amir Rahman. Always nice to have Amir around. Coach the Ghana on the 13th of victory against Trinidad and Tobago in Trinidad. He's the manager of the Burbies team. Now I think Ram Kisun is their coach. 81 for the loss of four, 26 overs gone. Well, you mentioned the crowd is becoming a, mo a bit more animated. Seems as though they've had a shot of adrenaline um, and they are enjoying the cricket. And that's good. Again, they're having a little mid-pitch conference. And as I mentioned before, I'm glad to see this. But the weather conditions have been absolutely gorgeous today. And not only that the sunshine has come out in all its glory, but you can see the branches swaying from the trees in the distance swaying from side to side and uh, forming a great picture and good cricket today. I think I've enjoyed the game. We have highlighted all the positives. And we also highlighted all the negatives. I'd like to see better running between the wickets on the Barbies part as well as fielding. They have made some amends though in the G. They have come back, they have fought constantly and consistently. And you called it right, Naeem, because um, in the previous two matches they played, they were on the back foot on quite a few occasions, came back to win those games. So that's a strong self-belief that they have. <coughs> it was a good-looking shot off the back foot, standing tall here. Shamar Apple and punching into the offside field, down towards cover. Good feeling by Hetmeyer. Good use of the feet this time, and that's good to see. Reaching out to the spinner, coming down the track, and uh, playing him nicely down towards uh, the cover region. Can't score again. There's always an air of danger getting deep in the crease on the back foot to those deliveries that skids on. I've been watching the last uh, three uh, occasions where Apple is marching backwards. This is an orthodox leg spin. So the, some of them are keeping pretty low. Have a look at him. And he's going crawling back onto his thumbs. If he struck there in front, he's in serious trouble. Might just be well advised to play on the front foot. So 27 overs gone, 82 for the loss of four. And what some batters will do, Naeem, they, they'll decide. They have two options. Either I stretch long forward when I'm playing the spinner, or either I get deep into the crease and keep my eyes on the ball and decide to whip it, play it on the back foot. And I think on this occasion, with 65 to get from 138, Shamar Apple, a tall fella, decided he's going to play from deep in the crease and look for those deliveries that he can get on the back foot and punch through the offside or the ones that he can turn down the leg side. So all in all, it's not a bad strategy. All he has to do is to be careful with those faster ones.
But good game generally, and um, we had seen today, and, and I've probably over mentioned about the running between the wicket uh, on the part of Burbies. They had a few runouts, and uh, things were sliding. For those people who didn't catch us earlier on, and then Hetmeyer got a half century, uh, was a bit um, scary sometimes for him, but then nevertheless, there he is, 53, Ramdi all 20, the principal scorers. And uh, replying, Demarara, Parmeshwar, Ram, again among the runs, top scoring so far with 32. And so they've had a pretty good game from both sides. Uh, we'd seen, if I'm to put it pong for pong, I'll say that Demarara, I was more impressed with their overall performance. But look at the score and look at the possibilities now. That equation can change. Yes, I agree with you there, Naeem. And this is what makes cricket such a beautiful sport to play and to watch, to be interested in. And, you know, there is a new air of energy across the Caribbean as far as our cricket is concerned. And you can never go wrong investing in the youths and you're looking at the cream of crop at under 15 level here in Guyana. Well, news coming into the commentary box. I don't know if you and John mentioned this, but Shamar Joseph is arriving tonight. It seems as though he's won a world title. I understand there'll be a motorcade, steel band, all at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. And apparently he wouldn't know about this. So I hope he doesn't know so that he can enjoy the full luxury of his country supporting him. Uh, that's a beautiful shot uh, out through the wide mid off extra cover region all along the ground. I just hope there is no flight delay whatsoever. And Shamar lands very, very safe. Deserving of him, that's the emphasis. You know, that's the insurance policy we place on our stars that make us proud. And it's good to hear too that the minister is behind this, Minister of Sport, Mr. Charles Ramson. So that's uh, a pleasant bit of information too. It's not spearheaded necessarily well, of course, the guy in the cricket board would have to be the spearhead. But good to hear that the minister has opted to uh, be a part of this occasion of bringing home a true little stalwart. Yes, and uh, Minister Charles Ramson Jr. understands the importance of our sports men and women, understands what it can do for Guyana, Never in the history of this country, Naeem, that so much resources in our country is being placed on the development of sports. Now we're seeing sports as another industry that's going to be huge. 28 overs gone, 83 for the loss of four. Well, they've already been doing this, but I think they're going to do it in a bigger way for sports tourism because the last CPL was used as the, an occasion for that. And... That's good to see because it can also bring in funds back in the country and tap up back your, uh, your treasury. You're investing a lot and it's good to know that they can get back something. Yes, and that's the grandstand we're seeing here today with members of the Richmond Hill cricket team coming all the way from the United States of America to be a part of cricket in Guyana. They're playing in Barbies in Demarara. We'll be heading for Esequibo. And look, those guys are scoring for us. Well, it's good to see them. Good afternoon to all of you. No, that, that's a good delivery that we have seen there. Quicker one, not targeting the middle stump, but just outside the line of the off stump, and with him playing on the back foot, the keepers to be alert here. Wrapped on the pad, but definitely could have been going down the leg side. This is the danger we've been talking about when you play deep in the crease and you get those deliveries that skids on to you quicker. But just look at Richard uh, Ramdial. Not a fancy um, operation he's coming with. Very simple and uh, very, very simple. Yes, and now Richard is one of the youngsters who has come through the rank. Um, you remember him at the under 13 tournament at the National Stadium. Um, cool customer. That's a quicker delivery on the back foot, well bowled. And making some height off the pitch too. He's, he's pushing it through, even though he's appearing to be an all-out spinner. 
So when he gets there, there's a pull from his shoulder coming down and he gets it to skid on. And this time the timing was good, the placement even better between the stumps and uh, the mid-on and collecting the single. We are having a long off halfway to the boundary, so there's always a single when it's played in that direction. Well, the end of a good over here by Richard Ramdial. 29 gone, it's 84 for the loss of four. So for those people who are joining us across the globe, again, your score sheet comes up there. We've seen it a few times, so I guess you're quite familiar. But for those people who are joining us via uh, YouTube, pleasant good afternoon from Guyana, South America. For those people who don't know us here, but we'd like to let you know that we appreciate you logging in. But this is the country's uh, on the f on the 15th uh, inter-county tournament, and it's a 50-over affair. Four teams. Uh, we've got three counties in Guyana, and there's a select team. And so this is the grand finale. Who wins here takes it. And the contesting teams, of course are Barbies and Demerara. Uh, and Naim, if people around the globe did not know about Guyana, I guess they know about Guyana <laughs> recently. Two events. A big swing, the bill's taken off. How's that question ask of umpire Moses? Not out says the Barbician, but he was going for an almighty swing there over maybe the landscape street here at the DCC ground. There are two events, the Shamar Joseph story in Australia that brought Guyana on the map and our own president, His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali, receiving a prestigious African award in Ghana. He had to ensure in accepting that award, let them know he's not from Ghana, he's from Guyana. So I guess we are known now, we're beginning to become a part of the global community. Well, it's good to know that we have aspects that would put us on the map but I've experienced that personally several times. When you travel outside of the Caribbean, people ask you, when you say Guyana, they think it's Ghana. And uh, many a times you have to explain, it's South America, we're next to these massive countries like Venezuela and uh, Brazil. But um, just like in the times of cricket, of course, many people around the world would know Brian Lara but would not know Trinidad and Tobago or even the Prime Minister of Trinidad. They don't know. This happened in Australia sometime. And they know who is Brian Lara. So Lara, in other words, puts you on the map, so to speak. And the two aspects that you listed are things that have put us on the map as well. Exactly, and that is what sports uh, has done for us over the years, especially this noble game of cricket. That's bounce and a little bit of thorn here from Kumul Chan. Well bowled, beaten outside the line of the off stump. But of all the Caribbean countries, you check it, I think Jamaica, their athletes have sold them worldwide, no doubt. And uh, they're looking for a second here, it's not on. Good return coming to the keeper, keeping them down to one. Not only the athletes, uh, but that thing that you Singing, call reggae singers. music yeah. and Bob Marley. Of course, that's before the athletes. Yes. No doubt about that. I, I hope that somebody, you know, one of our Calypsonians, uh, we're in the mash season, comes up and sings something about Shamar and Kevin. I was telling the boys, Shamar backflip, and uh, in fact, Kevin backflip and Shamar bloodshot toe. That could make a, a very good Calypso. Well, his toe will bring tourists to Guyana, of course. Shamar, we'd like also happy all for you. Congratulations. He's coming home tonight to a grand welcome, I understand. I hope he's not watching YouTube while traveling and seeing this broadcast because actually we didn't want you to know. Really gorgeous conditions here at the DCC ground. And uh, Demerara in, well, I. You can't say either side, both sides are in sight of victory 
A further collapse by Demerara will hand a gift to Burbies. They are short of 61 runs, 120 balls remaining, legal deliveries. And so a big chance is available to both sides here. Any one or two wickets more to fall quickly, it puts Demerara onto the back foot, put Burbies, Burbies on the high. But all of this started this morning and um, Burbies had put themselves in a rot by missing so many um, batsmen via the run-out route. But they've equal up now. Good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon, Naeem. Good afternoon to everyone right across the live on stream world. Yes, that is why Michael Sharma and Shamar Apple have got to play sensibly. Sensibly, they've got to stay there. Apple looks a bit unruffled, you know. He, he's not playing, uh, to my mind, as sensible as he should. He loves to hit the ball hard. He loves to go after the bowling. Seems like a hyper player. He is, he is. Plays a transport. Another product of the Messiah Ross combination, uh, bringing him bringing him up nicely. But patience is the key for someone like him. He I think that's the ball what I was looking for. He's displaying impatience. And the thing, Naim, he hits the ball hard. He's a hard hit of the ball. He times the ball well. A strong young man. But he's got to show his skill. And his skill with patience, good application, will make him able to score runs easily. You need 60 in 116 balls. You're comfortable. But also give credit to, to the bowlers. Both spinners have been good for Barbies. They've kept it steady. They've picked up four wickets. Uh, Hetmeyer picking up the first wicket and then uh, Budwa picked up the second and Ramna raised the next two. So they fought back nicely and they, they have to believe that they can pick up a few more wickets. But Apple is a main man here in terms of scoring runs quickly. The over comes to an end, 87 for the loss of four, 31 gone. Well, Mikhail uh, Sharma has been keeping it uh, quite steady, and I'm seeing that he's going down very regularly, intermittently, to have a little word with Apple. Maybe just to remind him, you're the apple of my eye. I want to see <laughs> you remain out here and to stay, and let's go this together. It might seem like a long journey, but this can happen. Barbies, on the other hand, are eagerly looking for a wicket. They must pick up a wicket and put the Demerara side under more pressure. Look at Ramnare, is two for seven from five overs. Pick up the bowlers, he's done very well. And Budwan had my, of course, picked up a wicket to piece. You look at uh, that cotton ball when the Demar captain went and Budwa took that catch to his left. It, that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well, I was making amend, I guess, for the many, many infractions committed in the field by Barbies. It's good to see them fighting back. And even, even it appears as though they want to turn the table in favor of themselves. That's Barbies. And then that catch from Cannot Cover wraps him on the pad. Not out says the umpire, Abbas Hussein, the Barbician. That was a good innings, three fours in that knock of 32. And then that catch at short leg. That's Bash who took that catch. That was a good catch as well. To dismiss Nan. But Ramna Race has been good. Two for seven bowling from the south end, the southern end of uh, DCC. He's been very good indeed. Look how he tossed that one up, Naeem. That's what you're looking for. And Sharma would not be tempted. Four from 26. He's been out there a bit. 
looking to be very watchful. Nice drive, but back to the bowler. Can't score. A little bit of pressure on Demerara here now, even though it's 60 runs to get, but four wickets down already. Well, he's in direct contrast to his colleague who's bowling from the top end, um, Ramdial. He's flighting it a lot. Ramdial seems to be pulling it down, keeping it as tight as possible. Just to the left of Medan, it will go all the way for four. That's a boundary that Demerara will cherish. Safe shot in the end, got it uh, to the left of Medan. So safe shot in the end to get that boundary. 32 overs gone, 91 for the loss of four. Nice way to end the over for Demerara. I'm here, the manager for the Barbie side. He's a school teacher, as you would know, Naeem, and he's been doing a bit of work with this side. Look at the inning so far. Eight to Sigobin, Ram 32. Lois 11, Nan 3. And now you've got Apple on eight. And Mikul Sharma on eight as well. I'm so disappointed that Lewis had to go, especially in circumstances. I think he was put under a lot of pressure and he was fighting to get out of this pressure. And uh, although he had a lot of time on his hand, but was making a deliberate and consistent effort to fight like he wanted to break loose. Displayed a lot of impatience. He paid the price. Big one in the air. Long off and long on converging. Can get there. Well, they actually could have, but I didn't see the kind of energy in the attempt. I guess we'll see another a replay of that, but they were converging. Let's look at that. They're both converging, nobody talking to each other, and uh, they did, I don't think that they moved briskly enough. Somebody should have said, leave. Mikhail Sharma is very, very watchful. This is the kind of innings I think that Demerara is looking for him to continue to play. And I see that he's been playing that role and going down and have a steady word with Apple. Calm down, cool down. We still have a lot of runs to get and a lot of deliveries to get them. 55 and you have 104 balls remaining. Kept a bit low, that's the end of the over. 33 gone, 92 for four. A nice little innings, Matthew, from Mikhail Sharma. He only has eight. He took 33 balls. But it's the sobriety in his innings that I admire. Very, very steady. That's the bowlers for you. So the wickets, Adrian Hetmeyer getting the first one and then Kumal Chan Ramnare is picking up the other two and uh, also the runouts to account for the total of four. One to Budu as well. He got the second wicket. One for 15 from five overs. So not bad at all, but seven overs uh, a bash as bold. He's bold well. Respective roles of captaining or captaincy. Emmanuel Lewis and uh, Hetmeyer. And they're going to learn, but for starters, I admire their calm and collectiveness, especially their calm. They seem very relaxed in their roles. Big shot. Would it be taken just between his hands, outstretched, dung at long off? I want to believe it went through. The, uh, the hands did not clasp together. We'd have a second look at it, but it's six runs. Nice shot, nevertheless. Just it did not clear so much. Have a, let's have a second look where it went through his hands. It's, it's went, it went over, Matthew says. 
Yeah, it hit the concrete fence for six. And and he's not that tall out there, the man out there. Not very tall. The shorter one is at long on. He's a little tall at long off. So you see a change. What's going to happen now? They're, they're, they're switching both feelers. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> Because Apple is on strike and he's very aggressive. We talked about his aggression. 15 from 35. And if you notice, they have selected two very tall people to be at long on and, and long And that's off. why I was just telling you, they're, they're not that tall. The two that just came in and two taller men are out there now. But where exactly do you put the short men? They fly over their heads if they're in slip? Well, I see one has gone to wear cover. And I think one on the on side, the leg side. I like how he played that shot. He adjusted the stroke. Good adjustment. He was looking for the drive. And then he adjusted and played nicely down to, to mid-off. But I'm enthralled also by the, the mature, can I say, action or body language of these youngsters. They're playing the game out there. On the 15 boys, some of them are 13. But, but their body language is suggesting like you're watching... Uh, big men actually playing that have been in the game and the circle for a very, very long time. Ramnaris actually got that ball to, to pop onto the batter, who was attempting to take a little bit of evasive action, actually turned his head away to ensure that the ball didn't uh, hit him plumb in front. Uh, we saw a lot of that from Shane Warren. Oh, yes. Uh, when the ball comes off the seam and popping. Abdul Qadir, some of the world's greatest bowlers, Mutaya Murdalitaran. I suppose you're implying that Ram, uh, Ram Nares can become as good as, as them later on. No, I was referring to the, <laughs> to the ball popping only. He's young, let's give him a chance. <laughs> but in these days in world cricket, uh, pick up a single here. In world cricket, only the very, very super leg spinners survive, um, especially in the limited version of the game at, at the IPL level. you got to be really good. Aida Rashid Khan, Murda Litteran, Shane Warren, Sunil Narayan. Look at them. They're always extremely good to survive in that circle. But yet you'll always produce the spinners to play in the T20 format as well. You better be good. <laughs> better be good. Most teams have got spinners, and I remember with the CPL when uh, our boy would open that Stephen Jacobs would bowl his four overs on the trot. He would start the bowling. There are teams that have done very well in terms of how they strategize in T20 cricket. You've got to be very, you've got to be a strategist when it comes to T20 cricket. So some will open with the spinner, get his overs in quickly. You got to be good. You got to be smart as well. But, I s but Naeem, some will wait when the, sp when the field is spread with the five fielders outside. So when they bring the, the quality spinner on, you can hit the ball down the throat of any of those fielders mm -hmm. feeling on the boundary area. So, you know, it's all about being smart, watching the game carefully, understanding the... The, the, you know, the, the way the match is going. As T20 cricket is very, very upbeat and you've got to be thinking all the time. So we see Arif Khan coming back into the attack from the northern end and a single to Mikhail Sharma. Well, 100 has come up, Matthew, just over, 101. So 46 required. Nice, nice stage of the game. Burbis with their tails up would like to get that wicket. I'm, I'm seeing just a little dwindling of the energy I was seeing, say, an hour ago in the Burbis team. They were hustling around, scuttling, diving around. But you've got to keep that pressure. And if you're going to pick up a wicket, it 
could very well be Shamar Upper because he's he's impatient. He wants to hit it around. You can induce that mistake. And a nicely set field too. You've got two men out for the catch. Three men, one down at mid-wicket, one and two down, straight down the ground. Nice single. Quickly taken by the batters. Ball turned away towards mid-wicket. I umpired in a second division game that Apple played in for transport. And I was watching his aggression. I was saying to myself, this guy, if he gets a chance to hit every ball, he'll hit it. You know, very hard. He's very aggressive. And his wicket keeping skills are improving. So not a bad cricketer at all. And nowadays that's good for him because nowadays you can't have the skill of a wicket keeper alone, specialist. You have got to be able to bat in all world forms of the game. And most wicket keepers have been pretty good batsmen, even 30, 40 years ago. Yes, and some have opened the batting as well for the country. Australia, uh, even Rodney Marsh. Yes. Uh, the set Farouk engineer out of India. Our own Dujon, Derek Murray were all good batters. Yeah, look at Adam Gilchrist. Alan Knott from England. You had, uh, um, I think, Wayne Phillip. F Wayne Phillip, that tall wicket keeper, used to open the batting as well. We've absolutely good batsmen. And I'll tell you, straight to extra cover, no run. It is claimed that, or they attribute wicket keepers to be good batsmen because of where their position, where their position is in the field. They are able to see how the pitch is playing, able to see it so much more that they can read the pitch. It helps their batting skill. Thirty-five overs gone, one hundred and two for the loss of four. So Demerara now need 45 runs in 90 balls to win this game. Borbis 146 all out in 41.1. Demerara in reply 102 for four after 35. So they're going good. But that wickets column is important. Borbis will be looking at that very keenly because they, they'll need to pick up six wickets to win this game for under 45 runs and if they can pick up six wickets uh, in under 45 maybe 43 runs well it would be a miracle they themselves would have uh, lost out big time when they batted they lost four wickets in the 40th over uh, Yakub, Baksh, Ramdi Hall and McKenzie all going in the 40th over as Hetmeyer comes back for a second spell, they get a single apple, nudges it down to point. When the sixth wicket fell, it was 130 in the 40th over, and then the seventh went at 131, the eighth at 137, and the ninth at 137. That was a disastrous over. The over that you'd want to think that cost them the match. Four wickets going down in one over. Something was terribly wrong there, John Ramsing, who's rejoined me. Good afternoon, John. Hello once again, Matthew. Hello, everyone. 27 run partnership. Steadying things for Demerara. Straying in line. That will not help. Beats the field at fine leg as well. So extras helping Demerara along the way. With the seamers coming back now for Barbies. Arif Khan from the northern end, and now Captain Hetmeyer from the southern end. Just wide, down like side, spraying it. And so he'll, Mohammed Khan, get the right out. Keep yeah, up. I don't think I would have brought back Hetmeyer, to be honest. I would have kept, I would allow Ramnarez to bowl out. So that's not quite a good move. I, I thought Apple was a bit uncomfortable to the spinners on a couple of occasions, um, close calls for stumpings. So I don't think I would have brought back Hetmeyer at all. And you just give away five wides, five extras there. Wouldn't help your cause. They only need, uh, what, now, 40 uh, to get? 39, in fact. Look at Apple. He is on 18 from 39. 
But Sharma is on strike. 10 from 40. Again down the leg side. And, and again, not taken clean by the keeper, Sohil. And another wide. So if you want the game to come to an end quickly, well, give away a lot of extras. Simple as that. I have to make my batters play. I've got to make my batters play like Shamar Joseph did in Australia. You've got to make the batsmen play. I just think it's not the right move to have Hetmeyer come back at all. Thought Ramna Race was bowling very well, and he should have bowled out his spell. 27 runs in extras and wides, Matthew, helping a lot because 109 on the board, of which 27 are wides. Not good at all. Only 17 wides in Demerara's innings. Look at that. Well, I like how you said only 17 because you're comparing it to 27 already. But 17 is a big figure as well. Got bat onto it. Feel that fine leg. This time gathers. John, his rhythm is not good. He's bowling wayward down the leg side. I think he's fortunate that uh, Sharma got bat onto that. Full toss outside the leg stump. And worked it down to fine leg for one. But certainly not into rhythm. He probably, it, it, for my money, if you're going to bowl at Maya, probably you could have bowled him from the other end, from the north end. Give him a try from the north end. So RF Khan is operating from the northern end. They're bowling in tandem. So Hetmeyer bringing himself as a double change, really, because RF Khan just started his second spell. Now Hetmeyer back from the southern end, just like they did with the new ball. But John, he's a captain. He makes the changes. He's trying to read the game well as a skipper. These are 15-year-olds and on the plane, so you can't put them under a lot of pressure at this stage. It's when you get to the under-19 level. You look at what's happening in the World Cup right now. Good cricket is being played there, John. Some very good cricket. I've watched some fantastic innings by batsmen from India and, you know, really good. Even the West Indies. Quick single take and the return comes in. He gets home. That could have been suicidal. Straight to the field and taken off. But that is the difference. Took off immediately. He said, throw the field off track. That was Shamar Apple who did that. Uh, Arif Khan, the fielder. Yeah, I agree. The under-19 World Cup has really been cricket to watch. Early in the morning, good viewing time in Guyana. And some cricket has been really exceptional. West Indies top order, not having their way. Middle order, low order, really coming to the party. And West Indies managed to get into the Super 6 stages. Won against Sri Lanka. So the, the campaign is alive. Yes, yeah, certainly they've, they've improved. And you see, on a 19 World Cup can produce some very interesting cricketers who can go on to play for the country at senior level. Well, we, we've seen that with India, especially South Africa. They produce some good players, Australia, West Indies as well. So that's the end of the over. 111 for the loss of four. Still 36 away from victory, Demerara. And the players will take some drinks. We will take some drinks as well. When we come back, we'll bring you the remainder of this game and the presentation because it is the end of the tournament as well. We'll be back in about two minutes.
Welcome back to DCC. After that drinks break, the are about to resume their innings. Apple on 19 from 41 balls will face up to Fia's bash. None for seven so far. So they need 36 and 84 balls. That's not the issue. The important thing is to keep their wickets and stay there to the end. And then show that Barbies does not take home this title. And we saw earlier Apple wanting to get on with it, but with the spinners on, uh, he was kept in check. A couple of close shades for Stumpins. Not out, says the umpire, on a couple of occasions. But he's a main man to stay there and steady the ship for Demerara because should they lose another wicket or two with, let's say, 30 runs to get, it can come down to a very exciting uh, finish. Low scoring game so far. As we said, Barbies at one stage 108 for five fell away, 146 all out. Thanks to good bowling at the end by Henry, who picked up two, two of those four wickets. Well, three in fact, and Parmeshar Par picked up the final wicket, of course. In the end, he ended up at four for 34 from his spell of seven overs, I make it. The run taken turned away towards the backward square area by the left-hander. So one delivery left to complete over number 37. Sharma will face his 11 from 43. The important thing, John, is that he has stayed there. He stayed there, no need to panic. It's not like you've got to get uh, 150 runs in, in, in uh, 80 balls or so. Nothing of the sort. But he stayed there. And he defends. To end the over, 37 gone, 112 for four. So just a single. Uh, we saw just before the drinks break, the seam was coming back. A run started to flow. Now, with a spin of Baksh, after the drinks break, just a single conceded. So that was Burby's innings for 146 all out. They left a lot of deliveries up there, not batting their quota of 50. The reply so far, a top order not contributing as much as the would want from them. Sigurbin not getting into double figures. Ram top score so far. Lewis getting a start, the captain. But Mikhail Sharma and Shamar Apple holding it together nicely for Demerara. But put two wickets to that equation, and Barbies can really look to come from behind once again. So Ramdial from the bottom end now. Immediately beating the outside edge of Shamar Apple, who's once again backing away and cutting. Somebody listened to me earlier when I said that Ed Meyer should probably have not been brought on. Give away a few runs in that over. Quite a few extras as well. And what the spinners have done to Apple, they've kept him in check. Kept him in check. He's got to be technically correct to them. You want to go after me? All right, go after me. I've got my feelers set for you. Look at that. On the back foot. Outside edge, down to backward point, they take the quick single. I saw the guy at extra cover calling for the, the, the DRS. <laughs> 34 needed now from 75 balls. No need to panic in terms of the runs. It's all about your skill now. It's all about that talent, uh, being exposed to good spinners, to good young spinners from Barbies. Ramdi Hall, none for it so far. Apple hasn't done that badly, 21 from 49. Sharma comes back into strike, 11 from 44.
kept a bit low, but on the leg stump. Sigobin made eight, Lois 11, the captain, Ram 32, and Nan 3. The batters dismiss for Demerar. Ram, three fours in his knock. So after the first wicket produced 32. Wraps him on the pad, shakes the head, and then puts the hand up. That dreaded right hand and that finger pointed upwards to the sky says, that's the end of you. So, Mikkel Sharma goes, leg before wicket to the bowling of Ramna Race. And that's what we were saying, John. You've got to keep the spinner on Ramna Race. By far, you're better spinner. He's picked up his third wicket. It's 113 for five. Well, this time it's, it's Ramdi all into the attack. Yeah, Ramna Race had his spell earlier. But Mikkel Sharma, who played a good hand in terms of batting and creating a partnership, gone for 11. Ramdi Hall gets in that breakthrough. It's been a stubborn partnership, but now broken. Apple is still there. He'll be looking to, from a Demerara standpoint, see at home. But, like I said earlier, put two wickets to that equation. And Borbis can really control things. So this game has opened up again. Another twist in this game. Low scoring games tend to give you a lot of thrills. And we could be heading for a thrilling finish. That is what makes cricket such a beautiful game. That is what makes cricket such a beautiful game. Low scoring, but yes. Wicket's going at 32, 65, 75. 75, 113. In fact, 75, then 76, and then 113. 113 for 5. Khan, none for 29. Admire, 1 for 32. Mackenzie, none for 2. Going through some bowling figures for you. So Munish Altar, the new man out to partner Apple. The off spinner, bats left hand. A little bit of pressure now on Demerara here, John. The over comes to an end. Good wicket for Ramdi Hall. Picking up his first with two to Ramna race after 38 overs, 113 for five. So that's the equation, 34 needed from 72. So 12 overs still remaining in this game, but across at multi nose, the select 11 set a target of 181. After 21 overs, 80 for four, it means they need a four to 101 from 29 overs to register their first win. The defending champion, Select 11, 80 for 4. Looking to get 181 to win. Still need 101 from 29. And, and that is certainly a, a much more difficult task over at Maltino's there. But again, a good game of cricket. As Gibber would have done well to put the runs on the board. And they picked up four wickets. Not bad at all. So a lot will depend on Apple here to stay to the end of this innings. Takes a quick single off the outside edge along the ground towards the gully area. So two left-handers out there now. Altar with a red helmet on. And John, he's batting with white pads on. Now, that should not be permitted at this level, to be honest. It's a white ball being bowled. I, I, I thought the umpires could have intervened there. Should not have been batting with white pads at all. Someone could have lent, lent him their pads. Full toss, doesn't put it away. Well, these are the things you observe in cricket. When you talk color code, standards to be set. Uh, Naeem Chan and I talked about it earlier. If you're bowling with a white ball, you, you should never be batting with white pads on. Pig appeal, Moses Ramphal. Shakes his head, says not out. Maybe that white pad might have had something to do with it. Uh, and he actually went on the back foot. I know the reason behind a white pad and a white ball, but as an umpire, Matthew, enlighten our listeners and our viewers. 
because it is something that the umpires can find a bit difficult. Yeah, it's a difficulty in, in being able to pick up the white ball against the back the background of white pads. It's not easy, especially when you're struck on the pad and so on. LBW appeals and whatnot. Very, very crucial indeed in terms of the sight of an umpire. Very important. With the advent of pad covers, white pads in color, with color clothing should not be an issue. Well, bold again, asking questions. Fias Baksh, the pad cover is usually just, it's like a, it's like a stocking. Right, come onto right. the pad. And I have many colors and some of the designs and so these days. Because cricket is now a fashionable game. So white pads, someone may not have a, the luxury of purchasing a colored pad, but can have the pad cover. End of the over, 114 for five. I think the match referee, Grant D. Colbard, who's upstairs here, as long as he has observed that, he can have a chat with, of course, the umpires at the end of the game because uh, this is inter county, it's the highest level uh, before playing for your country. But you're playing for your county, and those are the standards that are important to set. Very important. I think you recall Ambrose had had a problem at time. Was that in Australia? Uh, yes, with that sweat band. You 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 gotta be careful. But white ball cricket, nowhere. That's what's called bird's eye view. Trying to watch the match from any possible vantage point. That's the the church building to the far side. To the southern end of the ground. Nice vantage point. That's the Adventist Church. That's their headquarters. It's a nice spot, actually, to view the game from. I went across to in the air. Catch taken. Got his man finally. Apple goes for 22 from 52 balls. 114 for six. Exactly what the doctors ordered for Borbis. They removed the big hit in Apple, who never looked comfortable enough to the spinners, and this is what exactly Borbis would have wanted. Good catch from McKenzie. Kept his eyes on it, judged it well. It was hit high in the air, not far. 22 from 52, and Apple is really annoyed, but with no one else except himself. He had many opportunities to score, this time hitting it in the air. Flighted delivery from Ramdi Hall. It was in the slot. And he went for the shot, got it into the hands of Rafael McKenzie, coming off the long offense. Good wicket again for Borbis to pick up, 114 for six. Just four wickets away now from victory for Borbis. Demerara need 33. Game on, Matthew. And look what your students have done. Ram Nerez picked up Ram and Nan. Ram Diol, Sharma and Apple. Apple's wicket, very crucial because he can hit the ball very hard. He hit a six. 114 for six makes the game very, very interesting indeed now. 33 from six to four balls. And this is why white ball cricket is so exciting. Whether 50 over or T20, it's for the strong hearted. Hmm. Young Riaz Latif making his way now. Into the middle from Austin Street in Campbellville. And for the first time, Matthew, the required run rate has gone past the current run rate. Current run rate under three, required run rate above three. This is where when the pressure gets to you, you can collapse. Well played by the little lad. Short, slimly built. There's that on the other hand is a, a bit more big, of course. I suppose later on he's going to put on some weight and get better. Go to the gym. Quicker delivery on the leg stump. Turn the weight to backward square. But he looks a, a, a bold, brave, confident young man. Look at the way he's batting. He's not afraid of anything. He's not... Uh, 
He's not hesitant. Pushed at it. Beaten all ends up taken by the keeper. Good delivery by Ramdi Hall. Yeah, tentative push. But with lots of time still in the game, that's over 10 overs to get 33. The Amara can still back themselves to get this, but it must be able to bat smart. Pick the gaps. Good bowling from Ramdi Hall. That was a ball that went through the arm, beating the outside edge. Umpire made a good decision. 40 overs gone. 114 for 6. 33 to get from 60. Brilliant bowling from the spinner so far. Ramne Reyes uh, with two wickets on this belt. Ramdi Hall with two as well on this belt. So uh, he had my picking up the first wicket and then Budwood the second. And since then it's been uh, Ramne Reyes and Ramdi Hall. So five wickets going to the spinners. Just one to the medium fast bowler. So Bash will continue. Altar yet to score. He's faced six balls. He's on strike. Very, very crucial part of this game now. Got bat on to that. And then hit him high up on the pads. Indajit will join John for a very interesting period of the game now. John Ramsing, we have seen a lot of pigeons in this ground. I'm wondering if to know now if the cats are loose among them. And is it in locally, we do not call them pigeon. Someone say pigeon. <laughs> and I thought it was something different they were speaking of okay. until they clarified. It's the same thing. Different part of the country, different words for the same animal. Yes, I guess it has to do with our history in Guyana. Um, so many different nations came here and we have what you call the Patwa Creolese language. Full toss. Good to see the scoring of the full toss. Outer of the mark. Riaz Latif at number eight, pint size little leg spinner. But now with bat in hand, really has a job on hand. 32 to get from 55. Yes, the little man is asked to do a big man's job here, but he's up to the task. He's a very brave little guy, and you can expect him presenting a challenge. And he has brought with him lots of support to this ground here. Single of the over. 41 gone, 115 for the loss of six. Yes. He's actually, oh. Uh -huh. look, at, look at the contingent there at the, at the scoreboard. And it has been a very, very hot day, cooling themselves down too with some special beverage. So nine overs to go in this game. 32 still needed. Ramdi Hall seems to be the man with the golden arm. Starts a new over. Two for eight already. And John Ramdi Hall has been very, very disciplined so far in his bowling. And with every run score... You'll hear the Demerara spectators going up. With every wicket taken, the Burbishans will go up. And uh, it's close. 
Every dot ball will bring a hush. Runs have dried up. Consecutive dot balls now. And suddenly, the required run rate getting close to four. Territories that we haven't seen all day in the run chase. If we get to a runner ball, it can be very dicey. Well, ball, good delivery again. And Sohil Mohammed, the wicket keeper, having a good day behind the stumps. And so far, five dot balls in this over. So maiden, that means six consecutive dot balls. Last over, just a single. So in two overs, just one run.
but another scenario. So, like the pendulum swinging from side to side, can't want better cricket to watch at, in a final. Yes, this is just what the doctor has ordered. This is going to bring out all the characters in our youngsters out in the middle. Good delivery. Good comeback bowling here by Arif Khan. He has just slowed down the pace and he's concentrating, concentrating on that tram line straight. And this is good to see. Has been able to string three dot balls together. In fact, four dot balls together. Can he close off the over nicely now? 16 from 19. That's a brilliant shot out through the covers, out towards the boundary. Will it be three fields, man? It does. And that four will be remembered for a long time by little Riaz Latif. It has brought Demerara ever so close to what they're looking for. 47 gone, 135 for seven. 12 requires some 18 balls. Well, in the G time, I'm getting old and this kind of atmosphere is not absolutely conducive, but I'm having fun. What? And I've gotten some scores here, Naeem, coming from the Maltinos ground where Esiquibo are taking on the Select 11. Recall that Esiquibo scored 180 from, for seven from their 50 overs. Select 11, 101 for the loss of eight from 31 overs. They need 80 from 19 with Jatinel Nurse picking up three for 13 from five overs to back his 45. Great all-round performance. Thanks to Dr. Ronaldo Magarel for making this possible. Out in the middle here at DCC, 12 runs to get from 18 deliveries. That boundary struck by Latif. If they go on to win, it will be great celebration for the youngster. Ravin, quite an enterprising, ambitious looking shot. It made some height actually, but he's a tall youngster, so he went onto the back foot and just clobbered it, struck down by the bowler himself. Now I hope this over, from a Barbie's point of view, that Rafael will be able to bowl it straight. That's what they need to add more flavor to this equation. And that was it pretty hard. They get a single in the process. 11 runs required from 16 balls. Back comes little Riaz, eight from 24. He's playing the role that his team wants at this stage. I can't decide which side to bet on yet. <laughs> I see you're feeling the edge of the dollar there, Naeem. Here is a Raphael. And they're going to go through for a cheeky single. The return comes in. The keeper doesn't take it. The cleanest of ways. It was short to him. Tried his best. A stiffer return to the stumps. They get the single. They stole that single right in front of the eyes of the Borbitians. Ten runs from 15 balls. I don't like this kind of atmosphere, Jeet. It's, it's too electrifying. Uh, I see you're enjoying it, but it's pounding on taking effect on your heart, actually, your heartbeat. Nice to see these youngsters involved um, and creating this kind of atmosphere. Good feeling to his own bowling here, Rafael, as the left-handed Ravin went onto the back foot and stroking it back to the bowler, a dot ball. 10 runs required from 14 balls. And if Barbies are looking for inspiration, they need to look for the likes of Rohan Kanai, who graced the cricket field with all splendor and glory in his lifetime. Rohan Kanai, and there are many, many others. Basil Butcher that came from Barbies. Wrapped on the pad, how's that? And not out, says umpire Abbas, and a string of a long line of outstanding cricketers that would have come from that county. He's left-handed here, Ravin, for Demerara. Burbies can look to Alvin Kalicharan. 
Joe Solomon, Suresh, Danny Ram, Clayton Lambert in the bowling department. Look up to John Trim, Leslie Lambert. Shamar Joseph who has just created history in Australia. Here's a drive up the back foot, finds the feeler. Tongue at extra cover. The over has been completed, 48 gone. 10 runs to get from 12 balls. I think for the first time it has gone up, the required run rate to five. Yeah, it's getting closer. And um, just for the sake of good cricket, I don't mind if it, if it gets even closer. So that it will entertain the crowd, it will remember, be etched in your memory for a very long time. But absolutely good cricket. And the guts that this little boy is showing, Riaz Latif. We saw him jumping one or two times, negotiating the pace. But that has not stopped him. He has batted on. He's 9 of 25 balls. And what a little performance here. Absolutely splendid. So Arif Khan, none for 40, has been knocked about a little today. But his previous over was a good one. Riaz Latif is in striker. Guiding it nicely. They're coming through for the single return. Comes in. The woodwork has been dismantled. Yes, says umpire Abbas. And he goes. <coughs> what a wicket to get at this stage. Fire the run out route. And the Barbicians, they were alert like a bird in spring. Pounced on that one. The return came in. And Ravin has to go. 137 for it, Naeem. 10 required from 11. I think that was anxiety disorder that the two batsmen had. That ball was struck not very hard, a uh, good enough time for the fielder to pick it up very cleanly. There was no run there in whatever other circumstances. And, uh, but they challenged it, they went for it, and they paid the price eventually. Thanks for giving me your betting money, Naeem. Now I know you're not going to bet at all. I've just spoke for the Burbies team and where they can get inspiration from. Tell us about some of the past Demerara greats uh, that they can look up to here, Naeem, the Demerara team. Well, they can start right here from uh, the DCC club, Demerara Cricket Club, where all the greats and uh, Roy Fredericks for batsmen, Clive Lloyd, Keith Semple, a whole string of them that emerged from here. So they've got so much to look up for. The thing is with the two counties and the usual rivalry, these two counties have pr pr uh, produced all the superstars that represented the West Indies. So here is Khan once again. Here's a drive high in the air. Will the catch be taken? Gone! Straight down the throat of the fielder at wide mid-off. And that's the ninth wicket tumbling here for Demarara. 137 for nine in over number 49. Ten runs required from 10 balls one wicket standing who could have scripted this better than this i can't think of anybody well i tell you that suddenly my vocabulary seemed to be dwindling it's hard to describe the action that i'm seeing here all that i can say it is enthralling cricket so ravin singh run out for one from five deliveries and uh, Let's see. You never know what can happen. Well, I think, is it eight wickets or is it nine? Yes. Nine wickets, 137 for nine. So the last pair at the wicket. And the last pinch of hope for Demerara. Well, they say feed your faith with hope and put your doubts to death. Must check my address, Plantation Hope, there's where <laughs> I live. I knew about this a long time ago. I hear you, Naeem. Here's a drive outside the line of the off stump. Wide signal by umpire Moses. Adds another flavor to this equation. 138 for the loss of nine. Well, you know, the, in Guyanese parlance and the old proverb that we know um, in Guyanese language, patwa, one one dotty bildam. Every wide is going to count here. There's a drive and uh, outside the line of the off stump here.
So La Rose, nine from nine, what is he thinking, this youngster? He's thinking a six, he's thinking a defensive shot. Well, outside the line of the off stump, another wide. Well, eight runs required now from nine balls. Well, anxiety disorder, La Rose attempted a shot and was not hustling back into his crease. What the wicket keeper did was to strike the bales off uh, by pelting the ball onto the stumps. And uh, I believe that La Rose just managed to get in. Just managed. He was uh, unconscious about this sur his surroundings. Of course. And what is it that Arif Khan is thinking? He has gone back to being in discipline, wide outside the line of the off stump. Bat on the ball, a defensive shot. There is where he needs to get it. Well, eight from eight. 139 for nine. Can't get closer. We can't imagine it getting closer. Burbies against Demerara. This is the Ghana Cricket Board. Under 15 inter-county 50 overs tournament. Slow delivery. Slice it away. It's going to run down towards third man. Fine third man comes in. Sends the return in, Rafael. Can't prevent the two. Two more to the score. 141 now for the loss of nine. Six runs required from seven balls. Add in the number of wickets, please. And that complicates the whole equation. One wicket to fall. La Rose, will he itch his name in the record books in his own little way? Arif Khan to La Rose, he's defending, looking for the single. And no, a misfielding. 49 overs gone. Can you believe it? It's 141 for nine. Six runs required from six balls. Well, the result of this game is just pending just around the corner and you can look there's an absolute lull we were hearing a uh, highly pronounced noise coming out emanating from the uh, demerara dressing room suddenly they have gone into a little lull it's quiet there because they know just one wicket to fall they know that six runs are still to be scored for barbies i believe the same tension uh, exists in their bodies this it can go either way a slice here of bread a slice there of a wicket either way you get a boundary now it changes the equation again Latif is miniature in size whether he can put it away that's very that's going to be a very very hard asking but he can slice it and edge it and if he does that there's a fine leg there's a third man to stop that and stop the gap and the ball has been entrusted into those bucket-like hands of Rafael. None for 13 from his two overs. And look at little Riaz Latif with the willow in his hand. Down the leg side and that's a wide. Strain a few more like those, says little Latif and Darwin. Five runs required from six balls. Here is where you, you, the bowler, everything seems to be in his hand. If he bowls it straight and they should stop a single on the offside, there's a short cover. That is absolutely good. Just plug where the singles can be taken. If they get a four, it's okay because they can't stop everything. And this time it's a dot ball outside the line of the off stump. Little Latif was looking to steer it through the backward point region and it comes back uh, five runs from five deliveries. Rafael, what is he thinking in his mind? What is it Adrian Hetmeyer is saying to his charge? Well, you look at his face, there is determination, mops the brow in the distance. Where will he bowl it? Will he bowl it straight? Will he bowl it outside the off stump? Will he bowl it outside the leg stump? We shall see. And outside the off stump, Another dot ball. Latif is asking the umpire, hello, umps. What's the problem with you? He wants a wide name. Well, he's so diminutive looking and short that he can get close to the ball anyway, even if it, it comes within the return crease. So uh, it was a legal ball. The umpire ruled that. He was right. But Latif was left there standing inside his crease. Here is Rafael. 
to little Latif down the leg side and that's going to be called a wide another run it comes back four runs from four deliveries I always fancy myself writing good scripts I'm wondering who wrote this one here this afternoon and what I'm wondering I mean look looking at something now additional would Raphael cause the undoing of Borbis by bowling negatively and not straight the ball in his, in his hand and in his court. He tries once again, Rafael. Latif is flashing outside the line of the off stump. Umpire Abbas decides it's a legal delivery. Little Latif once again is putting out that right hand, asking the umpire. Hey, comes back to four runs from three deliveries. And listen to the advice coming from the spectators. They know their cricket. I would think that the batsmen are not even hearing right now. The tension filled up, butterflies floating. It's a drive from Latif, down to short cover. Return comes in. He's home. A question asked of the umpire. That's a brave single. Good shot. A little bit more power to the left of the fielder. That would have gone whistling down for victory shot. Well fielded at short cover, they get the single, three runs from two balls. And not only the single, it brings the bigger hitter into, into contention, and that's Darwin, LaRose. Because Latif was unable to put it away. If something is to happen for Demerara, it's going to happen now within the next two deliveries. If something is to happen for Barbies, they got to take a wicket. Yes, and that name, Darwin LaRose, two runs so far from four balls, Let's see what he can do. Lots of discussions going on out in the middle. Lots of words of wisdoms ha have been given to Rafael. 144 for nine. Three runs from two deliveries. Here is La Rose down the track, uh, taken on the pad. They're going through. The return comes in. The bales have been disturbed. Not out, says umpire Moses. They get the single. Great run in between the wickets. Uh, and it comes down even closer here, 145 for nine, two runs required off one ball. Will it be a tie? Will they share the title? We shall see. And there's no provision, Jeet, for a super over. No, this is um, 50 overs cricket, so I think there is no super over here. Now, I wonder if they understand their role. Play or run. You're running for anything. If it passes the bat, you might get it wide. It becomes a tie. So, are we going to have a tie? Two runs needed from one ball. So will they share the championship? Will it be Borbis? Will it be Demerara? This ball shall tell it's a wide. It's a wide. And the scores are level. Well, Jeet, I made a comment. Would Rafael be the undoer of Borbis because of straying? 146 for nine. One run from one ball. Can't ask for anything better. Now, these two batters, Naeem, they're going to run for anything once it's not a wide. I think that should be it here. So the Barbies fielders, they have to be alert. They aren't wearing helmets within that 15-yard circle. So they have to be out of that. And that makes a single easy for them. So all Latif is looking for, get the bat on the ball or allow it to go for a wide. Here is Rafael. He comes in to bowl to Latif, and he's coming forward. They're going for the single, and they're home! Demerara have defeated Barbies by one wicket to claim the Guyana Cricket Board on the 15 Inter-County Tournament 2023, uh, 2024 rather. Great victory. Well played, little man. Riaz Latif, 11 from 31. Hold the lower order together, and with Darwin LaRose, Two from five, they have taken Demerara home. Congratulations to them. We are not going to see one like this for a long time. 
Maybe not in my lifetime too. <laughs> but just coming back, uh, I, from the time Rafael was reintroduced to the bowling, he kept bowling loose. And I was surprised that when he came back for a second, and then another over coming down to the end. So we're looking at the winning shot played by little Latif here. Pitched up, came forward, soft hands, and look at his partner supporting him. Good return, good run in between the wicket. And I'm surely a lot of people is going to tape this and look at it again. The shot that gave Demerara the Guyana Cricket Board on the 15 inter-county title 2024. Well, there must have been another bowler uh, if, if, if there was available for an over of spin um, who can bowl it, push it through very quickly, not necessarily flighting the ball. Because the batsmen could not, they didn't have the kind of body makeup to put any kind of bowling away. It was not frontline batting, but uh, the captain decided they're going to go with Rafael. But they, I think he overdid it coming down today and giving him too many overs, went from the first over. I kept saying that he's bowling too loose, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hetmeyer doesn't give him another over. Yeah, you can fancy yourself as a fast bowler or whatever bowler you can. If you're not disciplined, and I think those wides, you know, tell the story, cause the undoing, like you pointed out, Naeem, for the Burbies team, they played good cricket in defending that 146. Uh, um, well, not defending it, but brought it down to the last ball. <coughs> Demerara will feel happy. I think the Ghana Cricket Board, they're going to be extremely happy too to see the quality of cricket that has been played. And look at the Demerara boys out there just taking a sun bath, a few of them in the shadow, and no doubt they are ecstatic. Yes, and, and, and you made the point about uh, the revival almost of cricket and the standard compared to last year, that there's an obvious lift in the standard because we did some commentaries last year on the same tournament, this category. We're doing it again, and indeed, I'd like to say that the, the standard has lifted. The competition has gotten more intense. I'm happy for our Essequibo also, who are also uh, coming up under some very good leadership in Essequibo, even though they do not have a lot of facilities in Essequibo. Uh, those facilities are going to be established uh, within a year or this year, and so we expect better things for Essequibo. I hope their cricket too can reach this. Yes, and please stay tuned for the presentation ceremony. That's going to come up in a little while on FL Sport. But looking back at this game here, Naeem. Yes, uh, I've just been told that Essequibo won by 65 runs against the Select 11. Good that Essequibo has gotten a victory. Select 11. They were beaten in all three games. They're the defending champions. They have to wheel and come again next year. Looking back at this game here today, that half century by Adrian Hetmeyer did not go on, but was a fine half century that propelled the Burbies team to that 146. At least some respectability to 146 because the Burbicians, they started off very badly. They continued badly until Hetmeyer stabilized things in the middle and then it fell apart again. We were projecting at one time, well, the projected computer score was 164. Uh, they got to 146. But we, the ideal situation would have been some more runs added. Another 20, even now we're looking back in retrospect, another 20 would have added another kind of equation to this game. 146, it was just on the par. Yes, I do agree with you. Should have put a little bit more runs uh, on the board here. It's a 50 over uh, match. Uh, but this is the way it has transpired. We just want to let you know in a few minutes, uh, we're going to have that presentation ceremony. Um, coming up. <coughs> so we'll take a little bit of a break here. And as soon as we're ready for the presentation, we're going to ensure that we go across to the guys out on the field.
Ready? Testing, testing, one, two, my test, one, my test, two, test. Here you are.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation ceremony for the Guyana Cricket Board Inter-County Under 15 50 Overs competition. Please put your hands together for all the cricketers and all four teams. Please permit me also to introduce to you the presentation party. To my extreme right is Mr. Andre Percival. He's the chairman of the junior selection panel of the Guyana Cricket Board and one of the most successful on the 19 skipper in the West Indies, captain in Guyana to four titles and I think one regional. <laughs> to my right is the chairman of the competitions committee, Guyana Cricket Board, our very own Sean Messiah. I thought I was a good script writer until today the gods have written a script that I can't compare myself to. Who would have thought we'll come down to the final delivery when one run was required? And who would have thought the smallest man in the field would have scored that one run? All right, without further ado, it's my pleasure to call on the chairman of the competitions committee, Ghana Cricket Board, Mr. Sean Messiah, to say a few words. Sean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Indijit. Good afternoon to all, ladies and gentlemen, parents. First of all, I want to say thanks to the staff of the DCC club for hosting us this uh, inter-county match. Thanks to the ground staff for the hard work that they've put in for the pitch. And thanks to the other ground staff at the other venue, that's Maltinos. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, we have witnessed a very good inter-county on the 15 uh, tournament, whereby you know, we have seen uh, several performances from the, from the various, from, from the youths. And that is what the Ghana Cricket Board entails of bringing out a lot of youths. So, without further ado, I want to say congratulations to the Demerara County team for winning this tournament. But I must say tough luck to the Borbishans. But it's not the end of the road. Matches like these brings out the quality that you put in with your coaches. And when you go back, just keep working because there's another level. There's another step you got to be going forward to. Right? So go back home and keep working on your, on, your, on your game. So on behalf of the president and executives of the Georgetown Cricket Board, we'd like to say congratulations to everyone, all the teams that take part in this tournament. Well done. Thank you very much, uh, Sean Messiah. And we go straight into the presentation here. And the first one is the most uh, wickets. We have two guys who have tied with nine wickets apiece. Uh, both of them are not with us this afternoon. They were playing at uh, Maltinos. Uh, Esequibian, Jatinel Nurse, uh, and Gilbert Griffith. Uh, they'll be collecting their trophies a little later. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> and now for the most runs in the competition, we recall we had two scintillating centuries at the Queen's College ground. Emmanuel Lewis with 160 in that innings. And then we had uh, Parmeshwar Ram, 117. So it's always going to be close. In fact, the guy that scored a total of 201 runs with an average of 67, Demerara, Parmeshwar Ram. Please come forward. And this will be presented to Parmeshwar by chairman of the junior selection panel, the Ghana Cricket Board, Andre Percival. Good, and now we go for the man of the match in today's cricket game. From seven overs in a close encounter, he picked up four for 34. Put your hands together for Brandon Henry. Well, they came from the east. They came with high ambitions of winning this year's tournament. Played extremely good cricket, and perhaps if they're running between the wickets, 
you know, can improve. They're going to be a powerhouse in the near future. But today they come up against a determined Demerara team. For the Guyana Cricket Board on the 15 Inter-County 50 overs, runner-up team. Note, I didn't say loser. The runner-up team. Put your hands together for Barbies. <clears throat> May the skipper please come forward. Hetmeyer. Son, before you go, one word with me, please. You scored a brilliant half century today. Led your team well. Close finish. Your thoughts? Yeah, it was a good game, man. Congrats to Demarara. Well played. All right, thank you very much, uh, and we wish you all the best in the future. Before we go to the winner, we have a gentleman who continues to support cricket in Guyana and North America, a big fan of cricket. And he saw one of our youngsters batted at the QC ground and scored a brilliant 100. I think it was 160. I'll ask Mr. Rockaway, Mr. Ali, to come, and he's going to give a bat to no other than Emmanuel Lewis, the skipper of the Demerara team. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, yeah. don't go as yet, son. You collected a pair of gloves today, compliments of Regal Stationery and Regal Sports. Now you've collected a bat. These are all a part of your armory now. What's the feeling like? Oh, the feeling's been good. You know, coming into this tournament, winning it. And we just come out victorious. All of them are con as a congrats to Barbies to come and playing. Yeah, thanks. Yes, and don't you dare go away because he's going to take that beautiful trophy you're seeing here. Demerara Crown, Guyana Cricket Board on the 15 into county 50 overs champion 2024. And Emmanuel is going to receive this trophy from, uh, trophy from Andre Percival. Thank you very much. And not long from now, the selectors will get together, boys, to select that Guyana on the 15 team, which will be heading to Antigua to take part in the regional on the 15 tournament. Uh, on behalf of the Guyana Cricket Board, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, boys that played so well, congratulations to you. And we look forward for keen action again next time around.